Hello. Yo, welcome back to the stream. How are you? How do you say your name? I don't know how to say your name. Yo, what's up, Martin? How are you? Welcome back to the stream. Let me lower my mic a little bit. It's too loud. Should be better now. All right, so I have some good news. So yesterday I was playing around with the code and I was able to get rooms to work with the WebSocket server, which is good because that will actually make our whole architecture a lot more easier. And what I was able to get done, which I will continue today, because I didn't want to do too much yesterday off stream, because I did want to, like, I did want to make sure that, you know, you all can see the progress. So what I'll do is let me open up a new window. Let me just go to this guy's message. And let me log in as this user real quick. So let's just do that. And let's go over here. Let's log in. Thank you. All right, so we have our conversation. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just zoom out a little bit. Let me open up the dev tools. And let me actually move the console maybe down. I mean, let me dock the console on the bottom. Is there a way I could do that? Yeah, it should be possible. I've done it before. Uh, what do I, how do I do this? Where is the option to dock? There you go. Okay, perfect. Uh, can I ask what theme? Let me, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Give me one second. Actually, you know, I installed Nightbot. I wonder, does it work? Does Nightbot work? Or do I have to manually? Because I set it up yesterday and I... I set it up yesterday. So it should be... Oh, there you go. Okay, well, that's the old theme. Let me update. That'll actually just save so much time. So that way people can just use that command. Because I get asked all the time. So the theme, let me update this real quick. The theme is called Field Lights. This is the theme. Let me actually update this real quick. Copy. Field Lights is the theme. Field. Field Lights. And now anyone can use that command, and there's also a Discord command as well. So if you do if you do exclamation mark Discord, that'll show the Discord link. It might take a little couple seconds. And I also wanted to do this. There you go. So now people can just use that command, and it will just be. Uh, a lot more better and if you guys have any other suggestions for commands I am all ears I am all ears hey I love these types of content I love live coding videos and learning something well that's great Gabor and I'm glad to see you here back on the stream I hope we're doing well I'm just put on some music you guys won't be able to hear it because of copyright but I'm just gonna put it on for myself I'm gonna put on some let's see All right, so basically, let me continue with what I wanted to show you. Okay, so it might be a little bit hard 
to see. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type. Okay, let me refresh real quick. Okay, so you see how when I am typing, the user over here receives the user's typing event. And if I type on this screen, the user over here is receiving the user's typing event. So basically, we have it working using rooms. So if I show you the code right over here, so the other, so about like two or three streams ago, we were trying to implement a uh, user typing status. And the problem was that we were fetching the database to get that, to get the user. Now we don't have to do that because what we can do is we can just emit the event to the room. And what I did yesterday off stream was I subscribed to two events on the back end and on the front end, we would have to emit those events manually. So what happened was when the component renders, we emit a conversation join event, right? And the back end is going to receive that event. It's going to go ahead and join the conversation ID as a room. Okay. And I'll show you how that works in a second. And what happens is it's going to go ahead and admit to that ID, to that room, a user join event. Okay. And on the front end, we'll receive that user join event. So you'll see in just a second, if I refresh the page, you're going to see over here, it's going to say user join. Okay. And if I refresh over here, it's going to say user join. So on the front end, it's detecting when the user joins and when the user leaves. So you can see over here that, um, let me see. Isn't this considered spamming as emitting it on every key press? Uh, isn't that the purpose of it or what? Is there like a better, is there a better way to do that? Cause is, don't you want to do it every single time the user types or like, I think you mean like you want to add a timeout, right? Is that what you meant? Cause we haven't added the timeout yet. So we'll have to add that to prevent the, uh, to prevent the server from receiving all of these events. Yep. Yep. So let me see. Yeah. Where are we emitting the event? Yeah, we're emitting it over here. But the, the good thing is, the good thing is, is that we got this typing status working efficiently without having to fetch a database for the user's data. And now all you have to do is just add the set timeout to make it a little bit better. So here's what we'll do. Yeah, I have an idea. Give me one second. Because I've done something similar like this before. What we could do is, I guess, set a timeout. And basically what I think is we could set a timeout after like 3,000 seconds. It could send, maybe after like 2,000 seconds, it could send the event. And if the user is still typing, maybe we could clear the timeout. Um, or actually, let me see. I can't really explain this because I've done it before and I can't really understand the way that I did it, but I just know that it did something. It, it, I just know that it worked. Hi, I use Express sessions with password safe connect, which I have to find while I'm that. Okay, so now 
I have not defined schema for sessions. It automatically saves in how should I find it? Uh, yo, what's up, Chaos Phantom? How are you? Welcome to the stream. On submit, change set cam message to false after two seconds. Change to true. Uh, so to find the session, you would need to know what the session ID is because on the database, every single session is mapped by a, an ID and a generated ID. That's a string. So if you know the session ID, which you can easily grab from, if you know what the cookies are, so kind of hard to help you on stream because I don't really know the context. So I'd suggest you ask your question on discord server. Let me see. Let me see, so let's do const timer, set timer, use states. So what I'll do is I'll I'll try this real quick. I'm gonna set a timeout. And what I'll do is this. Uh so on the message panel. Where is send typing status? Send the field or over here. Okay, so on key down, send typing says, okay, so I think what I'll do is this. Whatever the key down event happens, I guess we'll clear the timeout by passing in timer, is this variable over here what's going on over here there we go okay and then what will happen next is this um let's see i guess we could do set timer uh yo what's up comic dev how are you Move this over here. Uh, yo, what's up, Tri Boy? Welcome back to the stream. How are you guys? Yo, Choi, but welcome back to the stream. Maya, what's up? How are you? I am doing good, thank you. Uh, that's what we're trying to do, yeah. Hopefully we can get it to work. We have it working, but we're trying to make it more efficient so it doesn't spam the API. Um, let me see, also results. All right, let's see how this works real quick. So let me open up the console, so let's refresh. Okay, so the backend is receiving the event. Uh, I can't tell you if it's just the way you talk. Uh, it's just the way I talk. Uh, another dead channel. What's going on? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Huh, interesting. So, socket emits. Oh, did I? I think I messed this up. Hold on. Silly me. There we go. Okay. That should fix that. All 
All right, so. So yeah, we are receiving the event two seconds later, but what if I spam it? So if I keep typing, it takes two seconds later to, okay, so that clearly is not gonna work. So let me see, at the event when the user starts typing only once, and every X seconds check if the user is still typing. Yeah, because I guess what we could do is if the user starts typing, because there's an event that should tell us when the user stops typing, right? So on key down chat filters. I'm not sure what you mean, but right now we're not really focused on that right now. We're focused on just setting the status, the user, the user typing status, JavaScript, uh, get event when the user stops typing. So there's key up is when the user lets go of the key. There should be an event when the user has stopped typing. Another thing that we could do is uh, whenever the user is typing, you can send the event. It will basically what you do is you can clear the timeout every single time. So what I'm saying is this. So you can do this. And then what you can do is after two seconds, user stopped typing. So watch this. So if I keep on typing, it's going to go ahead and keep on emitting the event. But if I stop for two seconds, it will say user stop typing. So that's one way that we can detect when the user has stopped typing is using the set timeout feature. So basically every single time the user types something, right? You'll clear the existing timeout and you'll set a new timer. And that'll basically push the timeout by two seconds every single time the event occurs. And if the event does not occur, the timeout will eventually happen because it won't clear the timeout anymore. So, but I don't know if that's a really effective way though. But let me see, because I'm Googling ways to clear... Uh, I'm Googling to detect when the user has stopped typing. And even the most modern answers uh, recommend doing it the timeout way. You are using MUI, uh, Material UI, no. We're building everything ourselves. What do you mean by proper end-to-end? -end? What is proper end-to-end -end in your definition? I think that the minimum cooldown for every request to send the typing status is 3,000 milliseconds. That's the default one for many chat apps. I don't know much about JavaScript, but can't you just say typing when someone is writing and it stops when the typing was submitted? I mean, the problem is that you don't know if they're going to submit the message or not. So you have to see when they actually stop inputting keys into the text field. So that wouldn't work if you did in the back end. You'd have to do it in the front end. Yeah, so even the most uh, even the most up-to-date articles, like 2021, uh, are saying that you have to do it by using clear timeout. So what I think is, you know, you can keep sending this event, and on the back end, you, the back end would receive the event no problem. And then when the user stops typing, you can just send an event to the back end. But um, I don't really think it matters because the back end is just really responsible for just sending the event to the other user. It's not really, it doesn't really matter too much, right? Because if I type, if I type over here, the user over here needs to see the event. If I type a different conversation, then they need to, uh, you know, see that as well. So let me see if I type 
I'll receive it here. The front end should display the typing status over here for this user and not over here. Uh, well, I meant some people just use one key as encryption. Uh, I'm not really worried about that right now because right now what we're just trying to do is just build the app for fun. Like, I'm not really considering those things because, you know, this is just a project for learning purposes. But I probably will deploy it, but I'm not really planning on releasing it as an actual product because, you know, this is just a fun project. Obviously, if I were to deploy this and release it as a, as a, as an actual app, we'd have to add lots of other security measures to the application, but that's, you know, for another time. So I think the back end, what it could do is it can emit the event to all sockets that are connected to the room because we have rooms now. And because we have rooms, uh, we can easily receive the event now the problem is right now rooms it's going to emit the event to every single user uh, and that's not good because if I'm typing it shouldn't show the status for me so that's also problematic too so I think what we could do well actually this is a little bit difficult because on the back end let me go over here right uh, if I go over to on user typing right you'll see that on the console you can see that I received the on user typing uh, 18 set, right? And then the set is basically the collection of all the rooms that the user is connected to. So this is the default one, and then this is the room that they currently are. This is the conversation that they're, that they're in right now. If I were to join another conversation, that would put me in room 33. This would put me in room 32, 34, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and I'm in room 18. Now we don't want to broadcast the event to every single every single client. So now the question is, how do we make sure that how do we know who the user is that is connected to the room? That is that is a difficult part because uh, we don't have that set up yet. But we could set it up though in a way because what we could do is we could set up our own room system on the back end. Yeah, but I think it could be better like sending the typing status every five seconds and creating a Boolean variable called is typing. Then the typing status will send whatever is typing is set. So how would that work? So set timeout five seconds. So that would send it to the back end. And then you're saying that creating a Boolean variable called is typing. Then the typing status will send whatever. So how do you how do you know when to set the is typing status to false then? Oh, that's nice. No, I was kind of asking for learning purposes too. Kind of looking into E2E. Uh, so asked. Yeah, I'm not, I've never really built a chat before, which is, I think a lot of people are forgetting because I've never really done this project before. So there's a lot of things that I'm not really too familiar with right now. So I can't really... Uh, give you a definite answer of what we are going to do and what we aren't going to do. Yeah, I'm just going to do what I got to do. Another way you could, st as user starts typing, timer starts of three seconds on every key down, the reset times zero. Isn't that what we're doing though? Like, when the user starts typing, it's going to go ahead and clear the timeout and it's going to go ahead and set a timeout. Well, it's going to emit the event and it's going to set a timeout. And then whenever they keep typing, it will reset the timer, but it will keep sending the event. When the timer finally reaches three seconds without being, that means that the user stopped typing. Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing over here. Only when the event starts, okay. I'm not sure you mean by the timer is global because the timer is defined over here and we are clearing it right over here. 
So I don't know what you mean by the timer being global. If the user is in one conversation, that timer will correlate with their conversation that they're currently in. So I'm not sure what you were talking about. Anton, do you have an understanding on neural networks? Uh, I have a, a general understanding of it, but not really. I've never really dived into the back end. I never really dived into the neural network space before, or machine learning. I've I've been interested in it, but I've never really found the time to really get into. You know, maybe someday. You know, maybe someday. Run. So when the user starts typing. So I guess we need two timers, one for when the user starts typing. And when they stop typing, we then, if met the event, is that what it is? So, but the thing is though, is like, if I were to emit the event only after three seconds, the thing is, is like, okay, if you, if you emit the event after three seconds, so emit the event once when the event starts. Okay, I think I get what you mean. So let's see. I'm just gonna name this like this for now. So what I'm understanding is when they first type, it's gonna call this function. And We'll need some state const. And what we'll do is we'll have the state variable. And then what we'll do is this. So we'll do set is typing true. Uh, so check if it's still true. If yes, don't omit the event. On user starter typing. Oh, we set the timer. Okay, so. So set is typing to true. Okay. And then let me come this out. So if is typing. You're saying don't emit the event. So just do nothing, right? If it's if we're not typing, just do nothing. So if it's if the user's not typing, wait, what am I doing? If the user is not typing, So I guess if the user is not typing, we can set up timeout here. So if the user is still typing, then... Okay, so if the, okay, so if the user, if this variable is not true, that means it's false. So we'll update the state to true. And uh, I guess we'll omit the event once. And what happens is when we will event the will emit the event once, when the user enters a key again, it's going to go ahead and have this check over here, and it's going to go ahead and check every single time if the user is not typing, and if they're if they're not typing, then it'll go ahead and set the timer. However, if they're still typing though. Is not typing. Okay, so yeah, so over here we'll have to modify this and we'll have to update the state of set is typing to false. So in the beginning, uh, set is typing is going to be false. So this would resolve to true. 
Maybe a silly question, but there has to be at least once for some time. Is this is also confusing to learn? Try creating a update typing status function so like every five it will emit the socket. That's so true. Hello, when I was learning, it would forget once things line position div. Yeah, CSS can be really annoying, you know. Set timer. So, so the, in the beginning, this is going to be false. So that means it would have to set this to true, which is not what we want. So how do we get it to the else case though? Because if is typing is false in the beginning, how would we get it to else the else case first? That's my concern. Yeah, it's called on key down. So whenever the user uh, key downs, it's going to call this function. So when it calls this function, uh, it's going to check what the value of is typing is. So if it's true or false. In the beginning, it's going to be false. Right? Set timeout. User stop typing. I'm trying to think. Is typing set timer? Yeah, the, the only problem is like on the first time it's called, the value of is typing is going to be false. So it's just going to do this, which doesn't make any sense. Add lo-fi music. Uh, I mean, isn't lo-fi music copyrighted though? Yeah, this thing is really confusing. You're using Streamlabs, so donations are third party. I'm trying to think why, how could we get this to work? So if it's calling the function first, when it first types, we want to emit the event 100%. So if the user is not typing, if the user is not typing, Okay, so if, if is typing is false, that means we want to emit the event. Okay, yeah, I think this is backwards. Hold on. So if they are typing, uh, what happens is you're going to always set this timer every single time. And uh, eventually, and then, okay, when it sets this timer, basically this timer will basically... Uh, call set timeout. It will basically console log user stop typing. Set is typing to false. Okay. And then if the user is not typing, we're going to emit the event. Um, we're we're going to go ahead and set is typing to true. We're going to emit that event. Okay. And then what we'll do is I guess we'll clear the timeout as well. Because if we clear the timeout, that means... Uh, do we want to clear a timeout? Do we want to clear the timeout? Because if we clear the timeout here, 
That's, uh, Sahil, yo, thank you so much for uh, the 40. Is that, uh, is that rupees? I think that I think that's rupees, right? Yes, it's rupees. Thank you so much for the 40 rupees. I really appreciate that. Every single donation matters to me, so I really appreciate that. And it's not about the amount, it's just about the thought. So thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Um So if the user is typing, Okay, so if they are typing, that means that they have already entered something on the keyboard. So we're going to set the timer, set it's typing to false two seconds later. Okay, now if they're, if it's typing as false for whatever reason, then we're going to set it's typing to true. Um, but do we even need to clear the timeout? That's the question. So let's, you know what, it's better to try things out instead of trying to theorize what could happen. So the best thing to do is if you're confused about something, uh, just test it out. So let's just try that and see the behavior of it. Because maybe the behavior might actually shape the way that we, uh, uh, shape the way that we think. So users typing. Two seconds later, nothing happens. Uh, so it says you're typing. Uh, Maya, thank you so much for the dollar, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Uh, Anton, have you ever built anything and then marketed out to people? Uh, so I would say like my open source project Slappy that I built like two years ago. That was probably like my most popular project for people who are building Discord bots. I've had a private project that I built for uh, one of my private clients. And it was his responsibility to market it. Not really. No, it wasn't really my responsibility because I was just a developer. He was the owner of the business, so uh, there was that. Um, not really. I mean, if I were to, it would just really be the Discord project that I worked on. Well, not Discord project. The Discord package that I worked on two years ago. But then again, I didn't really bother marketing it. I just, you know, made a video about it. People liked it, so that was pretty much it. But you know, maybe the time will come. You know. The time will come. So uh, it should event. It should emit this user type event. So let me try this again. So okay. So the backend is receiving the event. Okay. And what happens is it's going to emit this event. But now the problem here is that we're setting is typing to true. But we're still emitting the event. But okay. So if I do, let me let me, let me try this. Now, when does it when does it say user stop typing? User stop typing. Okay, but now it's la now it's sending it like twelve times. Okay, you know what it is. Okay, it's because we're not clearing the timer, so I think we need to clear the timer every single time. And if we're in the Elsky, so clear timer. Well, actually, wait, no. Yeah, 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 wait, wait, let's do this clear timeout timer. There we go. Uh, any projects you've made money from with? Uh, I mean, honestly, I would say this YouTube channel is my biggest project because it's, if you think about it, this YouTube channel is kind of like my project, if you think about it, you know? And I would say that, Life of Mo, welcome to the stream, how are you? So the timers are getting on the stack yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. We, we need to clear the timer. What if you do typing was true and after 500 milliseconds you make it false? I mean, we're kind of doing that over here. We're setting a typing to true and then... I mean, that wouldn't really do anything. That would just delay the function that's going to be called by five, 500 seconds. Uh, let's refresh, refresh. So, user is typing. So, two seconds later... Okay, yeah, that's not good. You can see that the number of times that we're typing is the number of times it is going to uh, call that set timeout, which is not good. But we are clearing the timeout, though, are we? Because we are setting the timer. Actually, no, let me move this in here. Okay, there we go. So that works. So we're setting is type into false.
Okay, so that's going to keep on printing your typing, uh, which means, uh, let's see. So I'm going to do this. Is typing. Let's do that. I also need to disable like the tab key because if I hit tab, it's going to do this as well. I need to disable the tab key as well as shift keys because every single key is like, is being like, if I type any key, even the escape key. So let me refresh. So let's do this. So users typing, users stop typing. Okay, so is this the behavior that we want? So if this typing is false, let's look at the back end real quick. Okay, so you can see that the back end isn't receiving the event anymore. It only receive it, receives it once, which is good. So that means we only have to emit the event one time to the user. So that'll actually save up a lot of network requests because they have like, if the user, imagine if the user's like copying and pasting or like sending like 500 characters. If they have a really fast word per minute, you know, that's, that's a lot of events. And you can imagine that can be very problematic. Uh, and also if we were to implement it in a way where like you want to see the typing status on the conversation over here, like how Discord and other chats do it, right? Like if you were to do it like that, that means you have to subscribe to every single conversation and you have to receive typing events for every single conversation. So that's 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 actually you know good that we're only sending it once, which is which is actually good. Okay. Um but it, it'll be a lot it'll be a lot more complicated because we have to manage every single conversation's typing status. So I think we'll have to actually use Redux to make it global. So that way we can actually check every single conversation and check the typing status of it. So it'll be a little bit problematic, but we will, we'll worry about that later. I just want to make sure that we can at least get the easiest case working, which is really just one to one where it's only between user and it's only between one conversation. I'm not really worried about every other conversation right now because that's the complicated part. So this is not even complicated compared to that, that situation, you know, but let's get the easiest part working first and then we can move on to that. So, uh, I think what I'll do additionally is when the user stops typing, I'll emit another socket event on user stop uh, on I'll call this on typing stop and I'm going to change this to on typing start okay and then what I'll do is go to the back end and we'll just have to change this event to uh, where is it? On user typing to on typing start. And we'll emit on typing start. On typing start. And I'll also subscribe to the on typing stop message. Uh, wait, why am I doing this? It should just be once. All right, so let's see how this works. So, okay, so let me move this over here. Uh, through an error, what's going on? Can I read properties? Oh yeah, I know, I know what the problem is. We're not. I want to give me one second. Uh, let me just fix this. Oh, wait, I think I need to also send... Yeah, let me do this real quick. There we go. That should fix that. I'll type annotate things later. Because, like I say, I was working on this a little bit yesterday, but I wasn't really putting... like I wasn't really like focusing too much on it. I just wanted to see what I could do. I was like experimenting. So user stop typing. Uh, did the event even receive? Hold on, let me double check something. Let me just refresh both pages. Okay, so. So 
So let me do this. So I'm going to keep typing. Two seconds later. The backend receives on typing stop. But the problem is why is the other client not receiving it? Client to data.conversation emit on typing stop. Okay. Oh wait, I'm I'm a moron. I did not listen to on typing stop. That is silly for me to not realize that. And let me also register stocket.off on typing stop. There we go. All right, let's try this out right now. Let's refresh. You always want to refresh the page, even though React auto reloads. The reason why you want to refresh it is because sometimes your app might work, but like, only reason why it might work is because of the st of the state is like currently like uh, how do I say this? Sometimes like the app will work, but then when, re when you refresh the page, it won't work anymore. And the reason why is because the state doesn't actually change on hot reload, which is really annoying. Sometimes you just want it to, I think there's a way they can force the state to just auto reload. But like, you want to make sure that, uh, the app works with like completely new state. So let me just type, Hey, now here's the problem, right? If I submit the message, we need to also clear the timeout as well because if, if if i submit the message that means that the user stopped typing as well right so we'll have to uh we'll have to do that so i think what i'll do is i'll create an additional function that will basically so basically it'll wrap this set timer so let me do this uh hold on i'm trying to think i'm trying to think of what i want to call this but basically what i want to do essentially what i want to do is when the user uh hits enter it's going to go ahead and call this function or no, not this function. It'll call this all this right. All the, it'll execute all this code over here, which means that the user stopped typing. Because when you submit a message, that means the user stopped typing. But for now, let's just not send a message. Let's just go ahead and just type. So let's just do hello or blah blah, blah and pay attention to the other window over here. User stopped typing. So now I think what we need to do is we need to do this uh we need to actually make it so that we're we are receiving the user's status of their typing because right over here right on our on our on our state we're only this is only for ourselves it's not for the other user so i think what we need to do is this i think actually we might need to receive i think actually what we need to do is we actually need to handle this on the back end instead of the front end. Because on the back end, I think what we should be doing is checking to see if the user is typing. And then emitting an event when the user stops typing. But then again, that was just like, how do you know when the user stops typing on the back end? That doesn't make any sense, right? Because you need because there's no keyboard input on the back end perspective. It's you only get it from the front end perspective. So that's I think what we need to do is we need to emit the event. Because here's the thing, right? Like when we receive the on typing stop event, um, hmm. uh, that's how we know when the user stopped typing. But the problem is that we're receiving it on both windows, right? Like for example, if I type, you're going to see it's going to receive over here. Uh, or did it? Uh, ALS Journey, how are you? Welcome to the stream. How long have you been developing? Uh, are you talking about like in general or like how long have I been a programmer for? By the way, I think your mic is a little bit loud. Uh, I can lower it or you can lower your volume a little bit. Either way works. Um, yeah, this is a tricky part because if we receive the on typing stop, right? Let me actually refresh this page. Uh, how many years of experience? Let me see. It's 2018. So 2018 has been four years. It's about three and a half, three and a half years, I'd say. So user stop typing is being emitted over here.
Interesting. So why is the why is only this window receiving it? Well, I mean that's correct. This that window should only receive it, but I didn't really expect it to work that way because we are supposed to emit to every single room. So what that means is every single user that is connected should receive that event, including the user that was typing. But interesting because let me show you this let me refresh so we're currently in this room and you're going to see that the other user is going to be in that room so they're both in room 18 so they should technically receive the event on typing stop Should I learn React? Uh, I don't know, should you? That's the question, should you learn React? Okay, now it doesn't want to even receive the event. Hmm. Yeah, and when we emit on tipping stop, it should do client to the conversation on tipping stop. Oh, I think this emits the event to every single room except for except for the user itself. I think. Yeah, so I think it'll emit it to every single room except for yeah. Let me try this. User stop typing. Yeah, no, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I think it's only going to emit it to the, you know, I'm, I'm going to test this out. Let me open a postman. And what I'll do is. Let me see if I could do this. Uh, let me try logging in. Let me log in real quick. Should be a post request. Next or nest. I mean, they're both different things. So we can't really compare the two of them. How can you stream and still be able to focus? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's not, for me, it's not, it's, it's, it's not that hard for me. I mean, sometimes it gets a little bit complicated, but it's okay. Are there difference between software engineer and software developer? They're relatively the same thing, honestly. Like in terms of like what you'll do, like 
like it's relatively the same thing you'll be doing the same exact thing i get i don't know why i mean like you know it's just a different name some companies like calling a developer some companies like calling engineer you know it's just about the company that you go to but in, in general it's overall like real it's all the same thing uh latries how are you welcome to the stream Why am I using Nest.js instead of Express? Because Nest is just better than Express. All right, so what I'll do is I'll send a message. So we'll have to send a message to on conversation join. So that way we can join the room and that'll add us to the room and what I'll do is for the conversation ID, I'll set that to 18. So let's send. And you can see that it joined. Uh, but I don't know why. Oh, wait, let me send it as JSON. There we go. Okay, so now we are in the room. So now uh okay so now let me go ahead and try this actually i need to disconnect from this again let me i need to subscribe to the on typing start on typing stop okay so we're gonna go ahead and join the room right now so watch this we join the conversation okay and now if I were to broadcast the event, uh, if I were to type here, okay. So you can see that on this screen and this screen, they both receive the event, or do they? Okay, I'll react. This is a little bit buggy. Okay, so it says user stop typing. Okay, let's look at Postman. Oh yeah, I, I'm supposed to be looking at Postman. Whoops, not the console. All right, so I'm gonna keep typing. Postman and this should receive the on typing stop event. Perfect, it does. Great. And my socket connection just got messed up. But okay, but Postman was receiving the uh the event okay so that's good so it seems like broad so it seems like when you emit the event to the room it'll emit it to every single socket except for yourself which i guess that makes sense so that's actually good so that actually means that we can just send the event to the user and they will receive it so let's just pay attention to the on user typing event Yeah, I Nest.js is just a lot more better than Express because it is an actual full-fledged framework that has lots of MVC features. It has lots of integrations with other databases, like the contributors, the li the, the people who create the library. As it's open source too, they all created wrapper packages around the most popular packages for Express. It's built on top of Express. So, for example, things like Type ORM, they have their own Nest.js Type ORM package. They have wrappers around WebSockets. They have wrappers around Redis. They have wrappers around MySQL. They have wrappers on Mongoose. Uh, it's just generally a great framework that provides so much more than what Express can provide. Express is not a bad framework. It's just that Nest.js just does a lot. Would you estimate that it is possible to get from beginner in web dev to hire as a front end dev in three years? I mean, I would say that you could probably do it in less than three years, in my opinion, because I've seen people... It depends on your it depends on your situation, right? Because I've seen people uh, go to boot camps and they've got a job within six months, but that's also you know you spending money, thousands of dollars to get hired, to go seek professionals to help you with coding. If you're self taught, that's a different story. Give me one second. But if you're self taught, that's a different story. But you know, it just depends on the context. You know, there's no time limit or time constraint. You know, it just really depends on how much effort you put in, how much work you put in, and that's really it. 
uh, Anson, I found a typo in one of your titles, LMFA. What what typo was it? Uh, uh, Tchaikovsky, welcome back to our stream. How are you? Uh, I'm going to be right back real quick. Give me one second. All right, I'm back. Yeah, I set it up. I set it up uh, yesterday, and I was using it earlier. I think you weren't here when we set it up, but uh, or not when we set it up when we when I was like testing the commands. But I set it up uh, yesterday because I remembered. I was like, you know, let me just set it up, and I set up two commands that are the most asked questions ever, so that uh, you know. But I don't know. So now people can just use the theme command and they'll know what theme I'm using. And I'll update it. So whenever I change my theme, I'll try to update it. So that way people can just use that command and they'll know what theme it is. Um, anyways, let's see. Okay. So let's test this out again. So let me refresh. So, so I'm typing right now. On typing stop, user stop typing. Okay. So... Uh, the state is obviously still the same. I don't know what my icon pack is. Sorry. So, okay, the problem is that the other user is not receiving the on typing start. On user typing. On user typing. I mean, are we emitting the correct event on the back end? That's my guess. On user, on typing start. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, okay. I can't, yeah, I need to fix this. It's on typing start. There we go. There we go. I think my icon pack is material icons, I think. Very basic icon pack. Use a Nightbot API and a VS Code plugin to change the command whenever you change the theme. Uh, Sure. Maybe that'll be a project that I can work on later. That's good, though, because at least whenever I change the theme, um, I just update it from there. Prisma versus TypeORM. I barely use TypeORM. I mean, I'm, I barely use Prisma, so... Uh, I'm fine. I'm still building my app. What about you? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. Uh, also, I don't. I want a shameless plug, but I don't know if any of you all are interested in. So, but I'm just gonna plug this right now. Uh, but what I what I set up yesterday was I, I set up a new uh, tier on my channel membership, and basically what I did was uh, I added a tier. So if you join. Uh, you can basically get access to private channels on this and this is only if you need like, you know, private help with code So basically you'll get access to a private channel and You can literally, you know, create private threads. You can ping me do whatever you'll get basically private assistance with whatever project you need help on So if you want if you're interested in that uh, You could check out that on the membership panel over there. It's called developer intern uh, and I'm just putting that out there. You know, you don't have to join, but I'm just putting that out there because I get a lot of requests sometimes in my DMs of people just, you know, asking for private help. And, you know, I'm just really busy generally. And it's not that I don't want to help people. It's just I'm really busy. So I figured, you know, well, why don't I start a tier? And if you're interested in, you know, any questions that you have, any questions that you need help with, you know, you can ping me. Because, like, with the, the difference between going on the server and asking for help and going into this private channel and asking for help is that on the server, I don't really respond to pings because I just, you know, I'm just not really entitled to responding to the pings. I'll respond on my own will, right? Not that I don't respond, but I'll respond whenever I see it, right? But this kind of, this, this tier is just more, like, personal. Like, it's more like, you know, you get personal direct access. 
and there's like there's you don't have to worry about you don't have to feel bad about pinging me you don't have to feel bad about spamming me with questions like i'll be monitoring the chat all the time so whenever you send a message it will notify me immediately and i'll answer it when i see it and when i don't see it i'll prioritize it on my list so it's basically you get a higher priority than other people but i'm only putting that out there you guys don't have to join but if it's something that you're interested in uh you know if you're someone that is working on a lot of projects you need a little bit of assistance handhelding you know i'm there for you uh but yeah it's only a 4.99 a month um and only like three dollars of that goes to me so if you're interested you know check it out you can just go to uh the membership chat membership tab on the channel and join but if you're not interested you know that's also okay as well you can just ask your question on the regular channel and whenever i see it i'll answer it but it's also a good way to support me uh, if you want to, you don't have to, but you know, whether, whether if you want to watch for free, that's also fine too. I don't, I don't mind like, you know, like it's, it's okay for me. Like, I don't mind like, you know, member or not. Like I treat everyone the same. What's up, Display? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Okay, let's test this out. Um, so if I type, okay, so you can see that I'm receiving the event, but it's receiving it twice, which is not good. Uh, I'm doing good. How about you? Okay, why is it logging twice? Oh, I know why it's logging it twice. Because I need to change the name right over here. Welcome back to the stream, by the way. You know, we're seeing a lot of reoccurring viewers, which is great. Lots of reoccurring viewers, which is awesome. I'm good. Did you eat breakfast? Uh, not yet. I'll probably eat breakfast maybe in four hours, probably. Yeah, maybe in like four hours I'll eat breakfast. On oh, typing stop. There we go. Bro, it's fasting. I mean, not really fasting. I just have like a certain time during the day where I just eat. Like, I just don't eat whenever I want to eat. Like, I just, you know, have a set time of when I do eat. I'm trying to learn some programming languages and API 16 hours a day. Nice, 16 hours, wow. Just don't get burnt out, and I hope you don't. Because learning is a lot of fun when you really fall in love with it. That's all I'll say. But, you know, as long as you're passionate about it, you know, who cares? I will say this, though. I remember one time I went to my professor in college, and I told my professor that I was coding for, like, 12 hours a day. And he actually gave me some good advice. He told me that, you know, it's it's one thing to actually like to program, but when, you have, when, when it becomes obs an obsession, that's not good. You know, when you're young, it might be okay, but obviously when you get a lot older, it's a lot different. But, you know, I think it's fine. Honestly, I personally don't really think it's that bad as long as you're just taking breaks in between. But I don't think I would want to code for 16 hours a day anymore. I could if I really wanted to. I mean, I've done it before. But uh, as long as you're taking breaks in between, I think it should be fine. You know, as long as you're getting up, stretching, take like a one hour break, you know, it's fine, you know. Bro, I am creating a new Discord library and I want from you to make a star for my repo. I will be happy. Um, nah, that's just shameless plugging right there. I mean, listen, if, you're, if your library is... If your library is that good, it will get it'll naturally gain stars and forks from people who want to contribute. Yeah, uh Triboy, that's actually what I was addressing earlier is that we have to disable we have to disable um we have to disable like uh what's it called? Do we have to disable other things like tab because like if I were to do shift you can see that it triggers this, which should which we have to disable it. If I do tab, that should also be disabled as well. If I do backspace, uh, I mean, I think backspace should... Yeah, I guess backspace should also not trigger it too. You're right. Uh, Q, yeah, these things should not trigger it. Have you used tab 9? It is an extension in VS Code which auto-suggests your code. Uh, no, and I don't think I... I probably will refrain from using tools like that. But uh, our event thing is working, so that's great. So now the only issue is that how do we make it so that we can display that the user is typing? So now that here's the thing, now that we know that this event is only going to be received uh, when the other user is typing, I guess what we could do is this. Let's go ahead and do this. Let me remove this 
And uh, let's do this. Because this is typing variable is only for the our, ourselves. We need to go ahead and create one for the other user. Uh, my library is under maintenance at any way, but when I finish it, what you suggest to make it famous, and I'll do many things to make this library easy. Uh, listen, like, I think the best way, I mean, I think the best way is obviously make videos about it, uh, share with your friends, uh, you know, do stuff like that, and get the word out there. Uh, you know, if it's a good library, I'll be more than happy to check it out. Uh, yeah, Lulu, what's up? How are you, man? I haven't seen you for a couple days. Hope you hope all is well. Probably refrain from using these cheats. Yeah, we got uh, we got we got a good we got a good chat going on. We got a, we got good people here. You know, we got a good chat going on, so I'm I'm happy. Set is recipient typing. Uh, okay, so what I'll do is when on typing start, we'll do set recipient set is recipient typing to true. And then when it stops, we'll call this it's false. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll have to pass down this variable. And I might migrate this to Redux. Let me move this here. But I'm actually really happy that we got this working. Shout out to Hype for helping us out. Shout out to everyone else too for helping out too. But Hype was recommending a lot of stuff because he's done stuff like this before. So shout out to him and like all of you. Uh, like all of you. Yeah, I mean, you guys know who you are for helping out and contributing. Um. For now, I would go ahead and do this. Uh, let's do. For now, I'll just put this down here. I thought on type for this current user only. No, so what happens is uh, on typing starts for the receiving user because what happens is we're emitting event to the server and the server is going to broadcast it to the room and the room is only going to emit that event to the to every other user except for the user itself. Every other user in the room except for the person who uh, sent the event, if that makes sense. Because we used a room because yesterday I was working with rooms and we got it working so that's that's why we're able to get this to work. Uh, are you actually going to publish this chat app, or is it just for practice? It's for practice. Uh, I'm not I'm not planning on even if I deploy it, I'm not going to keep it up. But I will deploy it at some point. I was actually thinking about deploying it today, but we have so much other stuff to do, so I won't deploy it today. But um, it's just for practice. I want to you know just test it out, test my skills. Um, and I'll deploy it and then let you guys test it out, let you guys play around with it. It's also open source too. So if you all want, the code is all in the description. It's all open source. So you can fork it, star it, do whatever you want with it. Um, but yeah, I just ask that you don't, uh, raise, I, I just ask that you don't open pull requests because I'm not really going to look at those. Uh, but you're more than welcome to, uh, you know, writing an issue if you see like a bug or something like that or a suggestion. I don't know. It's, it's up to you. Uh, Ayo, I'm watching your Discord series and it helped me out so much with understanding V14. I lost interest at the V11 due to me not understanding docs on 12 and 13. LMAO. Hey, listen, I'm glad that uh I'm glad that you like the series, you know. I just made those videos for fun and I didn't really expect anything out of it. And it makes me happy whenever I hear people saying that they like the video. So that's great. Uh La Red Game, welcome, welcome, bonjour. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Are you French? All right, but yeah, let's test this out. Let's wait for the. Let's see the moment of truth now. All right, so when I type, is this typing? And when I stop, there we go. If I type here, it works. If I stop, nothing happens. And if I go here, this should not affect the other user because we're in a different room now. And this should not affect the other because we're in a different perfect. 
There we go. That's how we like it. And of course, you just need some finishes, but the general purpose, it's working, and that's great. And obviously, we'll fix it up a little bit. Uh, so what we need to do is when I type, we need to get the other user... Uh, his name typing and that should be that shouldn't be really hard um because i think what we need to do is this uh which packages are you using what do you mean by packages are you talking about like project dependencies or like vs code damn nightbot is being annoying I kind of don't like night. Is, let me let me disable this moderation crap with the emojis. I don't mind emojis. I don't know why. I don't know. Let me let me let me configure this real quick. Uh, let me do this. Uh, let me let me because I don't. It's it's. Let me let me uh, access emotes. Okay, let me disable that. Access caps. I don't really care about caps, honestly. I mostly just care about people like you know like spamming like inappropriate stuff. Like how we like we had that bot coming in over and over again spamming. So I don't really care about emotes. I don't really care about caps. Uh, symbols. I don't really care about symbols. It's just mostly just phrases and excess caps. So, all right, yeah, you, you you should be able to send. You should be able to send uh, emotes now. NPM packages. Uh, just go to the GitHub link in the description, and you'll be able to see the package.json file. I think there are a lot of French in the chat too. I'm a French. Nice. Uh, I'm not French, but I took French in high school and college, but I'm, I'm not really good at French because I haven't really been practicing it, but I know a little bit of phrases, but I am too shy to speak it on stream, but I know a little bit, I know a little bit of French, um, not too great with it though. I actually have a French textbook in my, on my bookshelf because I wanted to actually pick up French again because I was learning, uh, Russian for a couple months and I wanted to learn other languages too, but I haven't really got into it because I just really want to focus on one language right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care about emotes. I don't know. Uh, by default, Nightbot actually just disabled it. Um, but yeah, I I disabled it right now. So you can see that I disabled that. Um, and I only have two commands right now. Uh, there you go, right over here. And yeah, I, I didn't really do much. I only just set up like the important stuff. Like, you know, I didn't really do much. Was AFK, did you manage? Yeah, we managed it. So let's, so let's, so let's see what happened. Uh... Now, obviously, I do have to disable backspace. I mean, I think backspace should actually trigger the typing, in my opinion. But things like shift, I don't think shift should trigger it. Because you can see right over here, it's spamming it, which is not good. So I can easily disable that, though. Uh, how old am I? Uh, guess. Oh, also, Maya, what, what was the uh, what was the, uh, the the title that you said I had a typo on? What, what was the title? Because I, I don't think I saw it. Try minimizing the text 20 pixels on regular font size. Yeah, I know. I only had that text there for testing purposes. Don't worry. Like, whenever you see something that doesn't make sense, trust me, I know what's going on. When you see something that doesn't make sense, I'm aware of it. The only reason why it doesn't make sense is because we're only putting it there for testing purposes. So that way we can see a proof of concept and then we can modify it to fit our needs. But obviously the way that we're, the what we're going to do is we're going to make it we're gonna make it a lot nicer obviously we're not obviously it's not gonna look like crap you know like obviously like any any normal human being that is using a chat app would see this and they would just close the application and delete their whole account and not want to use it ever again because if i saw something like this on a chat app i would not i would never use that again i would never use that app ever again never i would just uninstall it delete my account pretend i never even heard of the app but yeah we'll make it nicer though. don't worry don't worry don't worry We'll make it nicer. Uh, I'll probably put the typing status maybe on top over here or down here. I'm not too sure. Um, but it, it doesn't really matter, you know. In a sense, what matters the most is getting the user's name being displayed as well as the typing status, which is not hard, right? Because we can very easily get the conversation that we're currently in because we created a selector right over here, select conversation by ID. So all we have to do is just pass in the ID and then we're good. Uh What's up, Siach? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Is this just for fun, by the way? Yes, it is just for fun. It is absolutely... You know what happened yesterday? I This is so weird. Like, 
I refreshed my I refreshed my subscriber count yesterday, and I had seventeen thousand eight hundred and thirty nine. And and when I refreshed it, it went from seventeen thousand eight hundred thirty nine to seventeen thousand seven hundred eighty nine. So I lost like forty subs out of nowhere. And I think what may have happened was I think a lot of bots may have subscribed to my channel, and YouTube must have deleted those accounts. So I think it just auto pruned. That's why like a lot of people tend to like lose subs. Um. All I'm seeing is that I'm under 25 years old. Uh, Basso MC, welcome back to the stream. Yeah, right now it's showing 17.8k because uh, we gained we gained uh, 40 more subs again, which is good. But uh, anyways, so let me do this real quick. Okay, so let me just fix this up. Let me. I don't know how I want to style this to be honest with you, but let me open up my favorite tool, Figma. And this is the tool that we'll be using when we build our new project. Uh, let me see. Let me go into Figma real quick. And I always like styling things ahead of time before I actually implement them. It's just like, it's just better that way, you know? Because sometimes like trying to do it from scratch, it just feels like trying to do it in CSS without a wireframe just feels, it just feels weird to me now. Before I never used a, a wireframe and it was just hard to just think about what I want to style. But with a wireframe, it's just so much better. So what I would essentially think of doing is this. So uh, let's do this. Let's maybe add like a text over here. Albert is typing. Maybe something like this. Let me right over here and we can minimize the font a little bit. Maybe set it to 11 and then set it to a, set it to a different color. Like that, and then maybe do that. And we can even bold it too if we need to. I don't know, I don't like the bold. But we could do something like this. What do you guys think? This is just Discord LMFA. Oh yeah, that's the whole that's the whole plan is to create Discord and uh basically recreate Discord. No, I'm kidding. Discord employees, if you're watching this, I am not creating Discord. This is open source project. Do not go after me. You could bold the name. Yeah, the name's already bolded already. Privet. Soz. I don't know how to pronounce Soz. Soz that deal. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Welcome to the stream. Zrastvoitya. It's barely readable. Start some open source projects we can contribute. I was thinking about that, you know. I was thinking about actually starting a another tier on my on my membership. I don't know, like I was actually asking my friend about this yesterday because I was thinking about starting like a tier where you can join and people who join that tier they can get access to my Asana project board, they can get access to my Figma, they can get access to my GitHub organization, and they can all contribute live while I'm streaming. I was thinking about doing that. I'm not really sure though. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't really know. Like, I, you know, sometimes I like, I, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, sometimes I do feel a little bit bad for like marketing, like, you know, my members or my, or like, I, I, I just don't like asking for donations. I don't like asking people to join. But, you know, if I'm offering something, I think that's a different story. So that's what I was thinking, you know, like, cause I've, I've gotten suggestions before. Like, like people have asked me, which, and they gave me the idea. They were like, you know, they were like, I would love to like, you know, contribute to your like Trello board, your GitHub board, whatever, all that kind of stuff, right? And I was thinking, you know, what if I started something like that and see how that would work? But I don't, I don't know, like, you know, I'll probably do that. I'll probably work on that maybe today. And if people join, if they're interested, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to try, you know, I don't know. It's a personal branding op. This is basically one part of Instagram. Yo, what's up, Ahmed? How are you? Start some open source where you can interview. Everyone starts speaking their language. So maybe I'm going to go with mine. Is that a shiny casket? Is that a... I'm going to guess. Is that Serbian? Croatian? I'm going to guess Serbian or Croatian. 
Can you give me a recommendation of Nest.js course? Paid course, okay, then should I need to learn Express? I mean, you don't need to pay for a course. Because honestly, everything that you can find on Udemy, you can find on my channel. And I'm not trying to say that to shamelessly plug. I'm just saying that because I've literally covered all of the basic fundamentals as well as the advanced advanced core concepts of Nest. Like, you, for example, if you go if you go on my playlist right now, right, for, and, I'll, and I'll show, and I'll go give you an overview right now. And it's absolutely free. Like, you don't need to pay anyone for this. So if you go over here, you have Nest.js Crash Course, all in the top. You have Nest.js Type ORM Crash Course. I'm going to release a MongoDB Crash Course soon. Uh, you have Nest.js Tutorial. So you have individual tutorials, one by one. You have number one, that's the introductory. You have controls and services. You have uh, learning how to control and send the response back. You have post requests, DTOs. You have validating post requests, filtering passwords. Uh, middleware exceptions and handling exceptions, connecting to MySQL, saving users through database, authentication, hashing, sessions. I mean, the only things that this uh, course does not have is it doesn't have MongoDB, which I will add eventually. But uh, you have session stores, you have Passport, uh, you have unit testing, you have unit testing services and controllers, you have unit testing with type RM, you have end-to-end -end testing, you have end-to-end -end testing with local authentication, and now you have newer, uh, episodes with WebSockets. So, I will add more episodes, like, I'm gonna add MongoDB to this playlist, I'm gonna add other things too, as well. Uh, I think the other things that is missing are probably, I'll probably go over some other stuff too, but there's a lot of stuff that... I did not cover that are in the crash course but yeah you know like don't pay for courses unless if you really need to but i would say give it give the free resources a try first before you pay for like a 90 dollar course i'm not saying that don't pay for it but uh yeah uh shiny cascade uh dobro jutro hopefully i pronounced that right kako ide um i know a little bit of serbian but i'm not too good with it actually wait, what am i talking about you're not you're not serbian wait sorry about that I thought, I don't know, my brain is not working today. You're, you said you were Polish. I wasn't even paying attention to chat. Oh, I don't know your place. Yeah, go ahead and check out that playlist and see if you like it or not. But of course, you know, there's lots of different resources on YouTube. Like, don't just watch one resource, right? Like, if my resource doesn't work, try someone else's video on YouTube. Like, there's lots of videos that you can find on YouTube. It's You don't want to limit yourself to only one resource, you know? I'm spamming emojis on this complaint. I'm new to here and I want to learn this. Thanks, welcome to here. Yeah, welcome to the stream, Ezekiel. Nice to have you here. Is TypeScript a must? Uh, I would say so myself, you know, because I think that JavaScript is great, but I think that, you know, I just think that everyone should just learn TypeScript because it just has features that everything that you learn in TypeScript can translate very easily to other languages. Like, for example, if you only learn JavaScript, you're not really going to take advantage of features that TypeScript has, like interfaces, object-oriented programming, polymorphism, abstract classes, interfaces, enums, uh, inheritance, like JavaScript does have that, but it's not, it's bootlegged, you know, it's crap, it's shit. You want to, you want to use TypeScript because TypeScript has amazing features that can translate to other languages like C Sharp, Java, uh, what else? What are other languages that are fully object in programming? I think PHP as well. Um, I know Java and C Sharp are probably like the two best languages when it comes to object in programming. 100% say that. Why Mongo over post post SQL? I don't know what post. I, I think you mean Postgres. I'm not, I'm not too sure what you mean, but Mong, But I, I'll just say Mongo over SQL. Mongo is is good in the sense that you have data that is not relational. You can just drop it into the document and forget about it, and you can reference it later on. But the problem here is that eventually, a lot of applications in the modern world, especially if you're building like a really large scale application, it will yield towards relational data. I mean, if you think about it. If you, even if you have the smallest application that has user authentication and a user profile, in some shape, in some shape or form, that user is going to have a relation with that profile schema, right? So that's relational. As much as you might deny it, that's technically relational data right there. You know, so it's it's kind of impossible to to not have relational data. You know what I mean? Unless if you just have like, unless if you were building like an image drop application where you upload images and share with anyone else and you had no uh, idea of who the user is whatsoever, then yeah, that's a different story, right? Um, but even then, the, like, you know, apps like Imgur, they have features like that where you can sign up and you know what I mean? Like it just, it's just like, you know, it's really hard to avoid relational data these days. Do you use Tailwind? I do not. What else should I use? Uh, you know, I would say for now, just start with JavaScript. 
React, Node, and then once you get a good basis of it, then you can move on. Like for example, my first project that I built, I built a weather app where I used the, uh, I think it was Open Weather Map. I'm, I'm not sure what the API was called, Open Weather. It was some like free weather data API. And all it did was it fetched weather data API. And that was the first project that I built. You know, and it was it was like a really simple UI. It was a really simple web form. You know, it was really simple. Did you go to university or trade school? I went to university, yes. And I used Vue.js for that project too. How did you make this project? I used styled components. I built every single component you see from scratch. Yeah, honestly, I think I'll put the text over here. Uh, yeah, I'll put the text over there. So here's what I'll do. Um, let's create a component. So let me see. I definitely want to put it on top of the input field. So let's we'll probably put it over here. Uh, yo, Ezekiel, thank you so much for joining as a developer, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And make sure, Ezekiel, you join the Discord server because if you join the Discord server, you'll get access to uh, the private channel and you'll get access to a cool role on the server. So make sure you join the Discord server. Uh, let me get to you the link real quick. But thank you so much. I really appreciate that, man. Discord. There you go. You should be able to see the server over there. Uh, thanks. I have to learn TypeScript, but I didn't want my code to look messy. I would argue that TypeScript actually makes your code look more organized, you know? Oh, shit. I accidentally showed my friends. Sorry about that. Um, move that there. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, make sure you join the Discord. You'll get access to some private channels. I'm still working on the private channels, but you'll get access to them, and you'll get the nice role over here. So make sure you join that, and, uh, yeah, it'll make the world a better place. Uh, let me see. One second. I'll have to synchronize it for you too, so give me one second. Yeah, Codering is like an old server now. Codering is old. Uh, I mean, I still look at it from time to time, but I don't really, I don't really like pay much attention to that server anymore. I mean, not that I don't pay attention, it's just like, I don't really, I, I post, I put most of my investment into my brand new server now. So that is like the server that, uh, you know, you guys, you guys should join. Let me synchronize. Here we go. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and I'll put it on top of this input field. But I think that might mess up our message panel body. I'm not sure. So what I might do is I might actually create like a wrapper for message input field. And the, like I'll probably put a div. But first, let's create the component first. So here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll go into style and I'll do this. Is there a remote server somewhere just storing user messages or is it just all P2P? Uh, I mean, there's a database where we're storing the messages and we're fetching them from the API. I don't know if that answers your question. I hope it does. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I know if I put it on top of here, it'll mess up the flex box a little bit. Or maybe it won't. I don't think it will. Let's see. Okay, yeah, but you see that, you see what happens, right? You can see that right over there. Should the status stay there if the user is typing? Or like if they scroll, 
I think if they scroll, yeah, it shouldn't it should be it shouldn't be part of the scroll. I mean, I don't know what do you guys think. Like if if I scroll, like should the typing status still be there? I think it should. I think it should. I think it should. I don't really think it really matters that much, honestly. Okay, yeah, I don't really think it matters that much. Alright. Alright, so what we'll need to do is we'll need to get the recipient, the other user, basically. And to do that, it shouldn't be that hard. And we'll only render... So here's what I'll do. I'll only render... So I'll, I'll render the status here. So let me do this. So I'll leave the box here. Actually, I'm trying to think. Uh, okay, let me focus on this first. So let me go ahead and do this. Const conversation equals use selector. Uh, I don't know what you said, but uh, can someone translate, please? Or let's keep it English for now uh but if someone can translate that'd be great i that definitely looks polish though right there are such in the booth that seaside are sure good from oh that was definitely that was polish right let me see Select conversation by ID, so we'll just pass in. Uh, what keyboard am I using? I'm using the Discord keyboard. I'm using the Discord keyboard. Uh, the snow, snow's giving keyboard. Yeah, he wrote about his kids having fun with programming. Perfect. All right. So uh, we don't know who the recipient is because remember the recipient is based on who the who the conversation was created for. So we'll have to check. So we can very easily just create a fun. Honestly, let me just create a helper function. I should have done this from the very beginning. I don't know why I didn't think of this. Maybe because you know there was just so much to do. Let's create a file called helpers.ts, and I'll create a function that'll help give us the opposing user. Uh, but I will be right back real quick. Give me one second. All right, I'm back. All right, let's continue. So let's go over here. Let's create a helper function. And what we'll do is we'll need to get the recipient. Oh, wait, what am I doing? 
Uh, Shat MX, welcome to the stream. How are you? Welcome back to the stream, I should say. Nice to see you here again, man. All right, let's see. Get recipient from conversation. Conversation type annotate this with conversation type. And basically what we want to do is we want to take in the conversation as well as the authenticated user. Okay. And what we'll do is this. So if well actually we just do a ternary operator. Return user dot id if the user id is equal to conversation dot uh, creator, then we will go ahead and return uh, conversation dot recipient. However, if user ID is equal is not equal to creator, that means that we'll return conversation dot creator. So this will allow us to get the correct. Oh wait, whoops. Allow us to get the correct user. So now I can just call this function anywhere I want. So what I can do is I can just do get recipient from conversation, pass in conversation user like this. And I can just do first name is typing like that. Now, of course, obviously this is going to be, uh, this is not, this is going to give us an issue because uh, we're calling that, but let me actually fix this up a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll also just make these optional. Okay, and then of course in the end, I'll let me I'll just need to use the con use the use user. So let's do const user equals use context with context. That should fix that, and this could be user undefined. And so what we'll do is we'll do recipient dot first name is typing. And now it's going to say Aaron is typing, Ibrahim is typing, Clement is typing, Derek, blah blah blah. I've made another impression of the chat app you were making on Figma, but how do I copy the CSS style from Figma and paste in my code? Uh, well, actually, I think Figma has this uh, inspect feature, I think, or it's prototype. I'm not really sure, but I do remember there was an oh, export. Uh, I think there was this export thing. I'm not sure, but I, I do remember there was something they could export as a CSS, but I think it's only for very specific things. Like if I do export over here, I, I do remember there was a feature where you could do that. Oh, yeah, right over here. So you can see that it gives you the CSS. It gives you, but it's like some of the CSS properties won't really matter too much because like, for example, like over here, it says position apps. I don't know. I don't know if you can see this, but it says position absolute over here. But obviously, that doesn't really apply to us because we're not positioning this absolutely, you know. But uh, yeah, you don't really need a plugin for that. Uh, anyways, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, is recipient typing, and then we'll save, and then let's go over here. So let's try this out. Let's go into our app. Where's the other window? There we go. Okay, so now if I type, let's go into both conversations. Uh, interesting. Let me refresh a little bit. Aaron Anson is typing. Aaron is typing. Perfect. There we go. That's what I like. Okay. And let me also do one more thing. I will modify this a little bit. So that way it's aligned with the input field. So uh, let me look at the message input. So this has a font size of 18, color of this, margin four. I do need some padding. So I think I'll set the padding to this and a margin four. So let's try that. Okay, that's not what I want. Uh, I definitely don't want that much padding. I think, let me try this. Uh, top, bottom, left, right. Let's try top, bottom, zero, left, right, 32. Okay, no, that's not. I want it to be aligned with this. So let me try margin. 
Yeah, this is actually not bad. Is this UI final? It looks a bit too static. What do you mean by static? Ants in Discord server. Let me try margin top. Let me try 10 pixels. I want to do margin top bottom 10 and then maybe left and right zero. Let me see. Do I want it here or in here? And also, I want to change the font size a little bit. Font size 11 pixels. The PFP colors are bad. I mean, it's. I mean, don't really don't worry about the PFP colors, because that's just literally a placeholder. Because we still have to implement other stuff like adding the users avatars, which we'll worry about later. Because we're going to be using S3 to save the users profile pictures. Uh, it looks a bit too static in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I mean, right now I'm not really worried about animations. Like, when you're building an app, you don't worry about all the unnecessary things. Like, I feel like animations are unnecessary. Worrying about the profile pictures are unnecessary. Those things that can, those things can come last, you know. Like, for example, when you build an app, you always want to focus on the, the, the main features first before you think about the things that are, that can come later, you know. Like, for example, if I'm building an e-commerce app, the most important thing that I need to worry about is making sure that users can uh, see products, add products to a cart. And when they leave their cart and then navigate across the site, they can still see their cart. When they exit the page and when they come back to the app again, their cart is uh, is still there, you know. So those are the main features first. And then once you're finished with those main features, you can worry about other stuff too. Like maybe adding like, you know, like animations, adding transitions, things like that, you know. Once you have the major details worked out, everything else becomes very, very easy. All right, take it easy, Maya. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow or I'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by. But uh, yeah, I, I, we will add some animations though, don't worry. But let me just fix up the other stuff. Yo, what's up Daniel? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? And just to update you, we got the typing status to work on both ends, which is great. You can see it's over there. I, I don't really like this, the color of this. I'm going to change the color a little bit. And I'll change the font size to 12 pixels instead. Now the color's trash. Just woke up nice, nice. Hey, listen, at least you didn't, at least you didn't wake up in Albuquerque. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Is that how you do italics? How do you do uh, CSS italics? Font style. What keyboard switch do I use? I use... Uh... Oh yeah, that's a good thing that you reminded me. Because now I can also... I'm going to also set up Nightbot to... Let me, let me do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a PC part lick I'm gonna add a PC part picker. Um that'll like show my PC specs, my keyboard, everything. But um Is it font or font is it font or just font style? Because I see there's font style, but I guess font is also new too. I think you should do both, can't you? I'll just do font style whatever Google says font style italic uh, so yeah the keyboard switch that I use is uh, so so Gabor the keyboard switch that I use is red switches so uh, add some padding Add some margin on the left. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys think this looks better? Like, do you guys like this? Or do you guys prefer... Do you guys want some padding? 
Like, do you guys think we should put it shift it to the the right a little bit more? Uh, I think it's Gat Reds. It's it's the it's the Discord keyboard. If you guys if you guys remember the Snow's Giving uh, event that Discord hosted, where they uh, were selling the keyboards, uh, I bought it back in like back in November. So you guys want padding? Okay, let's do some padding. Me personally, I don't really like the padding, but you know, you guys like it, so I'll do I'll add it anyways. I mean I like the pad I mean for me it's like whatever. I don't really I don't really mind. It's not really that big of a deal for me, but I'll add it. Uh modal header style. Where's the I want to make sure it aligns with the message container? Top right there too. Give me one second. Oh yeah, this is going to be a little bit annoying. Okay, I'll figure it out. Uh, let's try this. Uh, I just want to make sure it aligns with it, but even if it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. Huh. Let me see something real quick. Let me do this. Let me go over to... Alright, let me see... Uh, I'm trying to think. Be good. Would be a good idea. Let me see. Let me check something real quick. Yeah, so Discord shows the status on the bottom, but I'm trying to like see if I can let me see if I can find like an active channel where people are typing right now so I can see what the status looks like. Am I any Discord servers? Any active Discord servers? Okay, yeah, so I'm looking at Discord, so Discord adds like this animation bar and then it adds the typing. Honestly, I really don't think it matters, honestly. Like I think it's just personal preference. Like I'll add it honestly, I think but what I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll just add it to the bottom instead. I think it will look better on the bottom in my opinion. Because if it's because when you add it on the top, right, it just feels weird because you have all the spacing. But if you add it on the bottom, it's fine, you know. But I also don't like this spacing down here so let me fix that real quick so let's go into index.tsx let's go over here let me refresh i'll add I'll, i think there might be an animation library that we can use to add like 
some animation over here. But I don't like how like it adds. Oh, wait, hold on, give me a second. What's wrong with my Brave browser? Why can I not click? Run. Can you add a send button later? Yeah, I'll do that. Don't worry. I personally don't even think it's necessary to add a send button, to be honest with you, because most people hit enter all the time or, or return. But we could do that. I just think that it would just... I just don't think it would look nice, though, because you would have to add it, like, to this. I mean, I could, you know. I, you know, I'll do it. I'll do it just for you. I'll do it just for you, Tribui. Just for you, I'll add a send button. And no one else, but just for you. Yeah, I'll add it. Don't worry. Uh, maybe not right now, but probably later. Uh, some dude yesterday suggested that I should check Zustin. I did it, and from what I've seen so far, I mean, weren't you here yesterday, um, saying how you hated Redux? Because I thought you already used Zustin already, or you just said you hated Redux, but you didn't know what Zustin was. Because I remember you were saying that you hated you 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 you're actually I think you were talking about Zustin, and you said you liked that way better. Okay. So, let me see. Uh, if I'm typing... Okay, wait, why is it not receiving? That's really weird. Okay, I don't like how it adds that little... That huge spacing. But uh, what I'll do is... I'll go over here. And let me do this. What I like to do is I'll go into the browser tab and let me see what the problem is. Yeah, so this is actually coming from the padding on the bottom. Uh, so I think what we can do is we can just fix the padding for this div. So instead of giving padding 32, we can just do top right Bottom, we could do 32 minus 10, so maybe... Well, how much padding does this have? It has, uh, it has margin, actually, margin of 14, or margin of 10. So you could do maybe 22 pixels. Or maybe not even that much, honestly. We could do maybe 8 pixels and 32. Yeah. I think that would look better. What happens if they're not typing, though? I think we'll have to dynamically change the padding because like let's say for example if I were to change the padding right so if I were to change it to this right now and if I were to get rid of the typing status it would look like this and that's not what you want so I think what we can do actually is uh, maybe what we could do is this Let me remove the margin real quick. I definitely want some margin on the top. But not on the bottom. But yeah, it's the padding that's coming from the bottom, which is not good. Uh, yeah, I could just remove some padding and make it dynamic. But then again, that would be, that'd actually be a little bit more annoying. So let me just do this. I mean, what I could also do is that if the user is typing, I could also pass this as a variable to message panel body. So here's what I could do, right? I could literally just take a prop in here. I'll show you. You know what? Let's just do it this way. I don't want to do it this way, but you know, we'll do it. And basically what I'll do is this. Uh, so what we'll do is padding 
So if is typing is typing, we'll do CSS or CSS. So what I can do is if the user is typing, I could set the padding bottom to, I could just do padding top right bottom left like that. And if the user is not typing, we can set the padding back to 32 pixels like that, like that. And so now let's just do is typing, is recipient typing. And if we go down here, let me do this. Okay, so now let me refresh both pages. Let me just move this a little bit up here. Okay, so I type, you can see that the padding is removed. Not sure why it's not working. Actually, no, the padding is actually really bad. Hold on. This is really buggy right now is what I'll say. Yeah, and we don't want, yeah, actually, no, I don't really like that. Um, hmm. There should be a way, you know, you know, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me remove this. Remove this. I think what I'll do is this. What if I added padding? Wait, no. Remove padding from. Yeah, you know, that would be a problem because it would only show it if it appears. And so that's really annoying. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. I think maybe I'll put this inside this div. I think maybe what I need is I need like a reserved space for this message status. Is there a way I can like, let me see. Okay, I think I know what I'll do. What if I were, what if I rendered message status at all times, right? But I only rendered, let's see, what if I did this? What if I did that? No, that would, no, yeah, that's not good. You want it reserved down there. That's what you want. Anson, if it is you, the person that suggested this, then why are you using, I, I wasn't the one that suggested read assistant. I was saying yesterday you came into the stream and you were saying that you did not like Redux and then you were talking about Zustin. And what I said earlier was like, I was confused because I thought you, were the one that was suggesting to use Zustin. So that's why I'm a little bit surprised when you said that someone recommended to you because I thought you were actually recommend recommending it to me. But someone actually, because I, I thought it was you that came in. I mean, it wasn't only you, but like I know a, a couple other people had actually uh, suggested Zustin. But I personally uh, would rather just use Redux because I believe that, uh, you know, Redux is fine, especially with Redux Toolkit. And I mean, I'm not saying Zustin is bad, you know. I'm just saying like... um. 
it's worth learning Redux in the long run, in my opinion, because a lot of companies will use Redux over Zustin. And learning a tool that a company uses is not a bad idea. And especially when it's a lot of the companies in the industry that are using that, you know, so that's why I, that's why, and this is like a learning process for me. Cause like I have never used Redux before or I have, but like to a certain extent. So this is like my learning experience building a project using Redux so I can get better at it. So, you know, it'll basically make me more marketable in a sense, if you think about it. But uh, for a fresh project, I mean, I can try Zustin. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll try Zustin, you know. Um, let me see. There's an inbuilt notification type something and it's fluent and it works fine or something like that. And it gets all these. Uh, I probably want to. Maybe at the certain time, let me make the pattern gone. Make two C's class and assign them based on the issues. Maybe. I'm not going to think so much about this. Right? This padding thing is like really annoying. I'll figure it out eventually. I'm not, I'm not going to worry so much about it right now. I think honestly, I'll just I'll just leave it like that. Um, I mean, one thing that I could do is I could also just set a fixed height for this, but I don't really think that'd be a good idea. Like I could set a fixed height to seventy-five pixels. Right, and so whenever I type, that will I mean, I think it's okay to set a fixed height. Maybe what if I set auto though? Yeah, no, it's not good. Maybe I could do twenty pixels. Or let me do this. So I think we'll set this to 20 pixels. And I think what we could do is we can then remove the padding uh, from, we can remove some padding. So then let me go over to message panel and we could do padding top, right, maybe bottom 20 pixels left. Actually, wait, uh, the height is 20. So what if I did 32 minus 20? That's 12 pixels. Yeah, I'll do 12. Uh, you know what? Let me do let me do 18 pixels, actually. Or let me do 14 pixels. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do 10 pixels because we are doing margin top 10. Okay. Uh, yo, what's up, Gifted Fingers? Welcome from Yemen. How are you? What are you using to code? I'm using Visual Studio Code. Unless if you're talking about the frameworks, I'm using Nest.js and React. Um, as I said yesterday, Redux is over-engineered. Uh, he uses Visual Studio Code. Uh, King Kingurius, welcome to the stream. How are you? How are you all doing today? Today's a Sunday. Unfortunately, it's a Sunday because that means tomorrow is going to be Monday. And who likes Mondays? I mean, I don't mind it, but I think I prefer Saturdays and Sundays because it's just the weekend and you don't have to worry about anything, which is great. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. So if I were to start typing. Wait. So now whenever I type, it'll just show up there. Perfect. Yeah, I think this is okay. Yeah, this is this is fine. You like Mondays? I hate Mondays. I mean, sometimes I like Mondays because they're a weekday and everyone's online. Everyone's busy though. I agree for weekends. You offended me. Mondays you can work for me. I freelance. So I don't really care what day it is. Yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, me personally, like, you know, if I was freelancing, if I was self-employed, I wouldn't really care what day it is because every day is a work day for me. And I'll take, you know, some days for myself. Um, but yeah, welcome, everyone. We got a lot of new people here chatting with us. A lot of new faces. I've never seen some of you before, but Morali, welcome to the stream. How are you? Prasun, welcome to the stream. I haven't seen you chatted here. Welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing? I'm going to be right back real quick. I'm going to use the bathroom, BRB.
Beer break. All right, I'm back. All right, I'm back. Oh, shit, my phone was playing. I don't know if you guys heard that. Because I have my stream open on my phone so I can, like, read the chat. YouTube is so smart. When it heard the bathroom word, it activated and No, I did that myself. Cobra theme. Let me see. All right, so we got the status working. I will modify this a little bit. I'm going to change maybe the color, still like a lighter color, and I'll maybe increase the font size to maybe 16. Maybe that will look a little bit better. Let's see. I don't really, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not really a fan of the italic style, if I'm being honest. It kind of looks janky. Hey, any plans? Uh, ideas for scaling the backend so you can handle more connections. I mean, we're not even at that point right now. But when we do get to that point, uh, we'll worry about that. I'm only just building this project for fun. So, it's working. Great, great, great. I think we should also end the typing event. Because, like, if I alt-tab, it doesn't go away. Like, if I alt-tab... I don't know why like the event just doesn't stop, which is really weird to me because it still treats it as if it's it, it's like if I if I type right now if I type again if I alt tab it sets is typing to true yeah it's really weird behavior I, I don't know it's it's really weird to me but anyways at least it works which is great um cool cool yeah like it's it's great honestly i like it a lot maybe i'll change the font size to 15 and i'll make this color a little bit lighter there we go and maybe we could bold it instead of italicizing it font style font weight bold now nah, bold kind of looks like crap not gonna lie yeah we'll just leave it alone yeah, that's fine. And I mean, we can add animations later. It's something in the world. But yesterday, what I did was I, in case you guys missed yesterday's stream, what I did was I implemented a context menu. So when I right click a message, I can delete it. And you can see that it removes it from my screen. And I can delete it from here. And over here, I can delete this. Right. And of course, if I right click a message that is not sent by me, it's just going to show an empty uh, context menu. But of course, we'll have to add other stuff later. Like maybe like, uh, yeah, we'll have to add other stuff later, but I think we're done with typing status. I think we're done with typing status. Uh, let me see if I can log into another incognito window. Let me log in as Ibrahim. Uh, how to make bots of YouTube live chat. Uh, a little bit more difficult. Oh crap, I'm in a different window. Damn, is there a way? Two windows. Damn, so we actually, let me see. Maybe show the online offline says I could I could I could I could I think you can use the YouTube yeah, yeah. please don't use it to make comment bots yeah true 
Yeah, I could like add maybe like the status over here. Yeah, I think that wouldn't be a bad idea because like, what I could do is I could add like a little icon over here that shows like green or 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 like gray, right? And I can also add like an indicator to see if they're in the room or not. Another thing that we could also do is add like a read receipt. Uh, that would actually be kind of complicated though, in my opinion. Would it be? Because you need to basically store the status of the message if it's been read or not. And how do you know if the user read the message, right? Uh, you need to see if they were in the room and if they saw the message. It's, it's a little bit complicated. But I like the way that it works right now. I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely happy with the way that it works. But it is a little bit weird at times, but it's okay. Uh, but you know, overall, like the entire thing works. Like if I send the message to Clement, wait. Oh crap. I need to actually reset the value of the input field whenever I switch. But if I send the message to Clement, it will show up at the top and it will appear over there and I can delete the message if I want to. All right. I think this is good enough. Let's go ahead and write a commit message. And like I said, if you guys want the code, the code is in the description. You can go ahead and fork it and clone it, start it, do whatever you want. If user in room last timestamp, message sent timestamp equals message read. All right, and let me just push all my changes real quick. So that way you all get the latest changes. The app is based on Query React. The only, the only other thing that I would like to do at this point is add group conversations but that means we have to refactor our database which is not the end of the world like it'll work fine because right now it only works for two people um and we already know how we can send um we already know how we can send the user typing status already so it'll work for every user connected room uh by the way just use sync changes on this code yeah i uh for some reason whenever i do that it just doesn't work it just buffers forever and it just doesn't want to do anything i think it's like it's it's something to do with my git it's something to do with my Git credentials, I think, and I have tried fixing it, but for some reason it just never wanted to work, so I just used the CLI tool, which is really annoying, to be honest with you, but don't worry, I know. I mean, yeah, you can see the branches set over here, so there shouldn't be a problem, right? You can see that branches are set here, but whenever I whenever I synchronize it, something it just doesn't want to work. So I've just been using Git push for a while now, which is a little bit annoying. I, I don't know what is going on with Git. Sometimes it's just really annoying. Yeah, so I think what you need to do is uh, basically what you'd have to do is on the back end, right? You have this uh you have this event. You have this uh you have this on conversation leave event. So what you can do is whenever the user leaves the conversation, you can you can update the database and you can say okay, this was the last time the user was in the conversation. Uh you can save that timestamp and then any messages that was sent uh yeah i don't know so if the user joins yeah i don't know it's really it's really strange i mean another thing you could do is you could add a field right you could add a field in the database you can say oh is the user in the conversation yeah a little bit complicated but uh you know overall i'm happy with the implementation that we have so i can't complain we've went a long way a long way
on a long way. Yes, but I'm talking about whether the user has scrolled to view all messages or not. So the times I'm going to help to prove that the user has seen the message or not. Yeah, we've came a long way with this project. All right, let's let me open up my Asana board real quick. Yeah, if the user was in the chat room, we can assume that the message was read. Uh, so, so how do you know if they're in the chat room? Well, you can tell just based on handling it with our gateway. So if you look over here, right, uh, what you can do is you can reference client.rooms and then you can go ahead and call dot has and pass in the conversation ID. And uh, I guess I think this is what you could do. Whenever you create a message or yeah, whenever you create a message, so whenever a message is being sent, you can check to see if both recipients are in the room. And if the recipient, if the recipient is in the room, then that means that they're, that means they read the message. If they're not, then that means they're offline or they haven't read the message yet. Uh, but you know, I'm not really too concerned about it because, you know, we'll figure it out eventually because we've like, you know, it was crazy because the other day I was like, you know, damn, it's going to be really hard figuring out this user typing thing. But the primary thing was the primary thing was getting the socket on the server with rooms to work. That was the reason why, like yesterday and the day before, I was trying to figure out why it was not handling the connection because I was emitting this connected event. It was being received on Postman, but React was not handling correctly. And my assumption is what happens is the front end does receive this connected event when we connect to the server, but React, the React component has not rendered yet. So it just cannot, it, it just cannot receive that event. So what I just decided to do was that whenever we connect to the cert, whenever the component renders, it will just emit the on conversation join, which I think this is a lot better because this means that you can actually, this actually makes a lot more sense because whenever we, uh, go out of whenever we go to different chat rooms, right? Whenever we go to different chat rooms, that is going to emit a conversation leave event and it'll join the next room, which I think this, that's a lot better in my opinion. I think that's a lot better. Cool, cool. Um, okay, let me open up this. So we already did this already. So let's move that here. Uh, we need to do this and we need to do this and we need to do this. Uh, let me also add some more stuff that you guys suggested. Uh, what else was there? Add a status. I, I don't really want to worry about animation right now. There was, there was a lot of good suggestions. We had add a send button for message. Um, what else? Let me add another section. My suggestion is the best suggestion to make bots. Do you have to pay for Asana? Uh, there's a free tier, but if you want to use the upgraded tier, you can. So we have edit medit message add profile pictures and we have send button okay edit message is going to be a little bit weird because i'm not really sure how it's going to mess up the i don't think i think it should be fine though but i just hope it doesn't mess up the component tree i don't know i'm just making assumptions but we'll only know until we try so let me go into figma real quick and here's what i'll do you know, I don't know why I'm using Asana when I can actually just do this. I could actually just go here and there's a section called projects, I think. Or I I, know, I remember there was something that you could do where you could like manage like the project somehow. I think this is what it was, add project. I think this might be what it was. I'm not really too sure though. I'll close this out. Have you tried using Airtable? Uh, actually, I use I use Airtable at work. Actually, but outside of work, no, I've not used Airtable on my own. Uh, 
All right, so let me add this frame over here, edit message. So this is what edit message should look like. Uh, so it's going to look really similar to Discord. Well, not Discord, but like basically what you want to do is you basically want to replace this text field with an input field that spans all the way here. And it will have the same border radius of 5. Uh, it'll look something like that, and then you'll have the current message over here. Like that, and then they'll be able to type all the way here, and then I think this should be a text area text area too. So I think it should auto resize, and then there should be like two little buttons over here, save or cancel. And so it's literally going to be similar to Discord. But I don't really like the size of this, so I'm going to fix it a little bit. So let me do that. Hello, literally search YouTube content and react, and you're the first one I'm watching right now. Nice, yeah. I, I hope you like that video. I actually had a lot. I actually had a lot of fun working on that video, actually, because that video was actually a lot of fun. That video was a lot of fun. So let me see. Yeah, let me make this a little bit bigger actually. And then yeah, we'll do this on the on, on the bottom. Let me move this up a little bit more. It's good video in detail. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so. Yo, what's up, Explosive? Are you new to the stream? Welcome to the stream. How are you? Uh, once we're done with this project, we will work on e-commerce, yes, but uh, I want to finish at least a lot of stuff first before we move on to e-commerce. But, but yeah, the, the next project will definitely be e-commerce, though. 100% will be e-commerce. Thanks. I watched your MC coding vid. They're great. Well, that's good. And I'm glad you like the videos. Makes me happy to hear. Uh, there we go. So that's what it could look like. And when they hit enter, it'll save. And then we'll have to make an API request. And then that's pretty much it. Listening to your streams while coding makes me feel like I have friends. LOL. Well, listen, like everyone is welcome here. You know, like when I'm streaming, you know, you're always welcome to chat. You're always welcome to talk and make suggestions, make comments. And yeah, like, you know, everyone, everyone here is chill. You know, there's no one here that's not chill. And I'm glad you feel that way. Will you filter the escape shift and tab button for typing status? Yes. 
what are you doing right now? Right now, I'm just uh, editing the wireframe. So I'm just make. I just want to like get a, like a wireframe working for the edit, the edit field. So okay, yeah. So I think what we'll do is when we right click and click on edit, we'll have to just basically replace this. So let me do this. Uh, let's go over to here. So when we click on edit, which is this part over here, so now we have to replace the message with the field. How do we do that? I guess we have to just go through the array and Yeah, that's a little bit hard actually. I mean, I think the easy I think an easier thing to do would be showing a modal, if I'm being honest with you. But I feel like that I, but I feel like that's too cheap. You know, I mean, it, like we could definitely use a modal to do it, but I feel like that would be too cheap. And I'd rather learn how to at least replace a component in the uh, in the array. I don't know how we would do that though, because what we would need to do is we would need to basically search the Redux. Uh, we would need to go into the Redux store and then modify the current message and replace it with the input, which doesn't really make any sense. So I'm trying to think. is edit message flag. Uh, yeah, so we're rendering the messages here, which means that that means uh, message container. Hmm. Well, I mean, message containers over here. We have format messages here. This is where it's transforming every single message into JSX or TSX. Um, inside each field. Well, not the field, inside the container, inside the content. So we'd have to basically replace the content with the field. So I would probably have to pass in a variable. Hmm. Yeah, I guess what I could do is I could set like a field here. Maybe something like const is editing. And then what happens is when we want to edit the message, we can set is editing to true. And then what we can do is for the content, we can compare because we already have the message, we already have the selected message stored in the uh, message menu context. So we can just compare the message ID to, yeah, yeah I think we could just do that. Yeah, that works. So, yeah, I think that could work. Uh, so how would I want to do that? So. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll probably, I don't want to pass, I don't want to prop drill too much. So I think what I'll do is I'll just pass and set as editing as a prop. Like that. And then over here, we'll do this. And what I'll do is here. And so when this is set to true, what we'll do is this. 
So everywhere we see message item content, we'll have to do this. Is editing, is editing. So if they're editing, we'll show an input field. If not, we'll do this. So if I go here, okay. And so now you can see that it replaces it with the input field, but of course we need to make sure that if it is editing and uh, the, so we need to get the selected message as well as the current message. So message ID equals 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 selected message ID like that. So if I do this, there we go. But now if I right click it though, yeah, that's not good. So I think we might need another, I think we might need another uh, variable for our context, which is, because right now, everywhere that I right click, it's gonna go ahead and set that because we're updating the context every single time we right click, which is not good. Well, I mean this, so we'll have to actually do this. Uh, let's see, message equals equals no. <sighs> when did you used to wake up? I mean, I usually wake up around like 2 or 3 a.m. Let me also do set edit message. Oh, yo, what's up, A's? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll get the sets edit message. So when I right click, so let's do this const edit message. So what I'll do is this. I'll go ahead and pass an edit message like that. We will call set as editing to true. And uh, What I'll do is this will set edit message to the message. Right over here like that. Why are you building this chat app? Uh, I mean, cause I want to. Let me see. So edit message. So this will set the edit message. Okay. So now what happens if I, if I refresh, if I right click, if I click edit, if I right click any other context, it doesn't work until I do edit, then it'll replace it over there, which is good. Not even just bored, I just want to learn. Good morning. Yo, what's up, Augie? How are you? Welcome to stream. Bad driver, welcome to stream. How are you? How, how many of you guys are new? You know, I'm, I'm interested to know how many of you guys are new here. I can tell who's new and who's not, but I know the people who are reoccurring. So I know you guys don't worry. But I can definitely tell that some of you guys are new, and, and I, and I want to welcome all, you, all of you guys because you all are new. But yeah, you can see now that whenever, whichever one I click, it will just be like that, which is great. Am I new? Nah. You're not new, Shiny. I mean, I've seen you here before. I know that one. Yeah, I mean, I just want to learn. Like, I just want to learn. Like, I, I, I like learning new things. So, you know, it's always important to challenge yourself. Because the thing is, like, you know, the truth is that, you know, five, ten years from now, all the stuff that you learn now is probably going to be obsolete. You know, like, and if you want to stay relevant in the market, you got to learn new things all the time. Unless if you're retired by that time, which then you're going to be okay. Uh, Arjun, welcome to the stream. 
And yeah, welcome to the stream. I don't know how to say it. False. False. Modern HD. Of course I know you. I recognize your name. I just found your channel three days ago. Is it new? Well, first of all, welcome to the stream. But this is the first time I've seen you here chatting with us. So I want to welcome you here. And uh, yeah, you know, like everyone here is welcome. Uh, if you want to join the Discord server, we do have a Discord server. And if you want to know the theme, that's the theme right there. But yeah, you know, welcome, welcome, everyone. Everyone is welcome. But yeah, we're just building a chat for fun, you know. Try to place the input where the message and value to the existing message content. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is when we render the input, we're going to pass in the message's value. So all I got to do is just do value equals selected edit message dot content like that. And then now you're going to see that if I click edit, it's going to show that right over there. And of course, obviously, we need to fix this up and style it a little bit better. We need to shift this to over here. We need to we need to give it some same padding because right now the padding is crap. Um, yeah, so I think honestly what we could do instead is I could probably just take this, put this over here, and just replace this over here like that. There we go. So I can do that. And all I got to do is just style up the input a little bit, and then we're good to go. Uh, why use context API with Redux? That's a good question. Uh, right now, our code is actually really messy. So we're, we're going to have to actually refactor everything to m use Redux. But it's, you know, I don't really have a good answer for you, to be honest with you. I've been but I've been following since your first Discord tutorial. I have around 2021. I'm glad I did because I haven't stopped coding in Node React. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you did. I didn't know you made the new Discord. I was like coding to the day. Yeah, make sure you all join the new Discord, man. The new Discord is brand new. It's active. We have awesome moderators. Shout out to all of my moderators. They really do a good job uh, helping out with the community. And they're very helpful. Like, shout out to KB Talking. I don't know if he watches my stream, but it's fine. But, you know, he helps out a lot with the server. And has been helping out for, like, over the years. So shout out to him. And and Hype as well. Hype also helps out a lot too. Uh, yeah, we just got great moderators. Especially that guy, Jamal. He helped set up, he, he helped set up, the, he helped set up the entire Discord server. He helped set up the welcome channel. Uh, Jamal helped set up the YouTube notifications. He helped set up all of the permissions, everything. So, shout, so big shout out to him for setting up the entire server. The server wouldn't be organized if it weren't for him. So, so big shout out to him. I use React for my friend and framework, and I actually like React the most. And I'm only saying that right now because I've been using React for the past year and a half, I'd say, for building projects. But honestly, I've always been an Angular guy, and I like Angular. But I haven't used Angular for so long, so I'm going to have to say React currently. But if I were to go back to Angular, though, I would definitely I would definitely say Angular. You're using plain CSS or framework? I'm just using plain CSS along with styled components. What Nest.js do in this project? Uh, Nest.js is basically the backend server-sided framework that is powering all of the... Uh, the, the entire API for our web app. So basically, the Nest.js framework is going to take care of saving messages to the database, saving conversations to the database. It's going to be responsible for handling the real-time uh, aspect with using WebSockets. Um, so that's what Nest.js does. But uh, yeah... But yeah, in terms of like, you know, this code, I, I will be honest with you, this the, the, the code base for this right now is kind of shit because we've just kind of like been doing things brute force way. So we have to do a, a lot of refactoring later because, you know, we are using context with Redux, which really, you know, doesn't really make any sense, right? Um, so we'll have to obviously migrate that to Redux later on. But for now, yeah, I mean, everything works great. I kind of just use Redux because I just want like a quick proof of concept to make sure that it works because I'm really comfortable with uh, context than Redux. So if I, so my, my point is like, if it works with context, then in theory, it should work with Redux, you know? And I think that can be a fair assumption to make, but uh, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and build out this UI right over here. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll just move on forward to the next stuff that we'll implement. Uh, 
Uh, yo, what's up, Yadon? Long time no see, man. How are you, my friend? How are you doing? Yeah, sorry, I was just sending a text. Is the project on Git? Yes, the project is on GitHub. You can go ahead and check it out. The link is in the description. Uh, let me actually set up some commands. You know, I have... Uh, let me just set up some commands real quick on Nightbot. Uh, let me do this real quick. Uh, let's see. Big shout out to Maya. Top chatter. Maya is a top chatter. Wow. He, Maya, they were actually the person that recommended to set up Nightbot. But let me just set up some commands real quick. Uh, let me do this. Because a lot of people... I'm going to set up some quick commands so that people can just use them. Uh, so that way... Um, you know, the most basic things people can just get answers to without me having to constantly repeat myself. So, GitHub. There you go. There's a lot of stuff that we got to do. Um, let me just set that up real quick. What else should I add? Is there anything else that I'm missing? I know I had like a few other suggestions, but I wanted to add my Discord, my GitHub, my theme. I added my theme already. As well as the Discord link. So anyone who wants to know what the theme is, you can just uh, use the theme command, and that'll, you'll get access to that. Can you show me what you've done so far? Sure, I can. So we've done a lot. So basically, the biggest thing that we did was getting. I mean, I'm not sure where you left off with. So so why don't you tell me, the last time that you were here, what you last saw, and I'll and I'll start from there. And of course my browser froze again. Okay, now it's fine now. Yeah, I like Nightbot a lot. It has great features. Like it tells you who the top chatter is. I think it's great. Uh, yeah, so basically, you know, we made it so that... Yeah, sure. All right, so basically right now I'm logged in as two users, okay? So what we can do is I can create a conversation with a user. So what I'll do is let me go into Postman. And uh, what I'll do is I will create a new user right now using the API. So let's just do Edon. Edon the developer. Okay, so we just create a new account. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and log in. Okay. Let me log in. Hold on. Yes, give me a second. I kind of hate Postman sometimes. Let me change the text. So obviously you would log in on the user interface the same way that you're doing it on Postman. So you can see that we're logged in. So let's go ahead and do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a conversation uh, and I'm going to create it with Anson. Okay, so pretend like, you know what, let me do this. Let me close this window. And let me just log into a new incognito window real quick. So that way you can actually see it working from this perspective. So let's log into your account. All right, so let's click log in. And what we can do is we can create a conversation with myself. So I'll go ahead and create a conversation with the user logged in on the left. So the user that's logged in is Anson. So you have to pass in their email. Later on, what we'll do is we'll add like a drop down. So that whenever you type, it'll just show like it will we'll create a custom select menu. I've actually done that before because I've implemented something like this before. But anyways, so I type, hey, when I click create conversation, it's going to create a conversation. And you can see that it appears over here. Although the only thing that we have to do is we have to actually send the message into the channel. We have to implement that later. But you can see that the conversation is created. But what's most important is if I send the message, I don't know what's going on, but like whenever I re whenever I log in i have to refresh in order for it to receive events i think it has something to do with the incognito window i'm not too i'm not really too sure though because in theory it should receive events but i don't know why it doesn't but now i can type and you can see that whenever i type it'll show the typing status on the bottom and if i hit enter i can receive the message and all of this is happening through websockets right that's all happening underneath the hood and we we implemented these the typing status today 
Um, and yeah, that's just pretty much it. And right now what we're doing is we're working on, well, yesterday, what I did yesterday was I implemented deleting the messages so I can delete messages. I cannot delete the other person's messages. And right now what we're doing is we're implementing edit message, right? And of course, I don't know why this is not working. The app is really buggy for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. Like if I delete the message. Uh, huh, that's interesting. Oh, you know what it is? If I right click this message, if I delete, and if I right click this, I do edit. But that doesn't make any sense. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, I, I I know what exactly what the problem is. Whenever we, okay, I think I know what I need to do. Um, I'm gonna do the set edit. Set select the message. I think that should fix it. No, that's no, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah, I don't know why. It's a little bit buggy right now. Uh, yeah, that's something that I got to fix later because what, what, what needs to happen is that when they hit enter, because we literally just implemented this. So what I need to do later is I need to make it so that when we submit the message, it stops the, it stops the, uh, it stops the event. Huh, it was just working a second ago. See, right now it's working for here, but for some reason when I go here... Okay, so it works for all of these except for. So it doesn't work for. Okay, so 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 for here it should work for this. Wait. Okay, so this message should not work, but this message will work. Okay, I think I know what the problem is. I think it's because this message itself is different. So yeah, I think uh, yeah, this is this is a really easy fix. Uh, let's go over here. Let's see. Yep, really easy fix. So we just have to do this. And I'll also pass in the other props too. So let me do that. So let's do. Yeah, our code is like we need we need we 100% need to refactor our code soon cuz it's really freaking messy right now. Message type. No, no. And we'll do the same thing for here. You should start a keyboard ASMR, you think so? Okay, now it's a little bit weird. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me fix this real quick. Okay, and then we'll also change the padding here. You're making breakfast while watching. Nice. All right, there we go. So it works. Perfect. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, great. All right, cool. So now we fixed that issue. Uh, we can move on. 
Uh, let me also do one more thing. I will fix this later. Don't worry about it right now. Because it is really it is a really large file, but I'll fix that in a little bit. Uh, yo, what's up, Arjun? Good morning. Breakfast. Wait, what time is it for you right now, this plant? Are you in the are you in America? Cause I know like the like even in West most of the Europe continent would be Ireland, UK. And the time over there I think is like plus seven or eight hours, I think, which is like two PM. So yeah, I guess I guess you would be in America, yeah. Yeah, because I'm in i I'm in the West Coast and it's six AM here. I'm about to eat dinner here. Six PM. 6 p.m. So plus nine. Arjun, wh where are you from, Arjun? If you don't mind me asking. India. Okay. Nice. Can you explain the WS part? Uh, what exactly do you would you like me to explain? Like, is there anything specific that you would like me to provide more details on? Or in Poland, it's 3:18. It's about a one hour difference from the UK. Oh, really? Wow. Using Redis? No, we're just using uh, we're just using a, a regular socket I/O server for the WebSocket. Are you self-taught programmer or you learn from school? I went to university and I, t I I did a I did a computer science degree. I learned I had to learn programming obviously because it was a computer science degree. And I learned Java my first semester. Uh, in the before that, when I was like a lot younger, I actually what I would do is I would download like these uh, templates from this website. And what I would do is I would just edit the CSS, edit the HTML, play around with it. I wasn't really good at it, but I was just like playing around with it, edit text, you know, just playing playing around with it and whatnot. And I kind of sparked some interest in learning how to code. And then I went to college, and then uh, I did a Java course introductory course and it was an intro to comp sci and then i decided i was like you know if i could if i could actually learn you know programming in college because what i was really doing was i was really just reading the textbook and teaching myself because the professor was really just more of a lecturer so i knew that i had to really rely on myself and not the professor to teach myself everything and i told myself if i could just read the textbook and learn how to code I could very easily go on Code Academy and learn JavaScript and learn HTML and learn CSS. And that's actually what I did. And I started building like a really simple website with basic knowledge. And I took a little bit, bit of a break because I was focused on school. And then 2017, when I was in, when I had finished my first my first year, uh, what I had done was I uh, looked into uh, Discord bots and I watched a tutorial the tutorial that I watched was actually made by a guy named Adam Gaskins and he doesn't really make videos anymore but I remember he made C sharp videos on Discord bots he made the JavaScript Discord bot that was actually the most popular video at that time like that video had like a I think like a million views and I learned how to do it from his video and I was like you know this is actually really cool like uh, I actually learned a couple things and so I was like, you know what, why don't I try reiterating what I learned? And I made a video on how to make a Discord bot. And that's what happened. And before that, I would, I was actually always interested into teaching because I was always interested in Khan Academy. If you guys know what Khan Academy is, it's a really popular platform. And they have like so many videos where they teach you how to do literally anything. Like they teach you, they started off mostly with calculus, like algebra, math. And then they've dived deep into other topics like history, uh, chemistry, biology, all that kind of stuff. And I've always been inspired by Khan Academy to uh, make educational content. And so that's kind of how it all started out uh, when I made my first Discord bot video in 2017. It was basically just me learning something and reiterating it to another audience and seeing uh, how they will perceive it. And it got a lot of good, got a lot of good feedback, so I was pretty happy. Are you from Yukon? I am not from Yukon. Yukon's pretty far up there, but I am from the West Coast. So I, I'm in America though. Unless, yeah, I'm I'm in America right now. Uh, yo, X XWL. I don't know how to pronounce your full name, but XWLA. 
Uh, welcome to the stream. How are you? I'm learning Java in this semester. Any tips? My tip is the same thing that I just told you right now is read through the documentation. And I don't know if you have a textbook, but if you don't have a textbook, in my opinion, I think the best way to learn and this is, and I'm going to be biased because this is how I learned it. I think the best way is to read a textbook because with a textbook, you actually have structure, right? And if you find a good textbook, the, the textbook that I use was, uh, written by, I think Tony Gaddis, Tony Gaddis. And it was such an amazing textbook. Like I absolutely loved the textbook so much. Like so much that I literally like just fell in love with it and I recommend it to everyone that I that asked me about the resource. And my recommendation would be whatever book you read, whatever resource you use, read through it. Understand the reason why I say textbook is usually if the textbook is well written, they'll include all the details and they'll answer any questions that you have. Because when you it's, it's like it's one thing when you're learning something right you're gonna have questions and the the problem that people face is that if they have a question that is left unanswered it, it makes them wonder like why is it the way that it is and that can sometimes be a little bit like of a roadblock to your learning because you're trying to understand why is it this way and you just get you just get fixated on trying to figure out why it's that way sometimes online documentation they'll leave out a lot of details and that's why i say textbooks do a good job because they'll cover those details uh so i'll just say read through the textbook practice the exercises if you are using a textbook or just go online uh look up resources on how to learn java and usually those resources like code academy will have simple exercises for you to do some people just give advice where they say you should go on lead code or hacker rank and practice i don't think that's a good idea because those questions are really more geared towards testing your critical thinking skills not really your programming skills i mean it's also testing your programming skills at the same time but more so for your critical thinking skills uh to be honest interesting experience i meant what anson said for me barely 18 i learned html and now piercing through css like w3 schools a lot tutorials a lot i want to go front and so nice to hear your story yeah i mean you know like uh, everyone's story is different you know, like I'm not saying that the way that I learned it has to be the way that everyone else has to learn it. But that's just the way that I would recommend it if anyone asked me. Because that's what worked really well for me. You know, and it might not work well for you. And it's okay because it's all about a trial and error process. If textbooks don't work for you, maybe videos might work better for you. You never know. Let me see. But uh, yeah, hopefully that gives you guys some insight of my background and where I came from and how I came about to be with, you know, all this stuff with programming. Let me see. So I'm going to go ahead and create another. I think what I'll do is I'll create another component. So yeah, this right over here. I'll create another input field actually. So let me do this. Just all components. Export const. Uh, for the typing thing, is the server sending the WebSocket back to everyone but the user that was typing? Yes, yes. Well, okay, so uh, what I found out was that because we're using rooms with Socket.io, and when you when you do client.2, and then the name of the room, and then when you call dot .emit, uh, so what happens is it actually emits the event to everyone except for the client itself. So if you look at the code over here, and it's open source too, by the way, like I pushed the latest changes. If you look over here, what happens is we call client dot two the room, the name of the room, which is the conversation ID, dot .emit, and then it'll emit the event to own, to everyone except for the client itself. Uh, Alejandro, welcome back to the stream. How are you doing today? Message typing status. So let's do edit message input. Discord connect and VS Code. Wow. Yeah, there's a plugin for that. It's called it's called Discord RPC.
Let me see. All right, so uh, let's go over to our wireframe. Let's change the text color to white. Uh, we'll add some padding. Let me change the font size to maybe like a little smaller font size. Well, actually, let me see message item content. I guess I didn't have a font size set. That's fine. We'll do 15. We'll add some padding. So let's do 10 pixels. What's the program you're styling in? Uh, it's called Figma. Figma. And welcome to the stream, Ice Stunks. How are you? Let's add a border radius of five pixels. Uh, maybe I might add more padding. 18 pixels. I think I'll do 1822. And then font, font I want to do a little smaller font maybe. Actually, I'll do 15, but I, I, I want it to be a different color. Yo, welcome back to the stream, Jimmy. How are you? And what's up, James David? How are you? Seeing a lot of new faces here. Welcome everyone to the stream. We're just working on our chat application. This is day number seven, but if you want to go ahead and watch the previous live streams, you're more than welcome to. They're all available right now. Uh, and they will always be there. So you can see us building everything from start to finish. There are only a few things that I did offline, but it's not that big of a deal though. And all the code is open source, so you can see it all in the GitHub repository. The links are in the description. Okay, so I think that is fine. Uh, and then we'll do this escape to cancel and to receive. Hey, can you help me with a Redux task? Uh, I can't really help you right now, but if you join my Discord server and if you post your question there, someone will definitely be able to help you out. Would you ever create a Discord bot for YouTube? Uh, I probably wouldn't, but only the reason why I only say that is because like there's no official like like there's a YouTube. Uh, live stream API, but it's not really that good. It's only for, it's it's not really that great. Like it's not like, like it's not it's only like HTTP API. Like you can only fetch, you can only like like make like a post request, get request, delete all that kind of stuff. But you can't really like receive events, like kind of like how you would with a Discord bot. So you can't really build it in real time. Only thing you could do is like do like a like a like an interval query. Which is, you know, it's kind of annoying, but it's fine. But though I wonder how Nightbot builds their YouTube bot, to be honest. They probably have some magic going on behind the scenes. Who knows? I wish YouTube has WebSockets, but yeah, I wish they had too. But uh, yeah, so like the, right now, this thing looks nice. Um, so now let's just go ahead and... Do this so we will need to obviously add an on change as well and i guess what we'll do is damn our code is really really messy i'm late i'm inspired for your experience in any codings i wish all that and i'll also dreams too like you speaking uh how is that do you pronounce it oh, i don't know how to pronounce that I know it's I know it's a Filipino language, yeah. But nice. Listen, like I'm sure you'll be able to reach your dreams, man. As long as you just put the time and effort into it, you can achieve anything. Like that's just that's just how it is. Like in life, if you just work as hard as you need to, you'll achieve anything you want. What formatter are you using? I'm using Prettier. Do you have your own Discord bot in your server? I do not, but I am I'm actually gonna make one soon because I'm uh, what I'm doing is I'm releasing a new feature for, or I'm releasing a new perk for YouTube members. So basically, if you are a member 
uh, if you join the if you join the developer intern member, you basically will get access to my private channels, and then you'll be able to re you'll be able to receive direct coding help with anything that you want, and you can you can reach out to me, you can ping me, all that kind of stuff. I get lots of DMs all the time, so it's hard for me to check the server all the time. So I figured I'll make something like that to you know make it easier for people to if they and that's only if you want like if you want direct access if you want direct contact with me you'll get direct you'll get put into a private channel with me and then you can create a thread you can ping me but i actually was working on the discord bot for that to set it up so basically all you have to do is just do a slash command it'll create a new thread and it'll automatically ping me and then it'll show the question and the description of your question and i'll respond to it in a timely manner don't forget to add the escape yeah don't worry about that uh, yo what's up codex how are you welcome back to the stream man uh jimmy uh do you know Quasar? uh no what is that do you using discord models no i actually have the discord bot but i haven't like really deployed it yet but i'm working on that right now you know if you actually polish this application and try to make a course out of it you'll make some quick cash i mean the thing is is like you know it will take forever like to build like an entire chat from scratch like to cover all the i don't know like how would i simplify this because like if you think about it like it took us like seven days and like like over like 30 hours of like you know i don't know that would take so long I'm good. Back to some coding. If you want any help with the bot, because I'm bored and looking for something to do. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to continue working the bot. And basically, the way that it works is... Uh, actually, let me see if I can... Let me open up my Discord real quick. I think I have, like, a test. I think I, like, tested it out a couple times. Let me see. Do I have a channel? Yeah, so basically, the way that it works is... Uh, Basically, the way it works is that you have a slash command, and when you use the slash command, uh, slash help, description, question, and then what happens is it'll create the thread, and then it'll ping me, and I actually want to make it so that it'll create a private thread so no one else can see it, only myself, so that way it's more private between me and the person that is, you know, paying for the service, and yeah, like, you know, you can use this to get direct help whenever you want, 24-7, not 24-7, whenever I'm online. But uh, yeah, like the thing is like, you know, on my server, I get lots of questions all the time. I get lots of people who DM me and it's just really hard to keep up with all that kind of stuff. So that's why I'm creating like this feature so that, you know, if you really want to get direct assistance from me, if you have any questions and if you also want to support me, you can also you can you can join that. But if you don't want to, that's also fine, too. Uh, I, I usually check the discord every single day. And if there's questions that I see that I have time to answer, I'll always like answer it. Why don't you create a tutorial for Telegram bot? I've never worked with Telegram before. All right, see you later, Arjun. Take it easy. What is Anton's Discord name? Uh, this, there's a command. Just use the slash theme command, and you'll get the you'll get the Discord you'll get the Discord uh, name. I mean the the, the Discord theme. Or what am I talking about? VS Code theme. S slash not slash exclamation mark theme. Exclamation mark theme. Is it okay to focus on learning front end development only? Yes. We have something similar on our server, but we made it as embed and a button. When they click the button, they get a modal, which is like a form inside of Discord. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm you know I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. Whatever make whatever gives it a better experience for other for for the customers, that's all that matters to me. If it gives the customers a good experience, that's all that matters. But I haven't really made like a formal announcement about it yet, so I've just kind of been keeping it to myself. Um, bro, I love this theme. It's sick. You like it? That's good. Yeah, I'm actually glad that I implemented Nightbot. It was a good idea from Maya to implement Nightbot because, you know, now that I could just set up commands, I don't know why I didn't think about it sooner, but I'm glad that they brought it to my attention because now I can just set up commands and people can just get all the help with those commands and it's just a lot easier. And I don't have to repeat myself like 500 times every single time, which is all as well. Can night block night bot block the spammer? I think they can. We we'll have to try. I mean, so far we haven't seen any spammers, which is good. Is there a help command with night bot? I'm not sure. Oh, there we go.
Okay, so this is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, whenever we, we need to actually update the state of this component. But it's a little bit hard because, uh, because here's the thing, right? Like if they cancel, we want to restore the original message. I think what I'll do is this. Hey Anton, I love your bot servers. You do a great job explaining all that. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm glad to hear. Yeah, so I think what I'll do is this. I'll go ahead and create a copy of it. So if the user escapes or they cancel, we'll restore the message. And then we'll update this message the entire time. I think that will work. Hopefully it does. Yeah, I think it should work. So let's do set select. Edit message. Is I do this or oh wait? Let me do it. Wait, let me do this. If there's no selected edit message return. Okay, and this is. Okay, so let's see if this works. I don't know if this is a little bit wonky, but yeah, it's not gonna work. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Select the edit message dot contents. Yeah, I think what Nightbot does is I think it periodically fetches the chat. Yeah, it's not based on. I think they periodically fetch the chat. I think probably like every like five seconds. Like, how long did it take? Like five seconds, right? Let me see. Discord. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So about like ten seconds. So it takes about like ten to like ten to eleven seconds. So I guess it periodically fetches messages and then it'll check to see. And I guess it will search for commands, and it will basically I guess match. And whatever commands are being sent, it will just basically uh, send whatever value of that command is supposed to send. I think that's how they do it. That's my guess. Which is also not bad because then they could also rate limit it too. Because if there's duplicate, if there's duplicate users using the same command, then that's good too. Which is good. Yeah, my guess is they periodically fetch messages every ten seconds. Yeah, makes perfect sense.
I recently started web dev, so what I did wrong is I completed old JS and switched to React without any project on flow of a current JS. Now it's switched to missing JS. Well, it's fine. I mean, you sh you could you could easily pick up React just fine, as long as you just have like the basics of JavaScript, you'll be fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so maybe this might work now. No. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, I just I just refresh yuck. There we go. Now, yeah, that should be fine. And of course, we need to make it so that when they cancel, it'll restore the original message. Because this will update the message itself, and we don't want that. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll make it so that when they save... Yeah, we'll fix that. Uh, Ahmad, welcome to the stream. How are you? Nice to see you here. Okay, and then let's do this. Code with Jab, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. What about you? And what time is it right now? It is currently 6.45 a.m., almost 7 over here. Uh, Johns, welcome to the stream. Johns, how are you? How are you doing today? Yeah, our code is so messy. We'll have to find a way to fix this because right now this is just so messy right now. But as long as it works, we'll reformat it, but don't worry. Okay, so we're doing on change. If array that length is equal to next index. Uh, if it's currently good ID. I'm trying to think, maybe I could probably like remove this return at the bottom. Uh, maybe what if I did this, if, if current message author ID equals next message author ID. If array.length is equal to the next index. So that means if the length of the array is like two and the next index is two. I'm trying to remember what this case was for. I'm a young developer, nice. If array that length, if it's 10, and it's the next index, that means we're at the end. I guess that's where, I mean, I, guess, I think that means that we're at the last element, which means that we should just render formatted message. Yeah, and that's at the top, so it'll just render the user's name and everything. Uh, okay. So I, give, I think maybe we could do this if array.length is equal to next index or this is not true. We can render that. That way we can just get rid of this return. And then else. I wonder if this breaks anything. OK, 
That's good. Yeah. It's good to know that that does not break anything. For now, I'll leave it alone for now. Okay. So what we want to do is... I also don't know why, but like, if you see over here... If I, if I edit this and if I leave and I go back, it stays the same. Is there a way that we can restore everything? Because I don't like that. Because I feel like the state should reset. Is there a way that we can reset the state when the component unmounts? I mean, I think, I, I think maybe what I could do is like inside the use effect. Let me try this. Let me create another use effect hook. I think maybe what I could do is when the component unmounts, we could probably set both of these to null. Okay, and then set select the message. I think maybe that might fix it. No, that does not fix it. Okay, interesting. Uh, so it seems like it's editing. Oh wait, you know what? It, you know what it is. Let me do this. When the component unmounts, will set is editing to false. But that's weird though because like the message. Okay, let's see. Let's try this. All right, let's do this. Edit. Seems like that doesn't want to work. That's weird because the component is clearly supposed to unmount. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's because... Yeah, it's not unmounting. I think we need to do it by ID. When the ID changes, we need to unmount. There we go, that works. So when I do this, I go here. And that should not do anything. Okay, that should restore the original message, perfect. Okay, good. All right, uh, cool. Okay, so if the user is typing, Do this. Uh. On edit message change. There we go. Uh, okay, so on it was change. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing over here too. Cool, so let's just pass as a prop now. And I won't need to pass this in. Yeah, I don't think I'll need to pass this in. Okay, so this should be fine. So let's edit this, changes, edit this, changes. 
if I go to a different one. So it doesn't so it seems like it doesn't actually change it, which is good. Because that's how it should work. But I also am trying to understand why it doesn't actually update the value. I think it's because we're updating a copy of the value and not the actual value itself. Um, which is good. Because over here we're just updating. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're setting, yeah, yeah, that makes sense because we're not actually updating the state. We're only updating the input fields uh, binded value and we're binding it to select edit message content. And then over here, we're updating select edit message, which is good. And then what happens is this, when we submit the edit, when we click on save, we'll have to just basically get the updated value, which we can very easily grab that. Um, from select edit message. So this is how we're going to have to do this. Let's go over here and I'm going to modify the input field a little bit. I want to wrap, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to need to create this. I'm going to create a file called edit message container, export const edit message container. What keyboard do I use? Oh yeah, I gotta add the I gotta add that as a command too. Let me do that real quick. Keyboard. I use the Discord keyboard. This one over here. I don't think you can, can you still buy it? I wonder if you can still buy the keyboard. I don't know if you can still buy it, but this is the one that I have. I use uh, the dark one, Gat Reds, this one. Which mic? I use a uh, Blue Yeti. Hey, I'm new here, currently working in the finance field, but wanted to learn coding. Which language should I start from and how many months will it take for me to get a decent job from India? Um, I would honestly suggest you start with uh, either, you could do, I would recommend Java because Java is actually really popular in India actually. But uh, Node.js is also very popular too, JavaScript. It just depends on what kind of, what, what, what field you want to get into. Like, do you want to do web dev? Do you want to do systems programming? Uh, you know, you got to also look up on the market. What is like, what are they currently hiring? You know, I'd recommend Java would be a good language to start. Python is also very easy. JavaScript is also very easy. It can't go wrong with that.
Yo, uh, Shrip, Shrip Pasana. How are you? Welcome to the stream, man. How's it going? Okay, thanks. I'm actually interested in data analysis more over like financial analysis. Okay. Yeah, that works too. I mean, there's many different fields in programming. If you're interested in data analysis, I think Python, MATLAB would be good languages. Uh, yeah, it's HTML. What's wrong with it? Can I see you test that? I want to see how far you've gone. Sure, give me one second. When are you going to upload part four of JDA? Uh, probably this week. I think tomorrow is, I think I have it scheduled for tomorrow. I think I'm not sure. Okay, uh, let me change the font size a little bit. Uh, I think I'll do 12 pixels actually. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so now we just need to make it so that when we hit escape, it will go ahead and... Uh, I guess what it should do... Wait, what's going on over here? Wait, when did this problem happen? What, what the hell is this? Okay, that was really weird. Uh, what day is this? This is number seven. Looks really good. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, like basically we'll make this clickable in a second. But uh, what happens is when they uh, hit save or when they hit enter, it should basically just save it. So uh, we'll basically need to add, uh, I guess we need to also make it so that we, I think we'll need to add like this inside of form. So when we hit enter, it will submit it to the server. And then we'll also need to add a, an event listener too. So the way that it works is when, yeah, yeah it's actually the event listener should be fine. So watch this. I'll add another event listener inside a use effect. So it's a use effect. Or should I do it inside the same one? I guess I'll do it inside the same one. So we'll do a handle key down const handle key down equals and then what we want to do is we want to get the keyboard event and the keyboard event is e dot keyboard event like that and so what we want to do is if e dot key equals I think it's escape I think it's better if each event listener has only so you think so. I was thinking the same too. I wasn't sure if we should add it or the same, but I, I'll do I'll do it in its own then. 
Because usually, like, in practice, usually people actually put these inside custom hooks. So it, so they'll actually be in its own use effect, if you think about it. But, yeah, I think we should do that. Let's do that. I need the same dependency array. Okay, good. All right, so let's hit the escape key. Let's refresh. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the... So I'm hitting escape, so it's working right now. So I do edit. If I hit escape, okay. So if I hit escape, all I got to do is just do set. Why did I just turn my... Turn the wrong keyboard. Set is editing to false. There we go. I'm hitting escape right now. My mouse is over here. I'm hitting escape. You can probably hear the keyboard click too. Done. Done. Perfect. And if we wanted to submit, uh, let me also do this. Let me also refresh, make sure we have clean state. Perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect. So that works, all right, cool. Um, now we need to just make sure that we wrap our edit message container. So let me go here. It's actually a good thing that we wrap this inside its container. So what I'll do is this. I'll actually make it so that I'll wrap this inside a form. So that way when I hit enter. Hopefully I got the submit event correct. What is this type? Okay, perfect, same thing. So let's just pass this in on submit. We might, we're gonna add some validation, don't worry. But let's just try this out. So let's do edit. If I enter, it's submitting the form, perfect. Perfect, and let's also make it so that we can console log selected edit message. Let's just make sure we are, let's just make sure it's the correct message. So let's edit this. So that's ID number 422. Okay, and you can see that the, the message is also edited, which is good. Now, if I cancel this and if I edit it again, it will restore the... Okay, that's good. Because, again, we're never actually updating the state. Okay, we're only uh, just... We're binding the, the input field to the value of the message, but we're not actually updating the state, which is why it will restore to the old value. So now if I hit enter, what should happen is we should submit this data to the API. Of course, if it's empty, we should just ask the user if they want to delete it, but we won't worry about that for now. Uh, what we'll do is this. We'll just do this. When I hit enter, it should save it, send it to the data, to send it to the server. And then what should happen is we should uh, dispatch action. We're going to use Redux to edit everything, so don't worry. Um, let me see. It should be fine. Yeah, so basically I'll hit enter. We're going to set as editing to false. Uh, dispatch a couple actions with Redux and then the message should be updated. But then we'll have to obviously update the state, which shouldn't be hard because, you know, uh, we already know what the conversation is. All we have to do is just find out the old mess. We just need to find the message ID and just replace the entire message with the message that we just edited. So, yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. Okay, perfect. So we got we got the logic working great, so that's good. Escape and saving are working. Perfect. So only thing that we have to do now is actually set up the API, and then we'll have to actually call the API to edit the message. So what I'll do is this. When I submit the form, we want to... Well, first, let's create a thunk for our for Redux. Let's go over to 
let's go over to where is our store there we go so adding a message so let's go into the message slice and we're going to create a thunk call it edit message thunk create async thunk Okay, and then this is going to call our API. So we'll probably just do something like return edit message API, which we'll have to import up top, pass in params. Uh, the parameters, uh, we'll just probably pass in the message type because that's really all we're doing. Is because we're editing the message type. We're editing message type content locally, and we're going to send that as a request body. But ideally, though, we, don't, we actually don't even need to send the whole entire thing. The only thing that we really need is the ID. The, yeah, we, I think we only really need the ID. But we also actually know, I think we should also need the conversation ID as well, because we also need to protect the message from being edited by people who are not authorized. So if you're not part of the conversation, you should not be able to edit the message. If you're not the author of the message, you should not be able to edit it. So I think actually... Honestly, I think the only thing that we really need to care about is the message because all we need to do is we just need to get the message from the database, uh, check who the author is, and then we'll be fine. I have a good knowledge in React. What are the things I need to learn next to land a full, to land a good job as a front end dev or a full stack dev? Uh, okay, so I would say that uh, do you have a portfolio? Do you have a couple projects that are your best projects displayed on your GitHub as well as your resume? If you do, then that's great. Then the next thing that you got to do is start applying for jobs. And you know, if you want to increase your chances even more, you could then also learn full stack, right? Because now that you know front end, learning back end is would be the next step. But at the same time, you should also apply for jobs too. What I would say is that it's not really that difficult to learn front end and back end at the same time, because they actually really go well and well together, right? But of course, if you really want to be one of the best best front end developers, then yes, you should put pour your heart and soul into front development. But that's obviously just depends on your goals. If you want to be a full stack developer, focus on front and back end. Some days you'll be good at front end, some days you'll be good at back end, but that's the whole process. But put your projects on GitHub, put on your put your GitHub on your resume. Uh, list your list about three projects on your resume. Work experience as well if you have any. And start applying to jobs. Like apply everywhere. Like even if jobs ask for uh, ridiculous expectations, just apply. Because half the time, the companies are asking for expectations just to weed people out to see who to discourage you from applying. But in reality, that's what they want. But usually, that's not what they will get, right? So they have to really see what they are getting, right? And then you know what I mean. That's why I just apply. Like it doesn't matter if it says, "Oh, we want three years of experience and you only have two. Just apply. You never know what's going to happen. And most of the time, the companies, right? Well, a lot of companies, what they do is they'll actually, uh, like, let's say, for example, if you apply to a senior role by accident, but they they end up liking your resume. So what they'll do is they'll interview you. They'll see how your background is, right? If they like your background, and but they don't feel like you're a senior level, what they'll do is they'll just they'll they'll hire you at a lower level. So for example, that happened to me when I was working uh, for my first job. So I I, inter I wasn't interviewed for a specific level. I was interviewed as like I was just interviewed generally, and what they do is they uh, they uh, analyze like my skill set, and they use that they use that uh, performance to determine what level that they think I should start at, and so that's what happened. So you know like that's why you should just apply to any job that you see. It doesn't matter if the job asks for two years of experience, three years of experience, four years of experience. It doesn't matter if you're shy by like two years of experience, right? Because you never know what's gonna happen. Like you know sometimes companies will. You know, shed a little bit of light. They'll give, they'll give you, they'll cut you some slack, and they'll work with you. You know, they'll work with you. But yeah, you know, you just gotta test it out, test the waters, and see what happens. I'm not saying lie, right? I'm just saying just apply and just be honest, and then see what happens. But hopefully that was helpful. I know I won a ramp, but hopefully that was helpful. Let me see. So I think I'll create a custom type and I'll call this type 
edit message payload and we definitely need the conversation ID we need the message ID and we need the author uh, and the content as well honestly I'll just send everything it doesn't really matter I'll, I'll just send everything who cares Should we use a put or a patch? Uh, if I remember correctly, put is for updating a partial entity. Patch is for like the entire thing. If I remember correctly, let me let me Google that real quick. Patch versus put. Put is a method of modifying resource where the client sends data that updates the entire resource. Patch is a method of modifying resource where the client sends partial data. Okay, so we're not, so we're not a, uh, so we're not updating the entire resource. We're only updating a partial entity. So patch would be the best. Uh, HTTP verb. So let's do patch. And the endpoint, which we have not defined yet on the API, will do. So it'll be slash conversations. Uh, the conversation ID. Uh, so I'll just grab that from message conversation ID. Um, do I really want to send the whole thing? I don't want to send a lot of stuff, but I really do need. Honestly, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to send the whole thing. I'm not going to send the whole thing. Uh, I'm leaving right now because it's night here in my place. The time here is 10, 20 p.m., but I still have work tomorrow, but I learned a lot from you. I'll come back tomorrow. I'll review it again. All right, yo, Ezekiel, thank you so much for stopping by the stream. Thank you for joining as a member. I really appreciate that, man. And make sure if you have not joined Discord, make sure you're in the Discord. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'll, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy. Good night, man. Yeah, I don't want to send a lot of stuff because, like, you know, sending all of this data to the backend is just really unnecessary. You don't want to send a bunch of stuff. So let's just do this export type. Um, let's see. So export type, edit message payload. We'll need the conversation ID. We'll need the message ID. Yo, we got 61 members. I think we I think we've peaked at 61 members today. That's a new record today. Yo, if you're new here, welcome to the stream. You know, don't don't be shy. Like say hi. Like don't be shy. I know I know a lot of you are really shy, lurking, but you know, you know, don't be shy. Like I reach chat all the time. So if I don't reach chat, it's because I'm just so invested into like uh what we're doing right now. But I usually catch up on the chat, so don't worry. Joshua, yo, what's up, Joshua? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you here. So we have conversation ID, we have message ID. Uh, what else will we need? We definitely need the content, so that'll be a string. Uh, additionally, uh, the user will, okay, so the user will not be able to edit the message. So we don't need to send any user ID. Okay, because we'll get the user ID from the authenticated user on the, on the back end. And we don't even show the edit message options to the user on the client anyway, so it's okay. Uh, yo, what's up, George Mac? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Nice to have you here. We got a lot of new faces here. A lot of new faces here. Hi, do you have a file for TypeScript interface or just for types? Uh, I have. So I think right now here I've only created types, but I have not had the chance to use interfaces yet. But I think if I were to use interfaces, I would probably create a separate file for interfaces. I'll probably create an interfaces.ts file. At least that's what I did on the back end. But for the front end right now, everything here is just types. Uh, but you don't have to separate it. Like you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Edit message payload, conversation ID content. Uh, what else do I need? I think we'll. I think we're fine. I don't think we. Really, I don't think we really need anything else. Uh, so that's good. So let's just do this. Let's type annotate that, and let's do Axios patch, and we'll need. Uh, let's see. Uh, v web code. Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you here. How are you doing? You will use WebSockets or just front? Uh, we actually are using WebSockets actually. On the back end, we actually already have Socket IO server implemented already. And we already are connecting from the front to the back end uh, via WebSockets. So all the WebSocket stuff has actually already been configured already. Right now we're just working on editing the messages. Uh, but if you're curious to see how all that you know connects with one another, stick around for a little bit and I'll show you how we're going to listen to events and uh, register events on the back end with the WebSocket. I am good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And I'm not lying, I'm actually doing great. Um, our chat application is looking really well, you know. 
Yeah, Field Lights. Is that the name of the theme? I think it is. Yeah, Field Lights. It's, it's a great theme. It's a great theme. If you're brand new here, you know, welcome to the stream. Like, uh, this channel is focused on, you know, developer tutorials. So if you want to learn React, Nest.js, Express, my channel has lots of videos on all those topics. And we're always making, I'm always making new videos every single time. So feel free to subscribe, check it out. And what we try to do is we try to stream every day. Well, not every single day, but, you know, every other day. But so far, like what I, I mean, I, I pretty much streamed like for about six days straight and I took a break and I streamed again. But yeah, like on, the streams are really just focused on building live projects and, you know, collaborating with the people in the chat. You know, people have their suggestions. They suggest their ideas to me and I just build it out. And then, you know, everyone has fun. I have a school project that involves doing the thing you currently do. Oh, building a chat. Nice. So there's a lot of overlap between what we're going to be doing. Uh, Del Tuva, welcome to the stream. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Um, I hope you're doing well. Where is everyone from? I'm just curious. Where is everyone from? I always like to know where... You don't have to say if you don't want to. You don't have to be exact, but I'm always just curious where everyone is from. I'm personally from Arizona in America. If you know where Arizona is, it's all in the West Coast in America. So it's currently 7.21 a.m. So if you live in the East Coast, it's like 10 a.m. If you live in Europe, it's at least like... Like like around... At least like 3 p.m. over there. If you live in India, it's at least like 7 p.m. over there. Or 8 p.m. If you live in Australia, it's like probably 9 p.m. over there. We got Nigeria, we got Bangladesh, we got Quebec, Canada, we got Lithuania, nice, we got Georgia, we got Asia, we got Germany, we got Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Herzegovina, Korea, we got Korea, wow, we got Argentina, we got Morocco, we got people all over the place, 4 p, yo, what's up, Vincent, long time no see, how are you, 11 p.m. Argentina, 11 p.m. in Argentina, really, 11 p.m., wait, Argentina, or you mean 11 a.m.? I think you mean 11 a.m. Because 11 p.m. would be like plus like 14 hours. And Argentina is like on the on the Western Hemisphere. India. Yeah, we got people from all over the place, man. Like this is a really diverse stream. It's not only people from the same country that I'm from. It's people from all over the place, which is great. You get to see people from all backgrounds, which is nice. Are you working a software job in any company? Uh, well, right now I'm not working as a software developer, but I'm working as a developer educator. Uh, and what I do is I pretty much educate customers on how to use the company product. And it's a lot of documentation, it's a lot of tutorials, a lot of writing. And I actually, I actually like the job a lot. It's a lot of fun. Yo, you, you reminds me, that's funny. Of course I remember you, man. Like, you were always commenting on my videos, you were always chatting with me in the chat. Like, of course, like, if you, if you're an active chatter, I'll remember you 100%. Unless if you change your name. Uh, but most of the time I remember, I tend to remember a lot of people, so don't worry. You could, you could have came back 10 years later and I, I still would have remembered you. I just have really good memory. But I hope you're doing well, man. Like, not long time no see, you know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're in the new Discord. I think you are in the new Discord. But if you uh, aren't, you know, definitely check it out. We, you know, I made a new Discord a while ago. Um, and, you know, it's active. Lots of people are in there. You know, we're starting fresh because coding, you know, I, that, that, that server is kind of like dead. Uh, kind of because I kind of just like let it die, if I'm being honest with you. But, you know, it's fine. But definitely join. Uh, just use the exclamation mark Discord command in the chat, or just go to the just go to the description. And you'll find the uh, you'll find the link. Hello, uh, my mistake. Eleven in Argentina XD. Yeah. You know, no, that's great. Like we have people from all over the world, and it's not just you know America. It's not just Canada. It's not just the Western Hemisphere. You got people from everywhere, man. And that's just how you know, like, the world is just so connected with each other. Uh, yo, what's up, Dream Queen? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Welcome back to the stream, I should say. You were here yesterday and the day before, I think. I do remember your name, though. Like I said, if you chat, if you talk, if you're an active chatter, even if you say one message, most of the time I'll, I'll remember you. Uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll send the conversation ID, the message ID, and the content we'll send as a request body. So content. So what I'm gonna do is I'll actually destructure everything. So let's do conversation ID and message ID. But yeah, we've been streaming for four hours so far, and I'm honest, honestly, I'm having a lot of fun with this stream because we're making so much great progress with our application, uh, and it's just so much fun. You know, I said we were gonna build a e-commerce app this Sunday, but uh, not yet. Like I want to, I want to, I want to postpone that as much as possible because I really want to like. Like, I really want to, like, continue working on this app as much as I can because it's we already built so much already. It only makes sense to add more more and more features, you know? 
Uh, let's see. Is Nest.js better than Express? I think so. I personally think it is. Uh, but it has its use case, right? Like, for example, if you're building a very small app to demo something, I think Express is great. Like, for example, every single documentation is always going to use Express or Fastify to showcase, uh, like, you know, how to set up, like, an API to use their API, right? For example, if you go on Stripe doc, if you go on Stripe documentation, uh, they have lots of docs that show you how to set everything up in Express. Right. So that's why I think that Express will never be replaced by Nest. But if you want something that's more robust, more opinionated, that gives you more structure, that's more strict, uh, that that's just more organized that, and it has a lot of wrapper libraries that do things for you. Nest JS is your best friend. I have started using I started using Nest about two years ago because someone told me about it. And I watched the video from Brad Traversy because he did a crash course on Nest. And I watched it and I was like, you know what? I'm convinced. Let me go ahead and try it out. And I tried it out. And uh, my first big project with Nest was, was actually with the Discord dashboard, which I actually think I did that live on stream. And ever since then, I've just been building projects with Nest. And the last time that I used Express was probably over like a year ago for like a big project. I don't use Express anymore because Nest is just so much better. It's just so much better. In my, in my honest opinion, I would always advocate for, for Nest.js all the time. A Discord dashboard club? No, an actual Discord dashboard. Like, if you look at my channel, I have, like, multiple streams and videos of me just building out Discord dashboards and showing people how to, like, build them out from scratch using Next and React. Uh, well, actually, you know, I did use Express for the Discord dashboard with Next.js, but um, only because it was requested. But in a, in a personal project, I don't think I would ever use Express ever again, if I'm being honest with you. Anyway, so we are going to need to call this API, and then the thunk will need to... Uh, call this so what we'll do is we'll do edit message as edit message api and the thunk will basically just pass this and then we'll change this to message edit message that you have like 73,273 series of making a, disc a discord dashboard yeah I actually you know let's see I think I have I have one live stream where I built the dashboard uh I think I might have two, I'm not sure. But I do know that I do have one live stream where I built a dashboard. It was about three or four days where I, where I spent time building it. I have one dashboard series that I made in 2020. Uh, and then I made another one in 2021, I remember. Uh, and then I made a third one with Next.js. So everyone was actually, each one was actually different. But yes, there, it, it does feel that way because there are a lot of episodes. Because one of the dashboard series has like 50 episodes, which I honestly, I probably shouldn't have uploaded 50, 50 videos to be honest with you. Because I think that many people would have actually preferred if I just upload everything in like an hour or two hour long video. Because, you know, I, I've uploaded a lot of hour long videos and a lot of people actually like it. Like, for example, the ticket bot, like a thousand views, lot, lots of people like that. And it was an hour long. The Nest.js crash course was uh, an hour long. And it's at like almost 2,000 views. By the way, if you all are new and if you're not really familiar with Nest.js, I have a crash course on my channel that I just uploaded uh, like two years to two, two weeks ago. It's brand new. It's fresh. Uh, go ahead and check it out. The link is right over here. Nest Nest.js crash course. Go ahead and check it out. Django would make this app slow. Uh, I don't think it would make it apps. I don't think it would make it slow. Uh, I don't think I want to make it slow. I mean, Django is actually a pretty fast framework, actually. Chat app is looking fire. Thank you, Antisocial. And welcome back to the stream, Antisocial. I hope you're doing well. Do a tutorial for how to make a welcome system with QuickDB and a Discord JS with sub commands like set welcome. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. Bro, Django versus React, which is good. I mean, there are different things. Django is for the back end. React is for the front end. Chanda Oz, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Will you ever do Nuxt? I mean, isn't Nuxt for Vue.js? And I'm not really a Vue.js developer, but I'm not saying that I'll never use Vue, but I just never really. I haven't used Vue for like about three or four years because last time I used Vue was when I was in college and it's been so long since I've used it so uh, I mean who knows maybe one day you know actually what I what I really want to learn is I really want to learn Remix uh, and I really want to get better at Next.js I really want to learn Remix though uh, Remix seems promising in my opinion um, I think Remix is going to make it in my honest opinion will this be hosted on a domain uh, we will deploy it eventually I think uh, give me one second. I am going to be right back. Excuse me for a second. I'm going to be right back. Give me one second. Sorry, that was my headset.
All right, sorry about that. I'm back. All right, let's see. What is chat saying now? Thanks for your constants. It'll be a nice help. No worries, Choke Nation. And thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. I always welcome new people to the channel because, you know, uh, we all we always want to welcome new people to the channel. Uh, Bad Driver, what's up, Bad Driver? Pros and cons of MongoDB. Uh, I would say MongoDB, my only problem with it is that if I have a relational app, I'm going to eventually have to yield towards a relational uh, schema structure with MongoDB and that just kind of defeats the whole purpose of NoSQL. Uh, I think MongoDB is great. I think MongoDB is perfect for microservices because when you have a microservice architecture, you have uh, different APIs and each API has its own thing. And what you can do is you can use MongoDB because you only have, like, let's say for example, right? let's say you have a microservice, let's say you have a payment microservice, right? Well, the payments microservice is going to have its own, uh, it's, it's going to have its own structure and it shouldn't have any relation with anything else because it's only related to payments, right? If you wanted to use that payments uh, record to fetch a different record from a different microservice, then you would have to fetch the payments API first to get the data. Then you would use that data to fetch another API to get some other data. And in that case, you know, MongoDB is just perfect for microservices, in my opinion, because you can easily just like scale it very well. And you never have to really worry about having a bunch of relational tables on one single database. You just have different database records in each microservice, which is great. But personally for me though, I, I'm not saying MongoDB is bad. I personally would like to use MongoDB more. Um, but I just don't like how like when you yield towards relational data, you just end up, it just ends up like, you know, it just ends up almost the same and you, and it makes you wonder like, you know, should I just use my SQL? That's what I, that's what I ask myself all the time. Oh my god, you have a tutorial with the YouTube API? I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, uh, the, I, I actually uploaded a new series for the YouTube API. And definitely check that out uh, if you want to. What do I really need for a web dev besides HTML, CSS, and JS? You need React. You need Node.js for backend or any backend, really. But as long as you just learn React, Angular, Vue, or just a framework for, for front end, you'll be fine. And you can learn any backend you want. Uh... I'm going to head out now. Also, we appreciate you a lot. Thank you for all the effort you put into videos and streams. No worries, Ethan. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for stopping by. And make sure you join the Discord server. If I join channel membership in the developer, will I get access to rolling? Yes, random videos. So if you join as a member, you will get access to uh, a private channel with all the other YouTube members where you can chat with us. Um, and uh, if you join as a developer intern, uh, which is $5 a month, you will get access to the help channel, which you can ask any question you want. You can ping me directly. I'll, th that's the channel that I will pay attention all to, but you will get the role, uh, in the server and you'll be on top of everyone else. So right now, if you look at the discord server, uh, this is our discord server over here. You can see this is all of our members over here, all of our beautiful YouTube members. And then these are the YouTube members only channels. I'm still working on them, but they're, they're a work in progress. That's why I haven't really made like a formal announcement on my YouTube community page yet. But once everything's set up, everything will be perfectly working and you can go on there and you can ask, uh, private questions and you'll get direct answers from me. Um, and yeah, uh, React plus Nest. Yeah. I think React plus Nest are like, it's a good combo. I, you know, a lot of people would prefer Angular Nest because Angular is built on top of, uh, Angular. I mean, Nest.js is like inspired by Angular, you know? What about jQuery? jQuery, you know, honestly, I don't know who still uses jQuery, but it's it's really dead, honestly. It's really dead. Like, even the even the creator of the library had said to avoid using it. I bet I think I'll well since you're really helping. Well, listen, man, no pressure. You know, I'm just I'm just letting you know what is available. If you want to, that's awesome. I really appreciate that, man. But you don't have to at the end of the day. Uh, I made a few simple apps and express how long it take for me to learn Nest and start using it. Uh, well, here's the thing: like once you learn. You know, uh, you just have to ask yourself, do I understand what I'm doing? And if you understand what you're doing, um, then it will work out. Like if you understand what you're doing, then that's a sign that means that you're learning new things. You've gotten better. And then if you're failing to understand something, that means you're learning something new. So that's how I think you should think about it. For example, right now, like if you watch the previous streams, right? If you watch the previous streams, I was struggling a lot the first six to seven days i was struggling a lot and even today i was still struggling like i had like help from a lot of people right a lot of people in the chat were helping giving their suggestions and it's just like you know it, and, and and that's just proof that even if you know a lot you still don't know everything you know so if there, if there if like for example like the things that you can see that i'm doing without thinking it's because i've done those things before 
right? There's no surprise that I can do those things without thinking is because I've done those things before. The things that I am a little bit more stuck on, I've never done those things before. So that's why I need a little bit of assistance. I need a little bit of thinking process, you know? So when you think of it like that, Right, you gotta ask, okay, what do I know how to do with Express? Do I know how to make post requests? Do I know how to validate? Do I, do I know how to validate users data? Do I know how to, uh, use passport? Do I know how to register middleware? Do I understand what middleware is? When you ask all these questions and when you can say with confidence that you understand these topics really well, that means that you can start learning new and new things. And sometimes you might come to a wall where you don't know certain things. And that is where you can dive into other fields. Like, for example, like if you've done everything that you could possibly think of doing in Node.js, you know, Take a little break, learn Rust, learn C-sharp, learn Python, see how things are done in those languages, and it'll give you a whole new perspective of how you would do things in the original language that you came from. You know, like, uh, I, I, that's how I see things, you know, because I, I, there were times where I got bored of making Discord bots in Node.js, and, and I learned Discord Pi, and I just saw the way that things were done with Discord Pi, and I was impressed. And so I, when I went back to... Uh, Discord JS, I just had a whole different perspective. Same thing when I went from Angular to React, because I was always an Angular person, and I always knew about like you know how everything worked with Angular. When I went into React, I absolutely hated it because I just didn't like how React didn't have an opinionated structure. I didn't like how you know React didn't have services. I didn't like how React didn't have observables. It gives you that different perspective, and it exposes you to different programming patterns that other developers, uh, you know, implement. Right. That's why I think it's important to never stop learning and always learn new things because it will always keep you with a new mindset. Your pillow better be cold. What do you mean? Is are you are you saying that because I because I barely sleep? I mean I, I sleep like you know I sleep I, I get I get I get like for example I got about I mean today I actually didn't really sleep much because yesterday I was actually really busy last night because I was helping out a friend of mine. Um, but normally I get about like seven to eight hours of sleep. Nodes of framework? I thought it was no, no, no. Well, not Node. I mean, like a, a Node framework. Like for example, like Express, Nest.js, Koa, Happy, uh, Fastify. That's what I mean. Does Angular come with state system? Angular does have its own state system. It's based on top of Redux, but I forgot what it was called. But I do know that they have a state management system that's based on top of Redux. Dennis, welcome back to the stream. How are you, Dennis? Denise. No, I was saying that cold pillow equals better sleep. Oh wow. Well, I mean, I do keep the AC on all the time. Have you ever tried Saga? You know, I've heard of it before. I don't really see... Actually, I, the Redux docs, I haven't really seen much about Saga before. Is it? Is it like an old thing? Like, did they deprecate that in Redux Toolkit? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's better than Thunk, really. I'll look into it. Doesn't it use, like, generators or, like, something like that? Should you not be working the chat platform? Oh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a break right now. I'm taking a break right now. I'm like, you know, we got a lot of people, you know, got to keep everyone entertained. Got to talk with the chat, you know. Can't just be coding all the time and just ignoring you guys, you know. That's not fair. Back on run. Hi. Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you all. Stream with face cam? Uh, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Actually, I'm thinking about getting a green screen and maybe setting that up. I don't know. I have a nice setup here. Like, you know, I have good lighting. Like, I have a window now because in my old room when I lived in New York, because I used to live with my parents, I, I, my room didn't have a window, and so the light was so bad. I used to stream with my face cam. If you look at my old streams from, like, 2020, you would see streams where I had my face cam on there. And, uh, yeah, I know, like, I have a better setup now. I have a better, I have a better, I have better lighting, so I could, I could do a face cam stream someday. Were you born in the U.S.? Uh, I was, I was. I was born in the U.S. I was born and raised in New York, lived there my whole life, and now I live in a different state. I live in Arizona now. And I never once thought about moving back to New York. Have you tried Bun or Deno? You know what? I actually tried Bun, but I was getting some weird issue because, like, I'll show you what happened. So I have, uh, let me open up the uh, Windows. I, I don't know if Windows PowerShell will open up. I mean, not Windows PowerShell, WSL. Uh, let's see, does it will it open? Because I don't think I have Docker open yet. Yeah. yeah, so let me show you this. So I actually did this. I did uh, Bun, and I did Bun create next app next and nothing happened i'm not sure what was going on and i, I am in the bun discord server and I, I didn't really bother asking but i figured it was something that i did wrong and i didn't really care so much to look into it so i just kind of left it as that but i have it running but i just didn't really get a chance to test it out yet i have tried deno in the past like i actually did a couple streams on deno and i made a couple videos on deno i don't i don't care why people think living with parents i mean living with their parents isn't bad i'm just saying like i used to live with my parents before and uh i just wanted to move out because I just wanted to be my own person. I just wanted to be independent. And uh, I mean, I love my parents, you know, like I like, you know, I, I love my parents. Absolutely. 
um like it's not that i moved out because uh i hate them it's just that i just moved out because i just was i mean i was like you know like i had just graduated i want to i want to live my life you know and you know li living in new york is just really expensive so i was like you know i'd rather just move somewhere else that's like a lot more affordable and arizona is a really nice state it's a really beautiful state it's got beautiful mountains it's really hot and i love the heat like a lot of people don't like the heat, but I absolutely love it. Just get some sunscreen, you know, get your windows tinted in your car and you're going to be absolutely fine. You won't have to worry about skin cancer. Um, it's a great state here. I love it. I love it here a lot. Uh, I, I have trouble putting my ideas into code. I can't just get to pass the world, the Hello World program. Uh, I, I think I know what you mean. And I think the reason why you're facing that issue is because, uh, I mean, are you new to coding? I don't want to assume. So I'm going to ask, are you new to coding? Go to Detroit and let's see how much you're going to have in the end of the day. Uh, are you seeing that because Detroit is like... Uh, yeah, are you seeing that? Like, what, what makes you see that? Okay, so yeah, the reason why you're struggling is because you're new to coding. And you're learning you're learning the basics right now, which is fine. Everyone is st Everyone starts off like that. So what I recommend you do is whatever resource you're following, just keep following it, keep learning. Play around with certain things, right? For example, if you're working with keyboard input, create a interactive program from scratch like for example ask questions like what is your name what is your age what is your birthday play around with keyboard input um just play around with that and then it just it just takes practice you know it just takes practice um and once you keep practicing once you keep putting once you keep like practicing like the concepts like variables methods loops uh, classes object oriented right uh, then you can start asking yourself questions okay how do I implement this how do I design this how do I design that like for example if you're learning object oriented programming and you 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 want to think of object oriented programming like think of it like this this is, this is actually what helped me a lot when I was learning object oriented programming I would take any real life object and I would think about how I would implement it in object oriented programming for example uh, a person how would I implement that in object oriented programming, okay, create a class called person, define the fields, define methods that a person might have. Person can have talk method, walk method, sleep method, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, what are your suggestions, thoughts about DSA and competitive coding for getting web job? Uh, I mean, I don't really have any thoughts about that. I personally think that, you know, if for companies like Google, they really want to hire the best of the best. So they got to do what they got to do to get the most talented people out there. I don't think it's fair to uh, base someone's coding knowledge only on data structures and algorithms because there's a lot more that someone is capable of and not just data structures and algorithms. Uh, so I think it's not fair to just only judge someone based off that. But, you know, companies like Google, you know, they got to do what they got to do. They're a very, uh, you know, innovative company. They've done a lot for society. So, yeah. I mean, listen, Justin, uh, I don't know if you're new to the channel, but, like, you know, we have a Discord server. If you want to you know pop in our discord you know ask some questions for help you know no one's ever going to judge you and if if anyone ever judges you you know i'll step in i'll make sure that they don't do that ever again but yeah you know you're more than welcome to join the discord server ask questions don't be afraid to ask for help you know everyone has to start off from somewhere i used to have that problem where i was brand new to coding and i was always afraid to ask for help and i just really had to tell myself you know you're gonna have you're gonna have assholes who are going to make fun of you for not knowing a certain thing, and that's fine. But there will also be nice people who are who will be more than welcome to sit down and help you out. And you know, yeah, like you're gonna have assholes here, but it's fine. Like, yeah, you know, just pop in Discord, see if you like it, and if you don't, you can leave. That's fine. But yeah, you know, ask a couple questions. You know, um, if you don't know something, you know, just ask, and it'll really help you out. Like, listen, like I used to struggle a lot with coding, and I was in the same boat. I always asked a lot of questions. I was always curious. I always asked people who were more experienced than I was. And I've faced the same backlash before of people, you know, criticize me for not knowing certain things. And, you know, that's just how it is. You know, that's just how certain people are. And that's fine. Um, you know, I jokingly asked how to print Hello World and serve it, and they called me stupid because it's the first thing I have to learn. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just think some people are just a little bit serious, you know. Like, it's, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, that's just how some people are. And it's, it's fine. Some people are just like that, and, you know, what can you do about it, you know? What can you do about it? All right, let's see. So, let's continue. So, what I got to do is I got to go to the back end. And what I'll do is in the back end, I'm going to implement the API route to delete the message. So, what we'll do is we'll go into messages, message controller. And this message controller already has the route ID prefix already for the conversation. So, we're fine. So, all we need to do is just uh, 
implement a patch method. So we'll do path, oh, patch, patch. And then we need to get the message ID like that. So the route is slash API slash conversations slash conversation conversation ID slash messages slash message ID. Okay. And then it's going to be the patch method. Uh, I'm not sure if you answered before, but do you have a Discord dashboard tutorial? Uh, yes, I do actually. Actually, wait. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't, but here's the thing though. If you watch the ones for Next.js, and if you watch the one that I uploaded this year, it's literally exactly the same in terms of the front end and the back end. The only difference is really like a couple of, a couple of changes for Discord JS version 13. Weren't you leaving stream? Uh, no, uh, I'm still here. Anson was answering questions before he leaves. Oh no, I was just saying that I was going to go back to the code. But yeah, I mean, like, listen, like, I would suggest following the, the, the one that I uploaded back in January. And I think you'll, I, I don't think you'll have any issues. I don't think you'll have any issues. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first get the auth user. We need the route parameters. So the route parameters, we're going to need the ID, which is the conversation ID. Param message ID. I mean, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know how many people here are, like, really interested. I, I don't know how many people here are, like, from my Discord bot dashboard tutorials, but, like, I mean, if enough people really want a version 14, I will make it, and I will make it, like, le I'll make it more condensed. So instead of having, like, 50 episodes, like, 50 separate videos, I'll just make everything in one video. I think maybe I'll put a poll out later today. Is there any way to make a CSS file in React so when I import it to a component, only target all the JSX elements? Because I have to put the videos in the class. I think maybe there's a way they could dynamically do that with a function. I'm not too sure because I've never really done that. I think in 10 years, I'll rule the world thousands of AI robots. I mean, hey, who knows? Who knows? Please do haha. -ha. Can you do a Discord bot dash with Next.js React and Tailwind? Uh, I could try. I've never done it with Tailwind before, but I don't know. Like, I've done Discord bot dashboard streams before, but I've never really, like, you know... Uh, it's been a while since I've done that. Yo, thank you so much, Plag Plagzy. Thank you so much for joining us as a developer, man. I really appreciate that. And that means a lot to me. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you join the Discord. Because if you're not on the Discord, you will not be able to flex your awesome role to the rest of the users. Uh, let me just make sure I synchronize the server real quick. So that way, if you are in the server, it will update. Uh, synchronize. So... We still have only eight members. Yeah, so if you're not in the Discord and you're a member, make sure you do join the Discord. So that way you get the role. Uh, and if you don't have the role, let me know. Uh, but yeah, thanks again, Plagsy. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Um. Okay, so let's see. All right, so over here, we're going to need to do one thing. Yo, thank you so much for random videos. Thank you, man. Do you want me to just call you random videos or do you have like a name do you want to do you want me to go by? But yeah, thank you so much, man, for joining. I really appreciate it, bro. And yeah, make sure you're on the server too. Because you're on the server, you'll get access to the you'll you'll, you'll get access to the role as well. Thank you so much, man. James, alright, I'll forever remember that. James. James. Yeah, I'll, I mean I, I mean listen, like if you want me to call you random videos, I don't mind. If you want me to call you James, uh I also don't mind as well. It's whatever you prefer. Okay, yeah, I see Plagsy's in the server. Uh, let's see. Let me just synchronize everything again. Synchronize nine. Okay, are you in the server? I think I see you. I'm not sure if you're there. Or maybe you're invisible, are you? I'm not sure. Uh, is this Nest now you are doing? Yes, we are working with Nest.js. Uh, I want to become developer, but membership is available in that country. You know, I really wish... Wait, oh wait, what country did you say you were from again? Because someone else also said that too, but I wasn't sure what country they were. They said they were from Palestine. But I don't think you're the same person though. 
Myanmar. Oh, nice, nice. You know, I wish I wish YouTube was kind of like Twitch, where like you can give people develop like give people like the the, the tiers and stuff because like I I, have, I would have no problem doing that for like you know like some of the people that are here chatting all the time with me because like you know like that's the least that I could do for people who are always like watching my stream chatting with me all that kind of stuff like like I don't really mind but I wish YouTube did that though but it's kind of whack that they don't it's kind of whack that they don't maybe you know maybe I'll think about streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time that's a consideration that I'm really thinking about but um yeah, thank you guys so much, man. Thank you, James, and thank you, Plague Z, for joining. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna add more perks later on to these uh, for these roles because I really because I I've had this feature for like so long, but I've like I've never really done anything with it, so I might as well do something with it. Twitch has limited access for Prime subs, so it's not available in India. That is whack. That is really whack. Maybe I'll make my own platform. Who knows? Maybe I'll make my own platform. Maybe someday. Maybe someday, but you know, that would actually require me to use something like Stripe or PayPal. I was talking with my friend about this yesterday too, because like we were talking about how, um, if I were to like create my own platform and use like Stripe API to set up the subscription stuff, I would need to start my own business. Like legally, I would need like an LLC or a C Corp. And I really don't want to worry about that right now. So for now, I'll just like worry about, I'll just let YouTube handle everything. Does each rank in the membership have different perks? So if you're, if you join as a developer, so, so if you join as a developer intern, uh, you, that which is only five dollars a month, you'll get direct access to the channel where you can ping me at any point, and you get direct help from there. Hey, uh, I have a quest answer. Should I go to your Nest Place or Express? Uh, I mean, here's the thing. What's your background? That's that's the first question I always ask. Because if you're if you came from a Spring Boot background, you could easily pick up Nest JS, but it might be a little bit difficult because you aren't really familiar with Express. If you're completely new, learn Express first build an api build a project with it and then once you're familiar with express then learn learn test you should def i could help with marketing um but yeah like uh right now the only uh right now the main difference between developer and developer engine is really just the access to the channel i don't care about perks man i just want to support because you're really underrated thank you i really appreciate that man that means a lot to me that means a lot to me man But yeah, I mean, the least that I could do is offer some perks for people, you know, and you know, yeah, like, yeah. And have you tried gold? Like, I've tried it in the past, but that was like four years ago. Uh, and Norris, uh, Norris, if you ever need any help, join the Discord server, and you're more than welcome to post your questions there. Uh, I'm a bit late, but glad to see that you're live. Yo, what's up, Clement? How are you? Welcome to the stream, man. What games do you play on your free time? Uh, let's see. I used to play League of Legends. I will never play League of Legends ever again because that game ruined my life. Um, I used to play CS:GO when I was a lot younger. I used to play Overwatch. I, I, Overwatch is like my favorite game. Uh, I played Overwatch for like four years, and I was actually top 500 on Overwatch for uh, like probably like for like one hour because I got kicked out of the leaderboard afterwards. Uh, I used to. I nowadays I usually just play casual games. Like I'm like I mean I can show you my Steam library. Let me open that up real quick. Where is my Steam? Let me move this over here and let me open up my library. Uh, I can show you my library real quick and show you what games that I play. Uh, let me just make sure. Okay, there we go. So this is my Steam. Like these are all my games. I have GTA 5. I have Red Dead. Red Dead. I bought Red Dead. I actually uh, streamed Red Dead on Twitch some time ago. I read them. Yo, what's up, uh, Subham? How are you? Can you share your project? Yeah, I got you in a second. But yeah, these are the games that I play. I don't know if you can really see this, but the only games that I have installed are City Skylines. That's my favorite game. I have Grand Theft Auto. I don't really play that much. I read Dead Redemption 2. And there was like this alpha game that I play. But yeah, I don't really play games that much. Sometimes if I get burnt out, I'll just play a couple games just to relax a little bit. But, you know, I don't really play games uh, that much these days. But I still will enjoy a game or two, you know. Uh, I've never played Rust before. Uh... I find Anson available really entertaining. He's like teaches me. Yo, I appreciate that. Another dead channel. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, how your stream popped in my rec? Welcome, Subham again. I tried to express and also Nest. Nest, I felt too much boilerplate. So overwhelming. I am missing if anything. Use Nest. I mean, listen, like Nest obviously has a lot of boilerplate, but it's not for everyone. That's why, like, if you, that's why I'm saying use Express until the point you get tired of it, and then learn learn Nest. That's what I did. What happened with League because of Legends? I'll let you hear a story. I mean, it's just like, you know, I was playing it a lot and it was just kind of like taking over 
like, you know, my daily routine, and I just was like, you know, it was not healthy, so I just decided to just uninstall the game entirely, and it was hard, like, the first few days was hard just getting over the fact that I was going to play anymore, but, you know, I broke out of it, and I don't ever want to get back into that game ever again. Same thing with Overwatch, like, competitive games, I'm a really competitive person, so when it comes to competitive video games, I just don't want to, like, get involved anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm just too old for competitive video games anymore, so that's why I just stick with, uh, that's why I just stick with, like, you know, regular casual video games. Uh, cause causes FOMO. Have you have you tried Stray? What is Stray? Yo, what's up, Beast? How are you? Kind of semi scary. Anson, you should do CSS battles with your Discord YouTube members. I should, maybe, maybe sometime I should. I am a talent main. You know, when I played League, I would always play Senna. I absolutely love playing Senna so much. I only play ADC and support. I I love playing uh Vayne though. Anyways, your views on React. I recently learned React, so I wanted to know your views. Uh, I love React. You know. I've used React for a year and a half, and I have lots of videos on React. I like it a lot. I kind of miss Angular at some point, but um, you know, I, I like React a lot. It's it's nice. It's got a great ecosystem. Uh, it's got lots of support, and I like it a lot. But anyways, so for those who are new, let me just show you all. Let me just show you all real quick what we have so far. So we have a chat app, and basically what we have it working is we have two users who can chat with each other. And let me show you. How what other stuff that we did so far just so that the new people are up to date with what we've been doing so let me log in real quick as another user and what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and send a message and you can see that over here i received the message and if i type though it should be sending the websocket event i don't know what's wrong with like the brave browser but you can see that when i type it's going to show over here if i'm typing over here it's going to show over here and right now what we're doing is we're working on the edit message feature. So we already built the text form already. I'm not sure why this doesn't span all the way to the end. It really should span all the way to 100%. I'm not sure why it doesn't do that. That's a little bit weird. Let me fix that real quick. Oh, I think it's the input itself that we have to manually set the width to. Let me do that real quick. Why not? Su why is not Super Chat working? Says some error. Really? What's going on? What's going on with Super Chat? I'm not sure what's going on, but it should work though. Hopefully, hopefully there's no issues with that. I think I know what to do. I need to set the container of this because this div right over here. I need to set this to. Let me do this real quick to see if it works. Let me just make sure it works. Refresh. Huh? Interesting. Let me go into the dev tools again. I think it's the form. Oh, I think it's the form. Is it the form? That's weird because I don't remember setting a style in the form, but it's fine. Uh, Stray is about a cat who got separated from his family and fell into a wall city and needs to escape from it. You should definitely try. All right, yeah, maybe sometime. I mean, listen, I don't know. I don't know if any of you would be interested in gaming streams on Twitch, but you know, I'm op I'm open to it. Like, you know, if you guys really want to watch me play video games i'm 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 down for anything because i actually have a 3060 now like my old graphics card was a 1050 ti and i got a new graphics card like about uh five months ago back in march actually you know i think about it i should have waited a little bit to get a graphics card because i bought a 3060 when it was like 600 bucks and when i look at it now it's only like 300 bucks which is like a lot cheaper you know um but if you guys are interested you know i'm open to it can you tell us your specs so i actually recently got uh an additional 32 gigs of ram uh, I bought I bought it from Newegg, so I have 64 gigs right now. Uh, I have two terabytes of solid state drive. I have two M.2 SSDs. Uh, I have a 3060 RTX 3060. Uh, I have a Ryzen 3900X CPU. I kind of bought that on purpose because I really wanted to uh, export videos a lot more faster. Because I used to use an i7 6700K, which was it was still good, but it was really slower compared to the 3900X. Uh, what else do I have? I have a X X570 motherboard. I have 64 gigs of RAM. I have a RGB H100 Corsair Platinum uh, uh, CPU cooler. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, I have a Corsair 275R case. I think uh, my RAM is I my RAM my RAM is 3600 3600 speed. I think megahertz is what it's called. I think. Uh, and I think that's about it, really. Like, yeah, that's really about it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and later on, like, like w when I'm done streaming, I'll create more commands for Nightbot, so that way you guys can see, like, that way it'll, it'll show you, like, you know, this PC specs and everything. But, um, you know what's ridiculous, though, is that I actually tried testing on Minecraft with my 3060, and I was only getting, like, 200 FPS, which is really whack, because I remember, I think it was because of the new update, the Cliffs and, ca the Cliffs and Caves update, 
Because before that, I would get like 500 FPS, even with a 1050 Ti. And after that update, I was getting 200. And I, I guess it makes sense because like, you know, with all the extra terrain generation. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I really don't like the new terrain generation. Because I because it really defeats the whole purpose of strip mining. And I used to love strip mining so much. Like, I would just mine for hours. It was just really th therapeutic. Can you make like, making a YouTube bot tutorial series? Uh, what kind of YouTube bot? Well, it's not my Windows XP, it's my carpet, it's burning, it can't turn out. I want to start coding, but I don't know how to do it when I watch videos, it doesn't help me learn it. Um, I mean, maybe try something like, uh, like, like, let's see, maybe try documentation. What about a textbook? Have you tried textbook? Anti-social, anti if you send me a DM on Discord, I will reply to you. Uh, if you, if you send me a DM on Discord right now, and if you tell me what, uh, if you tell me what language, uh, you want to learn, I will recommend you a good book for you to read. Are you super intense in Minecraft player? Not really. I'm more of a casual player. Like, I, I've actually played Minecraft on stream before. Like, one time I made a server, like, about two years ago, I made a server, and I linked it to everyone. And we actually had a bunch of hackers on the server, because people were, like, f like, people were, like, flying. They were, they were, like, flying all over the place, you know? Like, we had hackers, and then they tried to reason with us. They were, like, oh, my God, like, you didn't say hacking was not allowed, but, I mean, like, that's just kind of, like, pretty obvious like you shouldn't be hacking on people's servers anyways but um yeah like we played minecraft together like like years ago and uh like two years ago and it was a lot of fun i actually think about those times and it was actually a lot of fun like i played it with my friend at, at two of my friends with me and then we had a bunch of other people on the server that were also in the stream as well it was a lot of fun do you have an updated react tutorial uh the latest react tutorial that i have was from probably from like seven to eight months ago uh which is you know still pretty up to date like you still learn a lot but i'll probably make a new react tutorial maybe in a couple months not self-reporting. I have a CMO of a small company, uh, Minecraft server and Discord, all like self-hosted. Like you just buy a Minecraft server. Yeah, it's actually really nice. Give me one second. Let me see. I don't think it's hacking. It's exploiting. I mean, yeah, I guess they're, they're like using cheats to like play on the server when other people are like playing survival and stuff. You know, is React developer is still in demand? Yes, absolutely. React is actually the most demand. Re React developers are actually in, in high demand right now. High demand right now. High demand right now. Uh, okay. Let me do this real quick. Let me go over here. And let me go over to here. Because we have to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and get the DTO. I'm going to create a DTO called Edit Message DTO. And basically this DTO is going to represent a uh, the request body. Uh, Anti-social. Uh, send, me, send me a DM. Like send me a DM and tell me what language that you want to learn. And after stream, I'll reply to you, or I'll, or I'll do it right now. Like, uh, send me like a DM. Tell me what language you want to learn, and I'll help find you a book that I think would be great for you. Uh, alright, yo, Plagsy, thank you so much for joining us, member man. Take it easy. I hope to see you in tomorrow's stream, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, so let's do content. Uh, we'll do content is a string, and then it cannot be empty. Is not empty. Is string. And then what we'll do is we'll get the request body. And we'll type annotate like this. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically just type annotating the request body because we are making a patch request and we need to get the request body somehow. And the request body is important because it includes the content, which is the new message that the user wants to update with. So we need to get that. So now watch this. When I console log this, right? Uh, we are going to go ahead and make a request. Uh, the new React docs are amazing. I just read them this morning. Really? Wow. I, haven't, I actually haven't checked it out. Let me let me actually check it out. I actually did see like a preview some time ago. Let me actually check. Uh, React is it reactjs.org? Is it this? Is there like a newer version or because this is the old one? I remember there was like another page that they referenced somewhere. Oh, I see. Still in beta. Interesting. Uh, when is the stream tomorrow? Uh, probably going to be 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. Depends on what time I wake up. But it'll be around that time, 2 a.m., um which 2 a.m uh uh pacific standard time 
So if you live in East Coast, that'll be uh, 5 a.m. If you live in uh, UK, that'll be 10 a.m. If you live in the Balkans, that'll be 10 a.m. as well, I think, or 11 a.m. Wait, yeah, yeah that'll be that will be 11 a.m. If, if you live in India, that'll be I think plus 13 hours. I think I'm not sure, but it'll be at 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anson, did you finish adding user recipe feature? I did, I did, I did. Yeah, we did that like about a couple hours ago. That was a lot of fun, actually. So right now what we're doing is we're working on the edit feature. So uh, yeah, so basically what we want to do is whenever we hit submit, we just basically want to uh, dispatch this thunk. So that's what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, first let's go ahead and get the dispatch. So let's do const dispatch equals you live in Northern Europe. Do you, uh, do you live, are you from Scandinavia? I'm just, I'm just asking. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but I'm just curious. I'm like a really curious person, you know, but I'm, I'm going to assuming that, uh, I'm going to assume that Scandinavia, Northern Europe, unless, or, or like maybe like Germany or something. Scandinavia, okay. Okay. Can I guess, can I guess which Scandinavian country you're from? I was scratching my head. Yeah, I really was. Yeah. We got a lot of help though from hype. Shout out to hype again. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna guess Norway. Norway. Is it Norway? Uh, Sweden. Okay, gotcha. Sweden. Sweden. Nice. Nice. I I really want to go to Sweden. Sub from Baltics. What's Baltics? Where where is Baltics? Sorry, my my geography is not that great. Well, I mean, in, in terms of like uh, whoa, what's what's going on with the spam? Whoa, what's going on with the spam? Did you lag? I think he lagged. It's fine. He must have lagged. Is Baltics like uh Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia? Ah, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Nice, nice. So let's go ahead and pass in the conversation ID. Uh, so let me see if I can grab, let me do this const ID equals use params. Message ID will be selected edit message ID. And then I think we need the content as well. So e.target the value. Oh, actually, wait, I'll do this selected. Here we go. Bye, 20. All right, take it easy, Bacon. See you tomorrow. Hey, man, did my first coding course with Java and JavaFX. Is that widely used in the industry? Uh, JavaFX, I think JavaX, J JavaFX, I don't think it's... I mean, I, I think JavaFX is actually a big collection of frameworks, right? Like, let me see... I think it's actually still used in a lot of companies, but maybe it might not be as popular as back in the day. But I know for a fact that there are a lot of companies that still use it. It would be mostly the ones that are still using Java. Uh, but yeah, there's still a lot of companies that still use it. Yeah, sure, my inner lagging though. Let me see. All right, so we're gonna dispatch this thunk. And so what will happen is it'll call the API and right now the API is not gonna do anything and it's fine. We're only gonna console log and we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna pay close attention to the logs over here. I'm gonna go ahead and edit a message right now. So let's do edit. I'm gonna hit enter and let's see what happens. And you can see that it says, uh, wait, what just happened? That delete the message? I think that must have deleted the message. Wait, why is that deleting the message? Oh, I think we messed up. Hold on. Why is that deleting the message? I, I, might, I think I might be calling the wrong API, I think. Let me double check. Uh, 
let's see. So it says submitting edit. Okay. So it's submitting edit. Oh, wait. I called the wrong one. It's supposed to be edit message thunk. Whoops. There we go. Silly me. Silly me, silly me. Let's refresh. Okay, there we go. So submitting edit, and it's going to call the API, and you can see that we have the updated content. Okay, and all we have to do is just query the database for the correct message, and we have to just update the content, and that's really easy. And when we're done, we will send the message back to the front end. We'll have to remove, we'll have to set as editing to false, so we'll remove this, and we'll have to replace the message with the new message content. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And then let's see. So Anson, the developer, I personally think Anson, the developer is better than you at programming. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Yeah. Maybe he is. He's way better. Let me see. Edit message thunk. Okay. So let's go ahead and implement this on the back end first so we already have the conversation id and the message id uh you should make a feature so the user id is shown each log yeah i think there's a way that we could do that like you could use a like debugger or well, not a debugger like a logger like a global like a global logger i'll have to like look into that in a little bit but yo i it was something just happened we just hit 18,000 subscribers, guys. We just hit 18,000 18, subscribers. 18,000. Wow. Yo, thank you all for 18,000 subscribers, man. I really appreciate it. I mean, logs. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, yeah, like, because you can, you can do like a global log. You can do like a global logger, and then whenever something happens, you can just log it. Uh, we'll do that later. We'll do that later. But yo, thank you everyone for subscribing. I really appreciate it, man. 18,000 man like we're literally only 2,000 away from 20k and I thought that we wouldn't be hitting 20k this year because at the rate that my channel is growing we would have to wait until next year but no that's really it really makes me happy that we got some we actually gained like about 200 subs today which is really nice you know it's really nice thank you guys I really appreciate it and girls you know I don't know uh guys and girls but according to YouTube analytics, most of the viewers on my channel are like male. But you know, I mean, I don't really care. Like male or female doesn't really matter to me. Guy or girl, you know, we welcome everyone. We don't, we, we don't judge. We don't discriminate. We welcome everyone. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you're from. Everyone is welcome to the stream. And if anyone has a problem with that, they'll deal with me. Yeah, that's what I meant because Discord does that in case you need to investigate something. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at, at companies, they will tend to use stuff like Splunk for logging. And Splunk is actually an amazing tool. I've tried using it one time, but it's really hard. It, it just confused the hell out of me. Uh, what's different from JS to TS? Is TS good to learn for React? Uh, TS is good to learn, yes. Uh, but if you're new to React, you should just start with JavaScript first. Morgan? Uh, I've not tried Morgan. I've heard of Winston before. Uh, DL Gamer, welcome to the stream, man. How are you? Guys, trust me, you don't want to deal with Anson. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't really want to ban anyone. Like, like it would it would take a lot for someone to get banned. Like, like it would take someone to like be extremely, extremely, like extremist to, for me to ban them. You know, Morgan is really nice and super popular. You should definitely look it up. I definitely will. I definitely will. I'll definitely, I'll, de I'll definitely consider it. And the reason why I like having this chat is because like you guys re recommend me stuff to look up because there's a lot of things that I just don't know. And you guys are able to keep me up to date with the latest technologies, the latest things. And that is great. Uh, hey, bro, I'm new here. Yo, welcome to the stream, Sath, uh, Sath, Sathatna, Sath, Sath, Sathatna Tha. I definitely butcher, butcher your name. But uh, yeah. Um, yo, welcome to the stream, man. Do you have a bachelor's in CS? I do, I do. Uh, can I buy you something on Amazon? Um, I really appreciate the thought, man, but nah, you don't have to buy me something, man. I would feel very like, like, nah, you don't have to buy me something, man. I appreciate I, I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it, though. Um, nah, I mean, just, just joining as a member, uh, just chatting here, 
is more than enough for me like you know like just chatting itself and just talking like everyone else is is more than enough for me you don't have to buy me anything uh you never replied to this maybe at the time when message was sent yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we can actually we could do that we could do that we could do that we could do that uh yeah like when you hover over you can do that yeah let me add that to asana real quick I mean, why don't you do this? If you want, like, we could do a giveaway and someone else uh, can get it. Because, I, I mean, you know, like, listen, I appreciate it, man. But, like, uh, I'll take you on the offer and we'll do a giveaway for someone in the chat. Because, I, you know, I used to do giveaways a lot for Discord Nitro. But, like, you know, I mean, Discord Nitro back then was really whack. Now it's actually a lot better. But I, I've been wanting to do more giveaways, too. Because I've been thinking about doing more giveaways. Uh, but I just know I just don't know what I want to give away, you know. Like, what, what would I give away? You know, I'm thinking about making, I was thinking about making merch, but like, you know, like, like limited, limited edition, but you know, I, I'd rather just give it away for fun. For the UI, do you use just CSS or any other thing like Bootstrap or Tailwind? Uh, I'm only using just CSS. Yeah, I don't use, I'm not using Bootstrap. I'm not using Tailwind. Uh, hey, Anson, will you leave the recorded live video on YouTube for viewing later? Yes, absolutely. You'll be able to watch all of it later. Uh, welcome to the stream, Con Convexed. How are you? Welcome to the stream. They removed Nitro. Wait, what do you mean they removed Nitro? It's only basic and classic. 20 megabit file limit is a max even with Nitro. Really? Well, that's really whack. That's really dumb. Because it used to be 100 megabytes. That's really whack. That is really whack. Uh, okay, so let's continue. Uh, so on the back end, let's go ahead and go here let's do edit message and we'll need the params of course and I'll type annotate in a little bit any tips about dynamic themes like more color schemes with their dark and light variants uh, are you talking about like for an application or are you talking about for VS code they removed classing and added basic normal and nitro is intact 100 megabytes limit. Hey, I'm a CS student and I just did some courses of front and back end. Seems that algorithm recommend channel. Yo, welcome to the stream again, man. Like, listen, uh, the algorithm is bringing us all together and I'm happy to have you all. My channel focuses a lot on developer education. Like anything that you want to learn, my channel has it. There's videos on React. There's videos on Express. There's videos on Nest.js. There's videos on Next.js. There's videos on uh, there's videos on JavaScript. There's videos on GraphQL. There's videos on TypeScript. There's videos on a lot of stuff, and there's even more stuff that I haven't done yet, which I will plan on doing over the next couple months. And the live stream is a great place for you to come and chat with us to see how you can build projects from the ground up and just learn more. Like, if you have any questions, you're always more than welcome to answer, like, any open question. And it's just not me. Like, we have a lot of people, too, here who are experienced, right? Maybe even more experienced than me that can that are also qualified to answer questions, too. And even if they don't know the answer to the question, they might try to, they might try to help out, and that's the whole purpose of it. Uh, yo, Kanark, welcome back to the stream, and how are you? Long time no see. XOXOXOXO, welcome to the stream, nice to see you. Should I do free giveaways or paid coding courses or something along those lines? What do you mean, do free giveaways? Discord Nitro is just animated image bad, um, animated image and banner, yeah. It's kind of whack, not gonna lie. Like, the only features that I actually like with Discord Nitro is, like, the custom profiles for each server. But, uh, yeah. Is it gonna be a mono repo project? Uh, not really. We only have two repositories right now, but if we need more repositories, we probably might consider that. You're still streaming. Damn, bro. Keep going. Yeah, honestly, like, uh, we're gonna keep going, man. Like, we've been streaming for five hours and, you know, everyone is, is having fun. Like, we're all having fun here. Everyone's chatting. Like, we're having a good time here, man. And if you're not having a good time, then, you know, let, definitely say something and, you know, we'll try to make, we'll try to make sure your time here is well spent. Add a good product that we can give away. Like a like you mean like a shirt or something or if we were to give away something, what would you think is a good price? Uh, what, what do you what do you mean? I mean like even the smallest thing like you know I guess like a Discord Nitro thing I don't know because that's what I would do before and like you know it's obviously Discord Nitro is small but like you know it's about like you know what the thought it's about the thought that matters. Keep going, bro. Yo, I'm not gonna stop, man. Like we're at eighteen thousand subs right now, and I streamed last Sunday. It's only been one week since I streamed last Sunday. And uh, last Sunday we did a 13 hour stream. Was it was it last Sunday? I think it was last Sunday, right? I think it was last Sunday. It honestly feels like it honestly feels like it's, it's been, it honestly feels like it's it's been like more than a week. Uh, from Amazon, uh, what's a good price? I mean, honestly, it's up to you, man. Like it's your money. Uh, I would say like you know maybe gift cards, 
um i don't know like maybe maybe like like if you like maybe like you know if someone really needs a keyboard give them a keyboard if someone really needs a mouse give them a mouse you know you know it, like you know it's your discretion you know uh, it's your discretion uh can you tell me why you use interface for the service so basically the reason why you want to use interface is because you want to program down to the interface level and that helps a lot with dependency injection and it avoids uh it avoids you from programming to the to the implementation because what happens is if you need to change everything all you have to do is just swap out the interface instead of the implementation hopefully that makes sense uh i would suggest you look up programming to the interface versus programming to the implementation and there's a lot of stack overflow uh there's a lot of stack overflow uh answers that will explain it more in depth than i can uh but definitely google that though it'll, it'll definitely give you some more insight and the reason why i quit python is because i couldn't get libraries in console really you've been growing i was recommended to this channel today yeah i'm glad man like i'm, I'm happy it blew me away when i subscribed and he had 13k subs good stuff bro yeah, we're at 18,000 right now. Last week, we were at 16,600. And today, we're at 18,000. I would say like a $25 gift card, $50 gift card, perhaps two twenty-five ones. If someone needs a house, give them a house. Nah, don't give me a house, man. I mean, I wouldn't complain, but you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, like, it's up to you, random videos. Like, if you want, uh, like, I don't know how you want to do this. Like, if you want me to send the code on stream, I could do that. Uh, like, it's up to you, like, you know, like... You know, like you, you just let me know what you want to do. Uh, yo, what's up, the boy next door? How are you? So I was working on a project with Firebase, and I found myself making kind of same fetches in their specific hooks, and it forms to read right. So I was thinking about making a gen for that. What do you like a generate like a scaffolder? Yeah, GC's best choice. For example, Pygame fields to download. Similar to Java interfaces when yes, exactly like what Chalo said. It's very similar to when you use interfaces in Spring Boot. But the thing with Spring Boot is that it automatically conf it automatically auto wires it for you. Maybe Windows 11 can't download it. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe. Windows, I, I honestly, I don't think I'll switch to Windows 11 just yet. Because it's still very new. And I want to wait a little bit. If you live stream these projects you do all the time, I see you hitting 100k soon. Hey, listen, 100k, you know, listen, I've only been doing this for a week. So I don't want to get my hopes up because it's all about consistency. Because like right now, you know, I've, I've only been doing this for only like, what, this is my like sixth day streaming or seventh day, right? What's important for me right now is just being consistent and just coming here every single day, showing up every single day, streaming to you guys, talking to you all, uh, having you guys learn something new. And the views, I'm not really worried about the views because I know that if we're going to be consistent, if, if we're going to be building projects all the time, you know, it's going to take us to places that we've never been to before. But if we get to 100K, we're going to get to 100K together. Uh, hey, I'm new here. How's your day going? Yo, A-Switch, welcome to the stream, man. Express or Next.js for backend? Uh, I mean, honestly, Express is great, but like if you're using Next, you could also just take advantage of the Next.js API layer. Uh, but I honestly think that the, the Next.js API layer will never replace an actual backend, in my opinion. Uh, I want to learn React.js from where do I start? Uh, start with the basics. Uh, I have a crash course on my channel if you want to check it out. Hopefully, it'll work out for you. And I also have like individual features that will teach you. But uh, it just depends, like, are you better at learner with videos or are you better learner with documentation? Dead channel, are you doing it using admin rights? Uh, what are you referring to? Uh, is Angular the hardest framework? I would say between Angular, Vue, and React, Angular is definitely, it has a higher learning curve. I don't want to say it's hard, but I would say that it has a higher learning curve to learn. Only because it's a lot more opinionated and it's, like, you know, really different. Drink some water, bro. If I would be streaming, I would be dead by now. But uh, yo, hats off to you. Yeah, you know, actually, a couple hours ago, I actually finished the whole bottle of sparkling water because I bought some sparkling water, like, months ago. Uh, San Pellegrino. I never finished it. It was just in the fridge, and it was just, like, just sitting there. And I uh, I was like, you know what? Let me actually finish this because it's a waste of money if I don't finish it off and just throw it out, you know? But I'll get some water in a little bit. Don't worry. Have you tried Svelte Kit? It seems like people who start using it love it. Uh, I've never tried it before, but, you know, if people like it, you know, maybe I'll consider it. Isn't Angular the same architecture as NestJS? It is, yeah. Uh, NestJS... Is actually built on top of Angular. And to the developer, hit the gym. Yeah, I actually used to run a lot. Uh, I would run like five miles a day, uh, like every single day, but I haven't really been doing that, so I gotta get back into that soon. People hate decorators, me too. I love decorators. Why, why do people hate decorators? Decorators are amazing. Angular, but Angular, yeah, I can, I can understand why people would hate Angular so much because it's just like, you know, it just feels like why do all this stuff? Okay, I'll say this. The only thing that I hate about Angular 
is RxJS and the observable pattern. That is the only thing that I hate. But everything else, I absolutely love about Angular. What other things to learn along with React.js, Redux, Node, MongoDB for getting a full-time job? Uh, definitely a backend framework like Express or Nest.js or maybe even Django if you want to use uh, Python. On Mac, you can use sudo to elevate the admin rights or maybe Windows 11 has protection in place. Use MacBook Pro. What is jobs to look for? Uh, look for developer, software developer or software engineer. Can you do your subscribers code review maybe at the weekends? It's like a fun activity and also folks can get a lot of insights. Uh, I mean, how many people would actually like that? Like, I mean, listen, like, I don't really think I'm the best person to do that, but I could definitely, you know, give my insight of what I think, but I don't really mind because like, you know, like maybe there's something that you guys can give me insight on, then there's something that I can learn from too. You know what? Yeah. I mean, if you guys are interested, I could definitely do it as well. I'm not, I'm always, I'm always open to that. Uh, can I do polls in chat? Can we do a poll? How do I do a poll? Poll. I can't do a poll. Invalid parameters. Poll new. Uh, okay, let's do. Uh, do you want me to do community review project code, and then yes, no. That's how that works. Does that work? I've, ne I've never done this before. But I know that you can manually create a poll in the chat. Oh, that's whack. I keep forgetting that we could do polls. Let's do this. There we go. Let's see. Do you guys see that? Do you want to do code reviews? Let's see, 95% says yes. Some people said no. I have a project, yeah. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm open, like I'm open to ideas, man. Like I'm open to ideas. Uh, let's do this. While wow, this bot, a wait, let me, I can't really see this on my chat. Code reviews, like, you know, review projects, review your code tips, all that kind of stuff. Been working with JS on React for about a year. Think of making a new projects in TS. How will it affect my efficiency? It won't, actually. You'll, you'll find that TypeScript is actually really nice. I have code you can look at. I mean, you know, there's always new things. Like, if I have, if I run out of ideas, I'll consider code reviews. But I think that, you know, uh, I think pro coding projects are a lot more entertaining, in my opinion. I mean, you know, we'll see. Like, I'm, again, I'm open to ideas. Like, I'm open to ideas. I'm open to ideas. Like, if, if let's say, for example, if I'm bored of, like, you know, coding, then, you know, maybe I'll do something else. But, you know, like, yeah, like, it's always good to have a... Uh, it's, it's always good to have different, uh, you know. Your chat platform will slowly become Discord, LOL. Yeah, almost, almost getting close. I'm getting roasted if you review my code. I need to ping my router. Don't make it a mess. TypeScript is just adding types to your JavaScript. If you're familiar with other languages like C or C++, Java is like that. Yup, exactly. Like, if you're already familiar with a language like that, you're absolutely fine. You're absolutely fine. Let's end the poll. All right, let's see. What is free? What is free, Phoenix Framework? Everyone keeps talking about it. Phoenix Framework. I don't know what it is. Phoenix is. Let me let me look at this stuff real quick. Is this for? What, what is this for? Is it is it build rich into uh, join our growing community? Is it a, is it a front end framework? Oh, is it a backend? It looks like it's it looks like it's a backend framework for Ruby. It looks this looks like Ruby. Oh, it's Ruby. Am I am I right? Is is it for Ruby? Elixir. Oh wow, Elixir. Okay, okay. Isn't Elixir like a functional programming language or something? I am familiar with C sharp. I work with it daily, but I prefer JS more than OOP because freedom. For his chat session when he's live is more alive than his Discord, no offense. I mean, it's fine. I mean, like, you know, the thing with my Discord is that I don't really ping people on Discord and, like, I don't really talk too much on Discord too much. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to talk more on Discord, but, like, yeah, like, the chat is obviously gonna be more active because, like, you know, everyone's watching, everyone's interacting. It's the direct chat, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the Discord is, like, you know, it's just a place for people to chat with when I'm offline. But uh, it's function. Okay, okay, yeah. I've I've heard of Elixir before. I mean, didn't I think Discord has like some of their 
I think some of Discord's backend is actually built in Elixir, isn't it? That's what I heard. Like some of them is built in Elixir. Rust makes my head spin. I've tried Rust before. I actually have a video on my channel about Rust, but I haven't used it since then. Okay, so let me type annotate this real quick. And I think what we need is we need the everything from the DTO. So the con so we need uh, the conversation ID, uh, message ID. We need the author ID, which is the user's ID. Uh, let me see. Actually, no. Wait. Let me do user ID. Content string. There we go. And then this should return a message. Are you gonna use socket? We already are using socket actually. What are your thoughts on the mean stack? Uh, I think it's great. Like I started out as a mean stack developer. Uh, like I would build apps with MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node. And I liked it a lot. And then I just transitioned to React. I actually had to I actually had to learn React because uh, the job that I got, they used React for it, so. That was actually the reason why I had to switch to React. But if it wasn't for that job, it wasn't for my first job, I would have never, I would have probably still been using Angular. PHP was the first backend I learned a few years ago. I've, I've tried learning PHP, but I've never really liked it because it just feels really old compared to like the other languages, in my opinion. So now we have to go into our message service. So let's go over here. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do async edit message. We'll have the params and we'll need to return a message. So here's what we need to do. First, we need to make sure the person that is updating the message is the actual author of the message. So we need to fetch the message first. So message DB. Let's do find one. And let's do ID of the message is params.message ID. And we can also just do uh, author ID and then params.user ID like this. So this will fetch the message. Uh, by the ID and also check to see if the author's ID matches as well. So if the message is not found, then we just throw a new HTTP exception and just say cannot edit message and we'll do the send the status back of bad request. Uh, same work for another. There's no notion that if you this is less challenging. There is a notion that front end development is easier and less challenging than back end. What are your thoughts? Uh, Vibe Hub, that's a good question and welcome back to the stream by the way. Uh, so the reason why I think people think front-end development is a lot more easier than back-end is because I think that they believe that you're only really working with front-end and back, you're, you're really only working with HTML and CSS, which actually is not the case because yes, it is the case when you start out and yes, it might seem pretty, it might pretty, it might seem pretty simple, but actual front-end development involves a lot of stuff, right? When you think about state management, when you think about client-side authentication and back-end, back-side authentication, right? Back-end authentication, right? It's a lot different. Like just because front end is you know HTML CSS doesn't mean that it's easier because there's actually a lot more stuff that you have to ma that you have to manage. And can you think about how back then, when we didn't even have these frameworks, people had to do it from scratch with their own libraries, right? So it was actually a lot more harder back then. And now that frameworks like React and Angular exist, it's so much easier now compared to back then. So I think personally, when people say front end is a lot easier, I think that they're just really misinformed. But I think that if they say it though, I think really they just mean it from their own personal experience. But if they're just saying without any experience at all, then, you know, um, yeah, I, I don't agree with that, though. But I, I, I actually really prefer back end a lot more than front end because I find back end a lot more easier in my in my opinion. That's just from my personal experience. Yeah, we have 70 viewers right now. Damn, that is so many. We have so many viewers right now, man. You know, if, if you're new here and if you're just lurking, man, feel free to say hi. Like, you know, we have everyone here is chatting like everyone's having fun. Like if you're new here, you know, don't be shy. Just say hi. I don't bite. Everyone here is nice. Take it easy, Bacon. See you tomorrow. But yeah, if you're new here, say hi. Yo, what's up, Ollie? Welcome to the stream. How are you? Welcome to the stream. We have so many new people. 70 viewers. That is like a new record. I think the I think the most that we've had was probably like 70. I think the most that we had was 68. So we had a new record. Yo, what's up, Decline? How are you? How are you? How's it going? The algorithm loving you, it seems. You know, what's interesting is that I thought that the thumbnail that I had was kind of bad, but the fact that people are clicking on it even with this thumbnail says a lot. But average is like 40, 204 likes. Yeah, like, you know, Sundays are just my best days. But I'm happy to have you all here, man. Like, it's a Sunday morning for me. Sunday morning for people who are living on the East Coast as well. It's an afternoon, evening for all of you guys and girls living on the other side of the world. And we're all just united, talking to each other, coding, 
all that stuff. Well, it used to be sessions MVC with templating, so it was not as bad as you said. Oh, okay. So it was like it was. It wasn't it like server side rendered or something like that. Like they would use like like they would like Jinja. Like for Python, they use Jinja. For Spring Boot, they would use like JSP or something like that. Two hundred and four likes. Wow, wow. Seventy two concurrent viewers right now. Seventy two stream health excellent viewer activity analytics. We got great people here. But let's give the people what they want. So right now, we're for all the new people who are wondering what's going on, we're basically building a chat app. And the feature that I'm working on right now is editing the message. So right now, we're just adding some validation on the back end to make sure that the user is not editing a message that does not belong to them. Uh, and that's what we're doing over here. And then what we can do is if the message does exist, uh, what we can do is we can then uh, just do this. We can do message DB. Uh, content equals params dot content and then we can just save we can just do this this stuff i think this is the only uh validation that we'll need uh and then that that will return to the back end so we'll also need to fire a websocket event as well is it typescript yes we are working with typescript right now the develop the develop anton developer can't let someone disrespect php no i mean i mean php is nice i just personally never got a chance to get into it yo what's up sahil how are you Welcome back to the stream, man. I, I'm pretty sure you've been before. I recognize your name. Try it out Laravel? I have not. I have not. I have not. Yo, Wasif, how are you, man? Welcome back to the stream. Nice to see you here. We're seeing so many people here. So many so many familiar faces. I am great. Yes, sir. I've been here. I went on a break. How are you doing? Yeah, I've been good, man. I've been good. Just, you know, chilling, chilling coding you know streaming you know we're having a good day today amazing how ts and java are similar to js you think so java is a really nice language i don't care what anyone says i i will always have a soft spot for java i absolutely love java story messages as 255 bytes or more i think it's actually a text so i think it's actually a little bit longer than 255 bytes you can try making this more challenging by adding a timer for each feature and completing it in that time i could i could it'd be it'd be hard though because you know it's, it's hard to like talk to chat and then code at the same time you know because like if you don't talk to chat they're gonna be like you know they're gonna be like yo why is he not talking is he dead and they're just gonna leave but if you talk to chat that's how you get reoccurring viewers you know that's how you get the people that will stay because it's one thing to you know just code and not acknowledge your chat and not talk to them and i don't want to be like that you know i genuinely want to stream because i like talking to people i like having fun i like meeting new people i don't want to just like you know code and just not like acknowledge you guys and just not talk to you guys you know Doing good, doing good. I'm actually currently working on a presentation with an OP with Python from college. Nice. Good luck with that. Uh, Java for C Sharp. Uh, I think C Sharp has a lot of nice features that Java doesn't have, but I think they're great in their own in their own aspect. I've I'm not really I've never really used C Sharp that much, so I can't really say. But I've used Java and I love it. Isn't Discord's API written in Python? I have no idea. Uh, I think they've used different uh, languages to build their whole infrastructure. In which platform are you going to deploy in DigitalOcean? Digital Ocean. Uh, anyways, so let's continue. So uh, let's do this const message equals await this dot service edit message. So we'll have to pass in. Uh, so we need the content and we also need conversation ID message. And I think that was it, right? Was that it? I think, oh, we're, 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 do we even need the user ID? I think we do. Yeah, yeah, we need the user ID. Yeah, we need the user ID. Do this. Let me see if I can do this. Cons params equals user ID. Content, conversation ID, message ID. Can you show me for a second the backend for the typing section? Uh, you want to see the types? You want to see the types.ts file? Is that what you want? Uh, Rins, that's what you want, right? I can do that. Give me one second. How long have you been coding for? I've been coding for so I've been so I started learning uh, how to code back, uh, six years ago, and I've been coding projects for about three and a half years now. Uh, yeah, here you go. Uh, utils, types, that's Also, Rins, the code is also in the description. Like, a lot of you guys don't know. If you guys just go over 
to the GitHub repository, you can see all the code over here. So this is the React project, and this is the Nest project as well, right? The, the link is in the description. Make sure you go to this repository and make sure you fork and start the repository so that way you get the latest up-to-date features with the project. So that way you can always just, you know, do a git pull and you'll get the latest features from what we implement on stream. So yeah, just go to the link in the description and you can just click on the source, click on utils, click on types, and you can see everything in over here. So this is for the back end real quick. Uh, and what else did you want me to do? Can you explain for a second the back end for the typing section? Uh, I mean, basically we, we just create a custom type and then you use these custom types to type annotate literally anything you want, whether it's objects, whether it's a variable, anything you want, type into anything you want. And that's why we create these custom types. Uh, all right, antisocial, take it easy, man, and thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you tomorrow. Getting my internet blocked for a day because I overwatched your stream. It's 9 a.m. and I still haven't slept. Rip me. Damn, man. Go get some sleep. But I mean, listen, I appreciate it, though. You said you were from Georgia, right? Your stream is addicting. Gotta go right now. All right, man, take it easy, man. Get some sleep. Bless your soul, my friend. Thank you. Python isn't really that slow. It's just kind of slow to scale, but there's always tools to scale it up. Yeah, exactly. Do you think it's good practice to implement projects in different frameworks or get really good at just one? So here's my opinion. If you're get good at one framework, like for example, get really good at React, get really good at Nest.js or Express. Once you have done everything that you possibly can think of doing, and trust me, when you think that you've done everything, there's a lot more that you can do, right? Once you get really good and once you've done everything that you possibly do, learn something new. Learn either, you know, something like maybe like Next.js, learn Angular, learn Django. Then you can start diving into different things. So get really good at one because here's the thing, right? When you get really good at one thing, right? You're, you, what you do is you build yourself a really solid foundation of skills. And then if you learn something that's really similar, those skills will translate over to what you're learning. It's kind of like, you know, if you learn how to read music, right? You, you can kind of like translate that over to other instruments too. Like if you learn how to play guitar, you can probably learn how to adapt to playing other types of guitars, you know? If you learn how to play, like, you know what I mean? Like obviously not every single instrument is the same, but theory is like, in theory, it's like really similar. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not a musician, so I don't want to speak too much about that, but hopefully you understand my, hopefully you like, you understand my point. But Nest.js seems good. Yeah, Nest.js is really good. Uh, I, I heard NumPy library speeds of Python quite a bit, but a bit Vincent RPS. Uh, bonsoir, uh, good evening, good evening to you, Usama, welcome to the stream, how are you, how are you doing tonight, how are you doing tonight, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're doing well, is Django good for backend, yes, Django is amazing, Django is an amazing framework, Instagram actually uses Django, Netflix uses Django, lots of companies use Django, by the way, do you know if I can create a secure electron app using React or Next.js? Because I want to make one, but I don't know if it's secure enough. I don't know about Next.js, but I know for a fact I could do it with React. Now, in terms of security, it's it's not like you. In terms of security, uh, like technically, any framework that you use, uh, is going to have certain things that you'll need to do additionally to secure it. It's just what you. It's just how you secure it is what matters. Because the framework by itself will not secure the app for you. It's how you do it is is what is what matters the most. Uh, what's up, Constant Drawn? How are you? Bonjour. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Tari is a, is, a, is a framework for building desktop apps. And I think it was built on top of Rust, I think. I'm not too sure. I've heard of it before. I like the Mern stack because it's all JavaScript and TypeScript. Django is actually insanely good. I learned it from CS50 web. So you're creating like adding hash and salt password. Okay, well that's really more of a backend thing though. But yes, you can do those things 100% with Electron. 100% with Electron. Okay, so let's edit the message. So what we're going to do is this. So we're already calling delete message API. So let's see if the message actually updates. So what I'll do is let me log into my database real quick. What makes you say electrons? I've never really, I mean, I've played around with electron before, but uh, what makes you say electron is bad moss? I'm curious to like know what your perspective on that is. I, li I like hearing other people's perspective on things, you know, because it's just like, I, I like to, because like everyone has different experiences with different frameworks, you know, so I like to hear like what their insight is on like why they didn't like the framework, you know. Uh, let me see what conversation are we in right now. We're in conversation 35. So let's go to... Holy, where can I learn 
where can I hear more about these frameworks? Uh, there's actually a channel called uh, Fireship IO, and they actually talk about a lot of new technologies, like almost like every single week. I think I follow Fireship IO. He's like the only tech YouTuber that I really follow because he makes really good content, and it's a great way to stay up to date with like the latest, you know, changes to APIs, latest changes to frameworks, latest frameworks that are being released. He he puts a lot of effort into his videos, so hats off to him. Like, if there's anyone that deserves uh, all the success that they deserve, he is a prime example of of one of them. Yeah, Fireship, Fireship. He's a really nice guy. Okay, so we're going to try to edit. Uh, I guess we'll edit maybe ASD. Let me do this. Okay. I've been using it since 2019. Create three apps until Electron is slow and implement features very challenging. For example, auto-updating the built-in is broken. Oh, okay. I see. So you've pretty much had like your hands invested into Electron, but it just didn't work out because it's just not... I, I guess, yeah, I guess Tari would probably seem more promising in that case, you know? Because like... Speed and optimization is all like the important part of everything, you know. All right, let's see. So I want to go ahead and update uh, message number four thirty. So let's do this. Let's do edit. Hey there. Okay, did it actually update? Let's find out. Okay, so it actually updated. Now watch this. If I actually refresh the page, you're gonna see that. Okay, so the message is actually updating correctly. Good. So now what we need to do is we need to actually update the state on the UI. So let's actually write a commit and I'll just say and I'll add a commit for this. Uh, actually, uh, I won't do that yet. Moss is right. It's whack and unsecure heavy and app. I mean, isn't Discord still built on Electron or are they like or have they migrated it? I'm gonna be honest. I I have used Electron in the past, but I'll I'll say this: like I didn't really, I didn't really have a fun time using it. If I'm being honest with you, it just felt really weird, you know, because like they had like a different API that you had to learn to actually connect the front and the back. It it just really felt weird to me. No, it's election. Discord is using their own C plus plus implementation. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So they've like built their own fork of it. Not so many people know it, but there's a framework called NWGIS that has some interesting features. Interesting, interesting. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is, uh, I mean, here's a couple things that we can do. We need to edit the message for both users, so we can fire a WebSocket event as well as handle the fulfillment of the thunk. So here's what I'll do. Let me just write a commit message and I'll just say this. Uh, let me just review everything real quick. So let me show you this, like if I click on sync changes, like watch what happens. It just doesn't want to like synchronize with the server. Like you see how it just gets stuck. I don't know if you guys know how to fix this, but like I, I feel like it's an issue with like my Git credentials, but like whenever I click sync changes, it just doesn't want to like synchronize. And I don't know, I don't really know why though. It's really, it's really strange to me. Like if you guys know, if you guys know how the, if you guys know how to fix this, I would really appreciate that. But I'm looking at the logs right now, and not even the logs really give much insight. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna have to Google. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to Google some stuff later. But for now, I'm just kind of like stuck doing this, which is kind of whack. But it's okay. All right. So, uh, let's see. What do you get in git log? Uh, let me see. I get this. Git config local, git... Uh, that's, what I, that's what I see on my git, so... I'm not sure, like I've tried Googling it before, but I've never really figured out what the issue was. But it's not a big deal right now, because I can just fix this offline. But it just makes me wonder like why would that like why would that 
why would that be the case? Because all my gate credentials are, are configured correctly. So I'm not, real, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Let's see. All right, so I'll just continue. So let me go into store. Uh, yo, what's up, Lassie? Welcome back, man. How are you feeling today? I hope you're feeling better, man. And if you're not, don't worry. Tomorrow will be a better day. But I hope all is well with you, man. Nice to see you here. Right now, like, we're just uh, implementing an edit message feature. Yesterday, we did delete message. And today, actually, uh, we were actually working on user typing event. So if you want to watch it later, you can you can definitely check it out. We were we were able to get user typing to work. So let's do edit message thunk dot fulfilled state action. Better today. I've I have have seen my friends today, so I'm more happy. Well, that's great, man. And just keep doing that. Keep your head up, and everything will be just fine. Everything will be just fine. How how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, like how how old were, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, that is. I mean, you don't have to say the exact age if you're not comfortable. But I, I'm just like curious. I like getting to know my viewers a lot more. You know, live video started five hours ago. Nice and welcome to the stream, Aaron. Nice to see you here. Uh, seventeen. What keyboard do you use? I use the Discord. Uh, I use the Discord keyboard. The Discord knows the word. Yeah, thanks for your support, and I'm 17. Okay. I mean, yeah, man, like, I mean, uh, bro, trust me, like, you know, there's going to be a lot more stuff that will happen in life, and I promise you things will just get so much better, and then one day you'll look back, and then you'll you'll wonder how you've gone through stuff like that, and, the, you know, things will only get better for you from there, you know, like, I mean, I don't know what your situation, like, I don't know what your situation, and I want to assume everything, but, like, all I'm saying is that, you know, like, uh, like as long just keep your head up just keep you know just don't give up just keep your head up like don't like you know like you're gonna have bad days but you know it's what it's what you do on those bad days that determine you know the type of life the type of person that you want to be but you know I'm, I'm rooting for you man uh yo welcome back uh welcome back james nice to see you back here again uh 28 am i the oldest here uh 34 I'm 16, but turning 17 in December. Nice. Go do something else. Five hours straight coding a talking. Uh, what theme do you use for VS? Yeah, just use exclamation mark theme and I'll show it. Wanted to know the best way to get in contact with you for discussing about a project. Uh, yeah, you can just contact me on Discord. Just give me the details and I'll and I'll consider it. But I don't know if I'll be taking projects right now because I'm just really busy with like you know my full time job. Uh. It's so, like, you know, the YouTube channel, but you know, if you let me know, like, you know, and if, I, if you let me know, I'll, I'll consider it. I'll consider it. I'm not going to say no, but I'll, I'll definitely consider it. But you can definitely send me a message on discord though. Uh, my, my discord is, uh, Anson 0003. Uh, never mind. Forget about what I said about Electron. I just export and compile my Electron. You can but Windows security shows, but the virus, I don't know what to do. Interesting. I never used Electron before, so I can't really help you with that, but maybe someone here might know. Maybe Moss might know because he has a lot of experience with Electron. Yes, thanks for your help, Anson. Helps a lot, and I'm starting with types tomorrow. Hey, listen, man. Like, I'm, I'm happy. Like, I, like it, for me, it seems like you're doing good. Like, you're doing the right things to help yourself distract, to help distract yourself. So, listen, man. Like, you know, you always know where I'm gonna be. We're always gonna be here on the chat, and like, you know, like, yeah, like, and you have your friends too, man. So that's also the best thing that anyone can ever have. Like, I remember I went through horrible breakups. Well, not really a breakup, but like, I've, I've had my heart broken before, like, you know, five years ago. And I remember I was like crying a lot, you know, and then uh, like when I look back at it, I was like, you know, like I, I, I asked myself, like, you know, how did I get through that? You know, and you know, time is your best friend. Like time will help you heal. It might it might suck right now. It might be bad, but you know, it's okay because, you know, tomorrow will be tomorrow will be a little bit better. It, it'll only be better if you want it to if you want it to be better. And I and with the mindset that you have, I think you'll be just fine. Uh, thanks, Ash. I appreciate it, man. And welcome back to the stream. Nice to see you here again. You need code signing, I think. It's not a virus detection, just a signature check. Since your app is not signed by Microsoft, which costs three hundred dollars, wow, they charge you that much to sign your app. Wow, that is, that is well. There are cheaper signing partners. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, when the thunk has been fulfilled, we're gonna update the state, 
And so all we need to do is just find the message and just override it, basically. I'm going to be right back. Got to grab a burger. All right, man. Uh, so let's do this. Const message. Uh, message index equals. Let me do this real quick. I always const log everything because I want to make sure I know exactly what is going on. Because if I don't know what's going on, we're going to have a problem. So let me do this real quick. Let me go over to here. edit message and this returns a message type okay and then what we're gonna do is this we now have type annotation so let's go ahead and let me write a console log real quick let's do edit message thunk dot fulfilled and let's go over here and let's do this so edit message don't fulfilled. You can see the new edit message is there. So all you have to do is just search the messages array. We do have to search by conversation. So that'll be a little bit uh, that'll be a little bit complex because we don't actually have the conversation uh, ID. So I think we'll need to actually include that. Yeah, I think we need to include that. Let me do that real quick. Uh... Okay. So let's go back to the back end. Let's go to conversations. No, let's go to messages, message controller. We'll go over here and what we'll do is we'll need to add the relations. So let me do this where relations and then we need the conversation. Uh, what else does the message type need author? Yeah, let's do author as well. There we go. All right, so now we should be able to add a message and then we should be able to get everything. Conversation as well as the author, perfect. Okay, and then so now from there, we can just very easily reference message.conversation.id. So let me do this, let me do this. Uh, Anson, what's your current weekly streaming schedule? Uh, I usually, so, so I would say there's Monday to Thursday. Uh, so usually I'll do, so I think what I'll do is Monday to Thursday, I'll stream 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., four hours, get off. And then, uh, Friday, I'll probably take a break and just enjoy the Friday. Saturday, Sunday, I'll stream, uh, Saturday, maybe I'll do 2 a.m. to 6, 6 a.m. And then Sunday, I'll just do 2 a.m. until I'm, until I'm tired. Sundays, I'll, I mean, it usually depends. Like, for example, if I don't really have much to do, then I just, I'll just end the stream early. If I have a lot to do, then I'll just, like, continue working. Like, for example, like, if we didn't really have much to do in this stream, I would have just ended the stream, like, an hour or two ago. But, uh, you know, everything is going great right now. So, you know, why, why end the stream right now? What's payload? Payload is basically, like, you can think of payload like uh, a serialized uh, serialized data that is being sent from network to network. So, in, in a sense, right, we're sending... A, a a payload from the front end to the back and that payload is the is typically the request body but it could also be other stuff too but they typically call it a payload uh 2 a.m to 16 what time zone though uh uh pacific standard time so right now it's 9 a.m pacific standard time uh so if you're in eastern if you're in the east coast of america uh then that means it is currently 12 p.m over there okay Anyway, so let's go ahead and get the message. So we can do message the conversation. Let me do this. Let me do uh, const. Uh, let's do okay. And so what we want to do is we need to go ahead and go into the array of conversation messages. So we'll do state. Let's do this const index equals state dot messages wait oh yeah because we're in the messages yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah that's fine so the cm.id so that's the id of the conversation is equal to conversation id honestly i'll just do id like this screw it and uh so what this will do is this will give you back uh let's see this will give you the conversation message. Uh, 
And now conversation messages, we can get the message. Okay. So what I'll do is if there's no conversation message, turn. And what we'll do is uh, we'll basically need to get the index of where the message was located. So we'll do const message index equals uh, conversation message dot messages dot find index. And then what we'll do is we'll compare this to m.id is equal to message.id. And then what we'll do is conversation message dot messages. And I can just do message index. And I can just and replace the entire message like this. And that should fix everything. Uh, how did you learn to code Andrew Fire PVP7? Well, first of all, welcome to the stream, Andrew Fire. I don't think I've seen you here before. How did I learn to code? Well, I went to college and I had a textbook that I bought for the class. Everyone was required to buy it. And uh, I would just read the textbook and I would follow along with what the textbook said. And I would go into my text editor and I would practice writing some code. And I would ask myself, did I understand what was going on? And if I did, I would continue learning. If I didn't, I would keep practicing. And I would also go to office hours too to ask questions from the TA. And uh, from there on, it just blossomed into, you know, learning other stuff. So that's just how it all started. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's great. Like, you know, welcome, man. Like, I'm happy to have you here. Found you in my recommendations when I woke up. Well, you know what? The algorithm is doing us all a favor. Okay, so I still have time. I'm, I'm a senior in high school. You have plenty of time. I mean, are you taking like AP... Are you, are you taking AP computer science right now? Or are you like taking any programming classes? Are you in robotics, anything like that? Uh, how old are you if don't mind? Uh, I am under 25. I already have. Okay, so you're great, man. Like when you go to college, I'm assuming you're probably going to do computer science, uh, data science, pro or, you know, cybersecurity, something related to coding. I think you're in a good position compared to everyone else. Like when I was in high school, like I didn't even like, I, I wasn't even taking any AP classes at all. Like I had a late start. Like I actually went to college like, I went to two different colleges. The first college I went to uh, was just kind of like, you know, me figuring out what I want to do. And the second college that I went to when I transferred, I had to basically start uh, as a sophomore taking freshman classes, right? So you're in a great position compared to a lot of other people. So, yeah, definitely take advantage of that, you know. And, you know, everyone starts differently. You know, don't, don't compare yourself with anyone else. Just, you know, do your own thing. Build your own projects. Have fun. Do what you got to do. And, you know, that's all that, that that's all there is to it. Do you work on a company? I work for a company. Sounds great, man. Thank you for the advice. Hey, no worries, man. Um, you know, and like I said, I'm happy to have you here. You know, if you have any other questions, you know, you're always welcome to chat with us on our Discord server, or you can just come to the stream. I stream pretty much almost every single day, and I upload videos on YouTube teaching people how to code with projects and stuff. So yeah, you know, you're always welcome to ask questions. Uh, is the case is the add case function same with switch statement in Redux? It's it's really similar. Yes, it's really similar. Basically, it's it it's it's for handling like uh base cases like for example for dunks for you know, things like that uh sheesh 18.1 subs done are we at 18.1 already no way 18,006 oh yeah youtube rounds up i'm we're at 18,062 right now but we're getting there we're getting there uh what would you recommend to a software developer going to high school i would recommend just 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 have fun don't stress yourself if 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 you if you're happy learning the things that you're learning then good if if you feel overwhelmed you know you're still a kid like you know just enjoy your time like don't you don't have to like you know be ahead of everyone else just enjoy your time if you want to play video games play video games but if you want to you know if you just want to like learn a couple things you know balance it out right it's all about balance if you want to play video games if you want to hang with your friends if you want to learn it's all about balance you know uh, that's what i would say it's just balance everything out but as a high school kid you know uh i don't even know like to be honest with you, when i was in high school i would say that i didn't even have much time for myself because i was always stuck in school for eight hours a day learning things i just didn't care about so i would say i had more free time when i was actually in college and now that i'm outside of college and now that i'm working i have way more free time than when i was a student so it's it's just really different for sure i joined as soon as i saw you were doing a live stream it's hard to come across coding live stream nowadays i don't know well listen i mean listen there's always an audience for someone and i know uh you know a lot of people are everyone is welcome here you know any background it doesn't you don't have to be a typescript developer whether you're java python you know everyone is welcome here yo ibrahim welcome my friend ibrahim how are you man nice seeing you here long time man how are you have you ever used python before uh i have not i've used python but i've not really built like a large large project i've built a discord bot with it but that's pretty much it um 
is university important for software for work at a company well you know what back then people would say that you needed a degree but nowadays it doesn't really matter because a lot of people actually are doing really well without a degree like they go to coding boot camps and they're doing really well so it doesn't really matter these days you know everyone is doing really well without a degree uh lots of people are i i know a lot of people who are uh i know a lot of people who are working as a software developer without without a degree you know is there too much difference between TypeScript and JavaScript? Uh, not too many, but there are more differences. There are, there are more uh, additional things that TypeScript has that JavaScript does not have, so you will notice that. Also, can I just say you're the only person who has the most up-to-date Java Discord bot tutorials? Do you know how long I've been lo- do you know how long I've been looking for those? Well, that's interesting because uh, isn't there like a, I know Cody Simpson? Like he's a he's a Java developer. I've I've actually seen his channel before. Shout out to Cody Simpson. I mean, not that he needs it, but like you know, shout out to him. I mean, I, I I know that he's been making Java tutorials for a while, and I mean, uh, I mean, me personally, I have not watched his videos all the way, but I know that he does Java tutorials, and I know that he's done Minecraft plugin tutorials. I know that he's done JDE tutorials, and uh, I I I know that he's made some recent videos. I think that, or maybe he's just been busy. I, I don't know. Uh, you're you're definitely bringing that energy to the wrong person. Uh, TypeScript is JavaScript, but JavaScript is not TypeScript. Uh, oh, I've never heard of him. Yeah, he he makes a lot of uh, he makes a lot of Java videos. Why is he speaking so fast? Is someone chasing him? Yeah, that's just how I speak. I'm happy to see you happy, man. Yeah, Abraham, man. Like, uh, I hope you're doing well, man. I hope you're doing well. So, where can I learn TypeScript professionally? Love any tips? Uh, well, here's the thing. Like, if you want to learn TypeScript, I have a video on my channel that teaches you TypeScript. Uh, if that doesn't work out for you, if you need more, you can also refer to the TypeScript documentation. You can also go on YouTube and look up uh, TypeScript tutorials. There's lots of videos that teach TypeScript. Um, yeah, like, you know, uh, why TypeScript over JavaScript? TypeScript is, like, really similar to Java. I'm, I'm assuming that because you've taken AP CompSci, you've probably used Java or C++, and you probably are in love with the object oriented program. Maybe you're not, who knows? But TypeScript has these features, and when you come from an object oriented background it's just so much better why don't you use html and css we are actually using html and css are you using sockets we are we are for people learning typescript is golang a good language it is golang is actually really popular it's actually from what i've seen a lot faster than node using plain gist you shoot yourself in the legs a lot that is true matt uh typescript for beginners is good but is good for starting refer to as good yeah actually i've heard of that before uh diego all right take it easy Diego. hope to see you tomorrow so if I wanted to learn TypeScript for the objective, for, for the ob- objective, it's, uh, yeah, object-oriented programming, so I should I learn JS beforehand? Honestly, I think you can just learn TypeScript, because you already know Java already. The reason why people find TypeScript hard is because they come from a JavaScript background. If you already know, if you already know, uh, I know you're good, man. If you already know Java or C++, you can learn TypeScript very easily. Also, for those who are new, uh, make sure you join the Discord server. Make sure you join the Discord server. It's the best way to get in contact with me. Uh, make sure you join. The link is in the description, or you could just use the Discord command. And, uh, you know, yeah, you could just access the Discord server. It's a great place to chat with all of us. Uh, I'm always on Discord all the time. Whenever you ping me, I'm always there. So, you know, just feel free to join the Discord server. TypeScript is a language. is not as tough as C++. Yeah, I think, I think C++ is probably one of the toughest languages. I think, actually, I feel like C is more tougher. But C++ is definitely, you know... Pretty tough. I think what you know messes people up is the uh, the memory stuff. Can't join Discord. Wait, TS isn't JS. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So everything that everything that uh, everything that uh, is valid JavaScript is also valid TypeScript. But not everything that is valid TypeScript is valid JavaScript. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, watch this real quick. So if I edit the message. Watch this. I'm going to edit the message. Hello. Enter. And if I hit escape, uh, it should update. I'm not sure why I didn't update. Did I not update it yet? Uh, interesting. Interesting. It should have updated. Let me try. Uh, what link? Uh, just send it on Discord. Just send it on Discord. You should make your cursor automatically focus on the edit box when you press edit. Yeah, I should. I should. That's good. That's a good suggestion. TS makes JS a hundred uh, thousand times better. Can't use JS without its specs. Probably Nightbot deleted it. What's Discord? What keyboard use? I use the Discord keyboard. How learn? How to learn t- TypeScript? Browser APIs core after TS. They're actually just the same thing as JavaScript. You use, you're using VSA. You mean VS Code? 
I'm not sure why the message is not update. Let me check. Okay, so the the index is there. So it clearly is there, but for some reason, let me open up Redux real quick. Okay, you can see that it's been updated. I think we just need to remove the component and it should be fine. I think we need to just remove the component. So I think after it's been fulfilled, what we'll do is this. So let's go back to the front end where we are dispatching. So let's go over to... I think we dispatched over here. No, we didn't. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Give me a second. Uh, edit message container. Okay, yeah, so we did over here. So I think what we need to do is this. So where am I calling this? Yeah, I think we need to just set is editing to false. So let me do this. Let's go here. Uh, select edited message. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll need to pass in this editing. Set state action, boolean. What mic am I using? I'm using a, uh, a Blue Yeti mic. I've had it for four years and it's great. Why Nest over Express? Nest is an amazing framework because it just has so much structure compared to Express. It's more opinionated. I work on a project called RSock, and I'm really interested in writing a Nest.js microservice implement to work. Would have been great for this project. It's like RxJS over the wire. Yeah, yeah. And welcome to the stream, by the way, Vigs, Vigs, Vigs Codes. Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you here. It's my first time seeing you here, man. I hope you're doing well. We welcome everyone. We welcome every single brand new person to the stream. Welcome, everyone. You make similar Discord ones? Uh, What do you mean? How to join the Discord? Uh, just click on the link. Hey, well, back after. Yo, welcome back, random videos. Welcome back to the stream. Nest is more like the angular of nodes back in that is true it cause, yeah because ness is built on ness is uh, inspired by angular is it okay to focus on back-end engineering and devops rather than being full stack yeah of course like listen like you don't have to do full stack the thing is like you know uh if you only want to focus on one thing to get good at it focus on that first like i when i first started off i only mostly focused on backend and i didn't and then i got into front end like if like if you watch my previous streams from like two years ago you could you would see that i was really crap at front end like i was way better at back end and my front end skills were just so bad, you know, and it, it took me a while to get really good at it. You know, I mean, even right now, I still consider myself, you know, maybe like between junior and senior, I would say like I'm in the middle. There's still a lot for me to learn, you know, but it just takes some time, you know, and you don't have to worry. Like if you really want to get good at back end, then just get good at back end. If you really want to get good at front end, get good at front end. There's no stress, you know, like learn at your own pace. Unless if work is stressing you out, then that's a different story. Uh, okay, so we're going to dispatch this. And I think what should happen is we need to do this. So... Uh, let me do this. Set is editing. We're going to need to go into here, and we're going to, need to pass in the props. So set is editing. Yeah, uh, our code is a little bit messy right now, but don't worry, we'll fix that later. Uh, set state action. Okay, we'll pass that in there. Uh, and then let me just go over. I'll, I will refactor this, don't worry. Uh, message container. Set is editing. Pass over here. Okay, so now what we have to do is inside the edit message container, I think what we should do is once we, uh, we, should, we could just call dot then. And I can just do set is editing to false. And that should remove the input if there, if it throws an error we should also do the same thing too uh, like that and let's go ahead and test, test this out so let's refresh are you also using a mon repo i am not how old am i i am under 25 uh what is js used for i only use hmscs for three weeks javascript is used to manipulate uh elements in the dom and it's also used for creating functional features in the dom and the dom is basically the document object model which is what you're seeing right now this is basically a document in the browser and javascript allows you to uh you know add a lot of functionality like delete like certain elements from the from the document you can insert elements from the document you can do a bunch of stuff so let's do this let's enter okay did it actually update i don't know okay it did Perfect. So, hello, blah, blah, blah. And then if I do this, 
Okay. So it does update the state. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it wasn't... We needed to actually remove the input field. And what if I do this? If I update this, it will use the latest selected value, which is good. That is amazing. That is amazing. Perfect. It is working great. And of course, I cannot edit this. We'll have to add other additional options later. But, you know, it's it's working great. And that's great. We'll also add, like, a flag, too. Like, if the message has been edited, we'll add, like, a little edited uh, little icon over here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that later. Maybe not right now, but maybe later. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the edit feature is working great. Although our code is extremely, extremely messy, we'll have to refactor that some other time. Or maybe I'll refactor the code offline. It's not really a big deal. Uh, let me do this. Update state with edited message after edit message thunk fulfilled. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what's up with my VS code, but let me just push everything. Do I have a job? I do work right now. I do. I am currently working, yes. Uh, let's see. Alright, so, yeah, like, uh, also, if you guys are interested to learning more about the project, uh, just go over to the repository. It's on GitHub. You can just go over to my, my GitHub. The link is in the description. Um, go to repositories. Go over to here. And these are the two projects. You can just literally fork it or clone it, start it, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then you can just, like, play around with it, you know, try to get it to work. Um, yeah, do what you gotta do. Um... Yeah, like the code is in the description. If you want to visit the link, it's in the description. You're more than welcome to checking it out. What languages do you use aside from JavaScript and TypeScript? Uh, actively, I mostly just use TypeScript these days. But uh, I do use like Java sometimes, and like occasionally I will get interested into Python. But like, I mostly I, I mostly am like fully committed to Node.js and TypeScript. Any interest in Go and Rust? Uh, I definitely Rust. Wait, you're giving us permission to read it? Of course, like it's open source. I mean, listen, like. Uh, a lot of people always ask me, like, is the code available? And, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'll make it available. Let you guys play around with it. Do whatever you want with it. It's open source. And so you're more than welcome to do whatever you want with it. You can clone it. You can even take this whole code and literally deploy yourself. Like, I don't care. Like, do whatever you want with it. It's open source. Play around with it. Learn from it. I would say this, right? Definitely use it as a learning resource on top of these streams. Because these streams are really long, right? And if you get stuck, you at least have the resource to look at it and see what's going on. And even if you try to build your own implementation, you can always, and if you get stuck on certain things, maybe you might build something better, but if you're not, and you get stuck, you can look at what I did or look at what someone else did and then use that as like guidance, right? One way to get better as a developer is to look at other people's code because sometimes you might get roadblocked by what you're, by the way that you're thinking about a solution. And sometimes all you need to do is just look at how someone else implemented things and that would give you, that would unlock so much more for you. You know, for example, like a lot of people in the chat were recommending me a lot of different ways to handle certain things. And because of your guys' suggestions, it unlocked a lot of more things that I was capable of doing. That's just how it is. Yeah, Rust is great for text manipulation. I've 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 learned Rust, but I don't really use it actively. So I don't really consider myself a Rust developer. But I'm definitely interested in the in in, the, in Rust though. You know, I'm definitely interested. Okay, I'm gonna be right back real quick. I'm gonna go get some water. So I will be right back real quick. In the meantime, I'm just gonna mute my mic and I'll probably just like you know play like an hour or two. So I'll be right back real quick. Give me a second.
All right, I'm back. Just had to use the bathroom and just get some water. All right, what did I miss? Hey, do you have any tutorial for Discord OAuth using Nuxt.js? If not, then create one, please. I have never used Nuxt before, uh, but it's a view framework, right? Uh, what are you talking about? Literally every language can do text manipulation. Rust is like a lower level language I would consider because it's a lot more, it's built on top of C and it's just amazing. And it's thread safe. I think it's like more, it's, it's, it's it, I think, it, what is it called? Like thread safety? Something like that. I want to build an application which improves someone's work experience. Any suggestions? Well, I mean, what, what do you mean by work experience? Because like that could be really anything. Uh, like, do you have like anything in specific that you want to improve for someone? You mean like online coding tutorials? Notepad, the best IDE, true. Uh, lawyers, welcome to the stream. Nice to see you here. First time, probably your first time, right? Welcome to the stream, man. How are you doing? How are you doing? All right, so the last thing that we just did was we implemented the edit message, so that's good. And it's working great. I don't have any complaints with it so far. I like it. The only thing that we need to do is we just need to make it so that... We just need to make it so that uh, the user can see the message being edited. Because right now, if I were to edit the message, the other user won't see it. Only I can see it. See, if I refresh, only I can see it. So maybe we should make it so that the other user can see it. So how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, we need to use WebSockets, obviously. So what we'll do is right over here, when we return the response to the client, we'll fire a we'll fire an event. We'll do this dot event emitter dot emit message dot update or dot edit whatever you want to call it. it doesn't really matter and then you can just pass in the message as a parameter and it will have to handle this event right over here so we'll do that real quick on events message dot update uh maybe a way to help students in their work I don't like formatting in Word. If Notepad makes the UI according to language, then none will use text editors. Planner app. All right, so what we'll do is we'll do async handle message update message message and then we'll do this. Uh, so uh, we just want to fire an event to the other socket to the other user. I mean, we could also just fire it to the room as well. And we know which room to fire it to because we can just get the conversation uh let me see uh life of mo welcome to the stream life of mo welcome to the stream nice to see you here it's more thread safe because of its memory model for rust right yeah i have doubt if we make a module how can we add events to that like discord just has events like message create uh what do, what do you mean ragav like are you talking about like building your own framework or something or, or your own library what do you mean what socket framework are you using i am currently using socket io for the back and the front end so i'm using socket io server well i'm using the nest js's version of socket io which is just a wrapper around it and i'm using socket io client to connect to the socket io server okay so uh let's see i think what i'll do is this i'll pass in the user that was editing the message, so... Actually, no, I don't really need to do that, because what I could do is I could just get the author. So I could do this const author message. Okay. And we want to get the recipient. We want to get the other user. So we could do the same thing. Um, so what I'll do is this const recipient socket equals... So if author.id is equal to, well, let me do this also, conversation.creator recipient. 
So if recipient sock, so if author.id is equal to creator.id, so that means that the author, uh, that means the, the person who created the conversation is the person who is editing their own message. Um, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and return this dots. Uh, sessions get user socket and we'll pass in recipient dot id or this dot sessions that get user socket creator dot id and then what we'll do is we'll do the same exact thing here but except emit the on message update event did i misspell this recip oh i can't even spell recipient recipient and then uh what we'll do is we'll update we'll send we'll send the messages a payload please just put it anton developer please put what uh okay in stream chat starts provide since we can type uh upload as a uh what are you referring to in stream chat it's hard to provide since we can only type 200 characters i'll put in discord yeah yeah just put just put your question on discord uh, but Zen, whatever, what are you referring to? What is your font name? Uh, font for this? I'm not really sure, honestly. Uh, Consolas, Courier, New, Mono. I think it's Consolas, yeah. Yo, what's up, Jamal? How are you? Welcome to, well, yo, welcome to the stream, man. We, we were just talking about you earlier. We were just talking about you. Don't worry, we were, we were saying only good things about you. I was telling them how you put in a lot of effort into the server and how you set up everything. So I was basically giving you a shout out. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Only good things, only good things. But I hope you're doing well, man. Uh, Dethakos, welcome to the stream. Uh, what is... I'm a little bit confused. Uh, Zen whatever, what are you asking me to put? Because I don't really see your message. Unless your message got deleted by the bot. Oh, I see what's going on. Uh, hello. Dauda, Dauda, how are you? Welcome to the stream, Dauda. Where are you from, Dauda? That's a nice name. I've never seen that name before. Where are you from? Do you know Angular? I do know Angular. I, though it's been a, it's been, it's been a little bit, it's been a while since I've used it. I've been a little bit rusty. Can you make Minecraft plugins? Uh, I do have some videos on my channel where uh, I have videos on how to make Minecraft plugins. And actually, I have a few more videos that are going to be released this week. So tomorrow is the 29th. I have a Minecraft... Uh, can I show you this? Uh, I just want to make sure I could... I just want to make sure I'm not leaking anything by accident. Uh, so... For example... I have a Minecraft. I have, tomorrow, you're, there's going to be another plugin tutorial. And then the, the next day is going to be another plugin tutorial. And then the next day, there'll be another plugin tutorial. Uh, yeah, there's there's plenty of micro tutorials this week. You'll, 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 be, you'll be fine. Do I code in Java? I do. Yeah, same I've been using React next year for work. I'm planning to go back for Angular and we'll learn Go along the side. Minecraft. I am a new person trying to learn Java. What tips do you have for me? I would say just uh, follow a course. That is the best thing to do because the courses will usually go in depth. If you just read documentation, it's going to be really hard, especially if you're a beginner. But I always subscribe to the channel. No need to thank me. Thank you, Raghav. Well, I'm still going to thank you anyways. I thank everyone. But yeah, thank you for subscribing, man. I really appreciate that. Yo, Monko, what's up, my friend? How are you? Welcome back to the stream, man. We got a lot of members online today. New and reoccurring. That's great to see. Uh... Senegal, nice. Well, nice to have you all the way from Senegal. Thank you for subscribing, Zen, whatever. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Make sure you guys join the Discord server, too. If you guys are not in the Discord server, make sure you do join the Discord. It is, we are active and we are growing. Lots of people in the server there right now. Make sure you join. In general, OOP is complicated if done badly, not the Java language. You know, a lot of people don't like OOP. I, I can see why, though, because it kind of makes a little bit thing, a, things a little bit more complicated, but it depends on the type of application and the program that you're writing, too. Like, you don't have to force OOP for everything. But whenever it's necessary, it is... Whenever it's necessary, it just becomes amazing to handle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to emit this event. Uh, and then, yeah, did you hear that Heroku stopped their future? 
You know, someone actually commented on my channel video and they said that. I don't know if it was you, but I, I do remember someone said that on my video. Was it you? Was it your Jeet? I love OOP. I love it too. I love object oriented programming. I love. I absolutely love object. I, I mean, I, I kind of like you know grew up with object oriented programming when I was like learning code. They're trying to find an alternative though. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Heroku is amazing service for free. No, I didn't comment. That. Maybe someone else. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'm going to take my first Java class. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, man. Definitely. I'm. I'm really interested to see how it works out for you. I've never heard of people saying I love OOP. I absolutely love object-oriented programming. It's been six hours. Yes, yes, it has been. I have to go to watch soccer, match with my friends, keep doing well. And all right, Ibrahim, I hope to see you later tomorrow, man, or later this week. Enjoy the rest of your night or day or wherever you are, man. Take it easy. Is Java easy to learn? I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's a little bit different than learning Python, for example. How long have you been learning programming? I started learning back in 2016, so it's been like six years. Uh, when are you going to stream with Facecam? Should I stream with Facecam? Should I really stream with Facecam? Let's make a poll. Should I stream with Facecam? Yes, no. But it is a big news. A lot of people are using Heroku free tier educator, students, junior devs, etc. This is going to affect a lot of people. Yeah, I bet. When are you going to stream with Facecam? Ooh, P seems organized, but I think in some cases it is not necessary. I agree. I agree. People who think OOP is dumb have never been making a game before. The thing is, like, like with JavaScript, people need to understand that JavaScript was never meant to be, like, uh, was never meant to really, like, be, like, you know, like a programming language like Java. JavaScript is more of, like, a scripting language. You just open up a file, you script everything together, and you run it, and then it just does something. With Java, it requires more, like, a proper setup, like a proper, like, a class, you have a main method, all that kind of stuff, you know. Facecam will be distracting. Yeah, I don't want you guys to see my beautiful face. I don't want I don't want to distract you guys, man. Like I'm already distracting you all with like talking and coding. I don't want to add another thing to your distraction. Face cam or hand cam? You know, actually two years ago I did I did do like a keyboard cam before. But it was really like weird. I think maybe OOP will introduce a lot of new concepts that maybe beginners confuse and puke. It, uh, you know, I would say that OOP is probably one of the hardest things that people learn in Java. Um, but yeah. It will be distracting for you, not us. Why would it be distracting for me? I wouldn't really I don't really mind. The members only chat is dead for me. It says I'm the first to type something. Yeah, not a lot of people are actually uh, familiar with that, you know. I actually, because it's because I haven't really, because I, I kind of just made it. I kind of just made the channel and I didn't really announce anything, but I'm going to make an announcement later. Facecam is really good for good interaction for all. I agree. Although I think that the only reason why I would not want to do Facecam is because like I feel like the Facecam would block like the screen and people would not be able to see certain things. Uh, and then it would be really small too, and then you really can't really see it. So it might be complicated, but maybe someday. I have done a face cam stream before. It's not that I've never done it. I've done it before, but like two years ago. I mean, I did do a face cam stream one time. Uh, I did do a face cam stream one time when I was playing Red Dead Redemption, but that was like two months ago, you know. Let me see. Uh, okay, so what we need to do is let's go to the front end code, and we need to listen to... Uh, the on message update event. Are you gonna build this chat? Are you gonna build this chat app into an exe? Probably not. Though I do want to actually get into Flutter, and I do really want to build a Flutter mobile version of it. C Sharp is trying to bring the new gen devs to their code base by introducing a lot of Node Express style coding styles via new minimal APIs. You can write APIs in C Sharp.net, not just like Expressway. Interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, top right cam overlay is good, I guess. True. Are you wanting this to turn into a real Discord server? Not really. I mean, I just really, I just really wanted to make it for fun. Like, I really just was interested in building a chat app because I've never done it before, and I feel like it would have been a good challenge. And, you know, I, I will say that I've learned a lot. Of, I've, I've learned a lot, you know, like, and this project is going to be on GitHub for everyone to use as a reference. Like, and in a sense, it's like, it's not just only me. Like, I'm sure that people who have watched, I mean, I at least hope people who have been watching for the past seven days have learned something new. Like, it's not just me. Like, you know, it's, it's not just me here. It's like everyone else here that's also learning new stuff, too. If you need help with Flutter, let me know. Definitely, man, definitely. I'm a little bit rusty. You should add a license. Uh, why should I add a license? I'm actually confused about that because I never really understood licenses, to be honest. I'm, I'm really naive about those things. But uh, inform me about that. Can you suggest me some cool products to make? Uh, let's see. What are you? Uh, why don't you make an app where you can... 
uh, fetch stock, stock or crypto prices, like a personal dashboard, and then basically like fetch every 30 seconds and update it. Maybe something like that. I mean, I don't know. Like, it depends on your interest because it's hard for me to, uh, it's hard for me to like suggest ideas when I don't really know what you're interested in. We can't do anything with no license. Oh, really? Okay, okay. LOL, you are a legend. What makes me a legend, Muhammad? And welcome to the stream, by the way, Muhammad. Did the chat channels get done, though? Yes, 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 yes. I've been trying to build a chat app with Flutter X Firebase. Too nice, too was nice, but I didn't finish it. At a MIT. I see, I see. Okay, so I will, I will add a license. Okay, I'll fix that. I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Maybe like offline, I'll do that. I'll do that offline. I'm interested in web scraping and automation. Okay, so maybe you can like look up like a website that does not support an API, and you can try web scraping it. And then like add maybe like you can like schedule tasks in the background too. Like maybe you can use Node Scheduler to schedule certain events happening during a certain time of day. Like maybe for example, every hour during the day, you want to send a message to your friend, like using like a like using some kind of API. Are you also open to PRs from us? Uh, at the moment, not right now because I'm still building everything. But like once we have like an established base, yes, absolutely. Add some channel perks. Remember. The thing is, those like I don't know, like like I don't know, like I could like listen. The thing is, I could stream this like forever, but like I also want to move on to a new project too, because I I'm not really like interested in like making this like a commercial app. I mean, I could, but like you know, like I probably would not want to do it myself, you know. But like that's why it's just like you know, it's just it's an open source project, so everyone can like you know take a look at it. I, hey, Anson, why does your Nest constructor look like uh, this? Inject services auth private auth service. In my constructor, I have pri okay. So what I did was I used token injection, and you don't have to do with that because you'll still be using dependency injection regardless. But I just decided to use token injection because I wanted to set a custom name for my service. If you don't do that, it'll just use the class name for it. I think. Uh, by the way, I made a really one-sided deal with my mom to be back online. What happened? What did you do? Did you did, did you uh what, what what did you do? Well, welcome back. By the way. Welcome back. What sites do you get inspiration for building a chat? I mean, it wasn't really any websites. Like, I've just always never built a web application, like a web chat before, and I've I've just always been uh I've just always been interested in it. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let me just go ahead and build it. You know, I've played around with WebSockets before. I've I've played around with it in Postman and in, in Code before, and Nest.js is, has an amazing library for it. Why not? Why not? Do JS sucks? Use Python. What about JavaScript makes it suck? I'm interested to hear your perspective on that. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you. Maybe it does suck, but I would like to hear uh, what make what you make what makes you think it sucks. Your code is by default all rights reserved unless you add an open source permission. Okay, gotcha. Archive every language has uh, 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 uses. So it depends. Python is the king of sucking. However, JS is still sucking. Now the best language to learn is assembly. Learn x86 or MIPS. That's the best language to learn. If you really want to have really extremely fast code at the operating system level, learn x86 or MIPS or any assembly language. Or you know what? You should write your own language and then and then write a language built on top of that assembly language and then do it again. I think that would be fun. Add a public domain equivalent license LMAO. Sacrifice my screen time, bet some and website filtering, Discord, Twitter. Wow, the amount of dedication you have another dead channel. What what is your name by the way? Like, uh, cause I, I unless you want me to just call you another dead channel. Uh, do you think Laravel is a good option for developing web apps? Uh, I think Laravel is a very popular framework. A lot of people still use Laravel. A lot of companies still use Laravel too. PHP is still actually like. It's still actually widely used because a lot of the legacy applications are still maintaining it though you probably won't really be able to work on new apps though because companies really only hire java and php for maintaining their legacy apps because nowadays a lot of companies are really using like newer frameworks like django uh flask express nest.js things like that i mean spring boot is still widely used because it has great security features you need to learn assembly when using cheat engine though an application that can be written in javascript eventually be written in javascript Except the fun part. Uh, Rui Jose, welcome to the stream. How are you? Programming language. Gr grape programming language. I have program in MIPS more consistent than JS, obviously. Use your own language. Although don't miss all the language. Laravel is what makes PHP a bearable. Yeah, I think so too. Laravel is pretty nice. I've seen it before. It's pretty nice. 
That's pretty nice. Uh, okay, so let me go into... Uh, where do we want to go? I guess we'll do it inside here. Suck it on. And then what is the name of the event? The name of the event is on message update. Uh, thoughts on carbon? You know, I saw a video made by Brad Traversy. I was actually thinking about looking into it. But I'm probably not going to get into it right now. I'll probably get into maybe Remix and more Next.js stuff later. Do you like coding on Mac or Windows? And what's the difference? You know, honestly, I like coding on Mac uh, because it's just... I, I really like the, I really like iTerm 2 on Mac. It's really beautiful. But honestly, I use, I've always been a Windows guy. I use Windows for everything. And it's just really more convenient for me. And I really don't like MacBooks because... It's just really annoying because I, I cannot hook up everything that I need to unless without buying like an adapter. So it's really annoying. And by the way, isn't strict equality operator is triple equals an equality operator? Yes. Do you have a laptop or a desktop setup? So right now I have a desktop setup. I have a laptop set up uh, with for my work laptop that's right next to me, and then I, in my living room I have uh, I have a two I have a two monitor setup that I was intentionally going to use for like my streaming setup for Mac, but I I haven't really like been, really been uh, worrying about that much honestly. Brad is like one of the tech YouTube gods. Hello, he he has been doing amazing content. Brad Brad is a really nice guy. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I actually did a video. I actually did two videos on Brad Travis's channel two years ago. I don't, I don't know if you guys uh, know about that. Uh, is this stream going to be uploaded anywhere? Yes, the stream will all the stream will be on the channel as soon as it ends. It'll be on the channel. Uh, setup tour. Yeah, maybe some other day. YouTube probably. Oh, nice. Seen both. Nice, nice. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's go ahead. We need to receive the message, and let's just see if we can receive the event. Let's save and let's go into an incognito window and let's see if it works. So what I'll do is I'll open up the browser tools. Let's refresh. Let's go over here. Let's log in to gmail.com. One, two, three, again. And for some reason, I need to refresh the page, but it's fine. Here we go. So our app is working. All right, so let's try this. So. I'm going to go ahead and open up the console tools over here. And what we need to do is I need to edit this message and it should appear as edited on the screen. Oh, actually, no, we need to make sure that the other client is receiving the event. So let's edit this. Uh, so it says update a message, but it doesn't say uh, what's going on. Did an error happen? Uh, cannot read properties of undefined. OK, I think we need to get the relation on the back end. Turn on autosave. I actually do have autosave. I work in the game industry and a lot of backend platform code is written in Java and Kotlin with Spring. Really? A, the context menu works. Yes, it does indeed. Uh, yo, what's up? Hi, Sony. How are you? Welcome back to the stream. Uh, the get repository from type RM package seems deprecated. Is there an alternative? Uh, yeah, you actually need to use uh, the app data source. You have to create an app data source and then you have to... Uh, call get repository from app data source. Okay, so why are okay? Yeah, so the backend is having an issue. Let's find out what's going on. I think it's because the creator and recipient is null, and that's fine because I think what we I think what happened was when we uh, edited the message when we fetched it, we only got uh, let's see conversation author. Hopefully this will work. And let me also just go ahead and console log the payload. Started streaming six hours ago. I started streaming. What time did I start streaming, guys? I think I started streaming at 3.30 a.m. Yeah, I started streaming at 3.30 a.m. How long did it take you to learn coding in general? Uh, so, I mean, to learn coding took me, like, maybe, like, a semester of college. 
uh, which was the introductory class. But to actually build something, it took me like quite some time. I'd say maybe like it wasn't until like two years later was when I actually first built my first project, which was a Discord bot. I think it became engine you put your mind to it. True, true. So, yeah, for games, I think C Sharp and C are the most popular. Like, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Really, hopefully, this works. Okay, so hopefully, the relations works. So let's say, hey. Okay, so we're, we are receiving, as you can see, we are receiving over here. Although it didn't update, but that's fine. We'll have to uh, configure that in just a second. So what we'll do is we'll go over to here and uh, first let's just go ahead and do socket off. Is there a way to, to unsubscribe from every single off any? Uh, I'll just do this for now on message update. Discord bots are way are a good way to get into programming. Too bad the new Discord API update is so confusing. I will admit that the new Discord API, I'm not really a fan of it, especially with slash commands. I really do miss the old school commands, to be honest with you. You know, the other day I was actually confused because I remember Discord Pi was actually discontinued, but then I saw Danny was actually still uh like contributing to it. So and I, and I remember reading his whole Discord Pi like announcement where he was gonna step down as the main contributor. And then I reread everything and I actually I kind of understand why he decided to just stop working on it because you know like uh, they felt like you know with the new slash commands it kind of just like ruined the, a lot of the progs the library devs made so it kind of just like sucks but it's fine though he's he's uh, he's he's start, he, he's been working on it again which is great which means I'm gonna have to get a chance to look into Discord Pi again. Uh, are you looking into implementing a voice chat feature? If you are, what will you use? I actually was considering that. But I was thinking about using the Twilio API because Twilio has a voice chat. I think they have video chat feature implemented. I think. I'm not sure. Uh, socket off any. Is that what it does? It, it removes every single, it removes every single event. Is that what it does? Uh, Ashikul Islam Ayan. Did you say something that got deleted? Let me see. Let me look at chat real quick. Uh, I don't think you wrote anything. Let me in the poll too. Uh, also, Anson, have you checked out Free Water? What is Free Water? I love how you interact with chat. Earn a new subscriber. Thank you, Davis, and welcome to the stream, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I try my best to interact with the chat because it'd be boring if like you get like you know you guys just watching and you guys are not talking it's just like it's boring you know like you got to interact with the chat well, like come on that's why i'm a channel member the callback expects a function which will return a boolean to delete the listener or not so it'll remove every single one what if i did remove all listeners i think well, I mean, do we want to remove all listeners or do we just want to call off? Remove all listeners. Yeah, I think we just do remove all listeners, I think. Because this one removes a specific one. And then this one removes all of them. Let me try. Let me come with this out. Off is an alias to... Oh, okay, okay. The callback expects a function. Okay. So let's try that. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's refresh. Okay. Uh, seems like that didn't work because you can see that the events are happening twice. Uh, yeah, that didn't... I don't think that seems to have worked. Because if I refresh, right, you can see that the events are not going to there you go and if I now if I do this if I do edit it's only gonna receive a once so I think that did not work but what, what let me try off any let me try what you said comic dev let's see what happens let's refresh okay it's still logging the event twice which is not good yeah, that's not good. That's that's kind of that's kind of whack. 
where are your tests? We have not actually written any tests yet because we've just been mostly building a prototype from the ground up. Uh, I'll probably write the test at the very end, probably maybe like in a couple more days because I'm not really done with everything yet. Because I know for a fact that if we write the test now, we're going to have to rewrite them later because we just are going to be in, we're just end up changing so much stuff. So that's why I haven't bothered writing unit tests yet. But there are some things that we can actually start unit testing now, like there's some controllers that we can actually unit test. But we're going to still need to implement stuff like pagination in the end, so... It doesn't really make sense to test now, unless if you're doing test-driven development, but that's not what we're doing. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of really annoying that I cannot just listen to all of them. But I guess we'll just leave it like this for now. I mean, I think what I'll do is I'll probably just store all these events in an array. I think I'll probably just do that later. I'll probably store all these in an array and then just like iterate through it and just call socket off on all of them. Because this is obviously going to be really bad in the end anyways, but uh, let's just continue. So when I receive the message, what I want to do is I want to update the state. So I'll just dispatch an event uh, to the store to update it. Or to, yeah, to, So what we'll do is we'll go into store, message slice. And what we want to do is we want to basically uh, do this. Uh, edit message. So we have edit message thunk. Okay. I never personally write tests, only when the team forces me. Types can handle most of the lake shootings. Well, you're right now searching for a bug, so it's best to start testing on a big grain level now. I'm not really searching for a bug. We, I mean, we, we actually don't even have a bug right now. The issue was that we were trying to remove the listener and it wasn't remo It was performing a side effect issue. So it's not really an issue with a bug. Wasn't Postman his way of testing? Well, I mean, there's so there's different types of tests. Like there's unit tests, there's end-to-end -end tests. There's UAT, which is user acceptance testing. Uh, there's like the basic level of testing, which is when you look at the code and when you see the linting issue, right? But in general, you want to write unit tests and end-to-end -end tests and integration tests because... Those are basically automated tests that will test your application for you. And if something changes, it can tell you what goes on. Like for example, if you change something and the test fails, that means something went wrong. You, The feature that you implemented had some kind of side effect that broke an existing feature. And you gotta ask yourself, is this supposed to happen or is it not supposed to happen? If it's supposed to happen, that means the feature that you wrote needs to be changed. If it is not supposed to happen, that means the feature that you, wait, let me rephrase that. If it is supposed to happen, that means the old feature needs to be changed. If it's supposed to happen, then that means that uh, the if it's not supposed to happen, that means the new feature that you wrote is something's wrong with it. But right now, like uh, there's a lot of things that we're gonna have to change later on. So I don't really see a point in writing the test only for us to refactor everything, because we are going to need to refactor so much later on. So it's just better if we just refactor and then write the test later, because we already have a simple prototype already, and uh, everything is working fine but of course you know you can't you can't ever be sure and i would never ship an application without testing it and i'm talking about unit test and end to end not just like you know like you know writing stuff in the the console writing stuff in the input like actually like, you know testing it uh let me see so what i'll do is i think what i'll do here is i will the, i think the action will be a payload action of the new message so it'll just be message type uh, yeah, that, but that's part of development, right? MVP test update feature based on customer user repeat. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you're working for an industry, like obviously they have their own rules and regulations on how they want to do things. Like when I was working for when I was working as software engineer, we had to write the test first and then implement the feature. And I mean, I didn't have a problem with it, but a lot of people actually did. But I never, I never personally had a problem with writing the test first and then you know writing the code because you're basically writing. Because later on, what you're doing is you're going to end up writing the code based on the test anyway, so it's fine. But you know, I, I think test driven development has its good has its good uh has its good features too. Uh, all right, Moss, take it easy. Nice seeing you here again, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for chatting with everyone. Take it easy. Okay, so let's just go over here. Do sir. Yeah, I mean, even when you go into, I mean, testing is actually really important to learn because uh, the reason why is because even when you do a coding interview, a lot of companies will actually ask you to write tests or not write tests, but like sometimes they will, but sometimes they'll want you to have all the tests passed. And it's also important to see how tests are written. And honestly, the best resource for unit testing, I would recommend Ken C. Dodd's testing JavaScript course. I actually bought it some time ago and I actually really liked it a lot. So I can 100% vouch for his course. 
it might be a little bit out of your budget, but in my opinion, I think it's worth it. There are probably going to be so many edge cases to do for apps. Yes. Free wiring, free water is hiring for front developers, really. Oh, what did, what did they do? What did they do? Uh, okay, so let me export this edit message. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and use dispatch. And here's what we'll do. We'll do dispatch, edit message. And we'll pass in message like that. Okay, so whenever we receive the socket, whenever we receive the uh, socket event, it'll go ahead and dispatch the uh, the it'll dispatch this edit message, and it should log edit message reducer. The best source about TDD remains the original one. That is Kent, C Kent Beck's TDD book. Uh, I've never heard about that actually. The only resources that I've heard of that were good for testing, I think I think it was Martin. I think his name is Martin Fowler. I think. But I think he was mostly focused on like like Java and like testing with Java, I think. But it's still pretty good though. Like he's a he had like a lot of really good uh, resources about that. Uh, I've never heard of uh, Kent Beck. Let me actually look that up real quick. Kent Beck's TDD. I actually really like TDD, but sometimes it can be a really it can be a little bit uh, a little bit annoying sometimes. But I don't I don't hate it though. I'm not a fan of that course testing JS. Don't get me wrong; it's great for absolute beginners. But once you have four months of testing, it's not worth it. Oh, I, well, did you did you buy Epic React too? I'm actually I actually bought Epic React actually, though I haven't actually really used much of it because I've just been really busy. But I, I'm actually in the Epic React server, and uh, I'm actually yeah in that server. I'm actually in that server. I think I think. Am I? Let me see. Or did I leave it? Yeah, I'm still on that server. I bought it, but like I got up to the second part where they talk about React hooks. And I didn't really like, I didn't really like finish it because I was just like, I just, that was when I kind of just like took a break from coding. Uh, but Epic React is really nice. They are making a hundred percent free supermarket. The first product is more medicine and more. Oh, okay. So they're a new startup. Okay. Uh, Ashwin, welcome to the stream. How are you? Anton, do you have any experience with MongoDB? I do. I do. And welcome to the stream, Logan Tucker. I think I've seen your name before. You're, you're, you are, uh, you are, it seems really familiar. I've been busy as well. Uh, do we agree, Peach Bitter? Kent Beck is the person creating TD. So if you like TD, I cannot know. I mean, listen, I like the concept of it, but that doesn't mean I need to know who created it because I learned TD through my work, but they never mentioned anything about the author or the creator of Kent Beck. It's just like you can write a program. You can write like a programming. Like, for example, like a lot of people don't even know who the creator of JavaScript is and they claim that they like JavaScript, you know? So that doesn't really make any sense. PHP greater than Phoenix. Why is there Epic React when there's the official docs? Well, I mean, Epic React is more catered towards like kind of like gearing you from being a beginner to like a more advanced React developer. Because he really, because Kenzie Dots goes really in depth on like how that works, you know? And what I meant, and to clarify, what I meant was like, I like the concept of TTD, but that doesn't mean that I've been actively practicing it for the past uh, couple months. Because I haven't done TTD since I've left uh, my previous company when I worked as a software engineer there. But, uh, yeah, like, you know, I never really paid much attention to who created what, you know, because there's just, you know, lots of things that are created and, you know, to worry about who created what is just, like, not really my priority right now. That comparison doesn't really make sense. Bet, bet, Preach, man, I love the good energy. Do you have any videos or content on how to set up a Discord bot with the database? Uh, I do, actually, though uh, it's actually pretty outdated, though I might make, like, a new, I might, like, make, like, a new course later. Oh uh, yo, welcome back, Bacon. How are you, how's it going? Um, but yeah, the the last time I made a video with MongoDB and Discord was probably back in 2021 with Discord JS version 12. And now that they've created, wait, is are we on version 14 or version 13? Wait, wait, I don't even know what version we're on to be honest with you. Is it version 13? It's version 13, right? No, it's version 14. Are, oh wait, what version? I honestly I don't even know, cause it's like you know, like the version twelve literally came out in twenty twenty, and then version thirteen came out in twenty twenty one, and then they released version twenty. They they, they released version fourteen. So I was like, damn, another version. So yeah, I guess I gotta make a new updated. I guess I'll make a new updated series later. But uh, yeah, uh, let me just go ahead and test it out real quick. So let's go over here and let's go over here. Let's refresh, refresh. Definitely looking forward to any new content for connecting DJs to any kind of database or Google Sheets. Uh, so let's do this. Let's edit this message. Uh, I can see the edit message reducer. Okay, great. So now all we got to do 
is just update the state so that's a two-step process we first it's the same thing that we did with the thunk so all we got to do is really just this copy this copy that so all we have to do is just get the action so action dot payload is uh do this data wait what did i do here okay so we got to go ahead and do this uh, so what we need to do is we need to get the conversation ID. So message dot conversation dot ID. So we have to find the conversation message in the state. If it's not there, return. Uh, then we have to find the correct message. So we have to compare it to message dot ID like that. And then if it's found, we'll go ahead and update. Okay, so this will update it for the other user. So watch this. So let's refresh. Let's refresh. Why is there such an opposition to add fontes going back to the source and programming culture? It creates room for scams. We have never really had something new. Uh, in programming culture, it creates room for scams. We have not really had something new in programming. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Why is there such an opposition to add fontes going back to the source? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd be interested to know myself too, but... Uh... I don't like. I guess I don't really know too much about TDD. I just like the concept and the thought process of it. Uh, but in practice, though, I have only as much experience as what I've done at my old job. But uh, if like a new job were to have me do TDD, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But I personally wouldn't do it on my own, if that makes sense. Uh, Phoenix is a framework, and it's not even JSON. It's a lecture. Also, who say faux trash PHP trash? I say. When someone asks for the creators, don't say the full name. How are you not getting tired of overwhelmed? I don't know. We're just going to keep going. We're just going to keep going. I'll probably get off maybe in like 30 minutes though. Because I definitely do have to go do some stuff. I would love to stay here for longer, but I definitely can't. But I definitely, uh, I'll, I'll probably stream, I'll definitely stream tomorrow again though. But I just want to make sure that this works first. So let's go ahead and edit this message. Hello. Uh, and that deleted the message for some reason. Uh, wait, I copied the wrong code. Hold on. This is why you don't copy and paste code. Uh, because I copied, I think, this. I should have copied this. But let me just fix that real quick. This is why you don't copy code. Okay, anyways. So, uh, what we need to do is we just need to find the message. And all we have to do is just do conversation message. Conversation message. Wait. Yeah. There we go, that should fix that. So we deleted it instead of actually updating it. So watch this. So, hey. And you can see that it receives the update over there. Uh, now here's another problem, right? If the message is updated, uh, we also need to update this part over here because you can see that if I refresh, only then it'll update because it updates on the database too. But um, like you can see that. So I think what we need to do is we also need to update the conversation as well. Uh, and that shouldn't be hard. Yeah, I think we'll have to. We'll, we'll do that later. We'll do it later. Uh, Anton, do you go outside and get active ever? Of course I do. Yeah, like usually I go to the gym and I go for a run. I'll go out, drive my car, drive around the city. I don't just stay home all day. I mean, like this is only like what, like only six hours of the. You gotta understand, like my day is about seventeen hours long. So this is only. Uh, this is only like what, like maybe six hours out of the. So I have I have eleven hours to the rest of my day. I would say maybe like yeah, I have eleven hours to the rest of my day, and so this is only like a portion of my day, you know. So like yeah, throughout my day I do other stuff too. Like I go out, I drive around, go get some coffee, some tea, buy groceries, you know, hang out some. Like yesterday, like I was helping one of my neighbors with their computer, you know, just like you know, yeah, of course I go out. It seems like nobody cares about the professional literature. The old small talk group was the last group which developed new ideas. And after that, it was all old ideas and new clothes. You know, I, I, I do agree with you because, like, in two, I do agree with you to some extent because, like, nowadays, everyone's just making new React frameworks every single day. And it's kind of, like, really, like, I don't want to say it's annoying, but it's just, like, really, like, you know, like, like, just, like, why? You know, like, I understand the purpose behind it, but it's just, like, you know, like, it's just, like, Everyone's just like recycling stuff over and over again. They're making new frameworks all the time. But I guess that's just a part of it. But we haven't really seen something new because it's just like you ask yourself, what's the difference between Remix and Next.js? 
And I guarantee you, like, the the, the difference is probably, v I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to say anything, but, like, because I've never used Remix before. But, like, the general concept is, like, probably really similar, you know? Most dev I know go to the gym every day and go out with friends and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's how you have to you have to balance you have to learn how to balance a life a lifestyle. Like you know you can't just code all day. Like this is only six hours of my day. After this I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna get some sunlight. I'm gonna go enjoy. I mean I was actually outside earlier I think or was I? I can't remember. No, that was last night. A lot of people apply job. I was like apply react job. Deno bun. What's next? Exactly. We don't know. I mean bun is fine because bun is actually like a frame is 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 a, is a, is a runtime for like you know JavaScript and TypeScript. But Deno is like something, I guess, is also similar too. But it's just like, you know, it really makes you wonder, like, you know, what's going to happen to all of these things? Uh, Anton the Velvet, who's someone you died for? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't think I can answer that. Not right now, at least. So the, the person that I would die for would, of course, be the person that I would care the most in my life. Do you like space? What's space? Anson, Bun got 7 mil funding. It might be the next note, actually. Yeah, I, I've seen, like, a lot about Bun. Like, it's, it's been popping off a lot. More than Deno, from what I've seen. Most dev I know go to jail. Oh, Deno more like Dino. Where are your comments? What do you mean by comments? Bun seems promising, though, even with all the drama around it. As in Mars and Venus. Oh, you mean, like, astrology, right? Um, I mean, honestly, like, I think it's interesting, but I'm not really, like, that invested into it, you know? I think it's cool. Like don't be, don't get me wrong. I think it's cool, but uh, I I think what's I think what's fascinating is how we're only one planet in like you know our solar system, and in our solar system there's like a huge galaxy of other galaxies. Like there's just like so many galaxies out there that we don't even know. Like we might not even be the only species that exists that has civilization. Like who knows? Like who knows? It's it's crazy when you think about it. It's crazy. Your favorite tech YouTuber? You are one of mine right now. My favorite tech YouTuber, I would say, uh, I absolutely love Fireship. His videos are great. Uh, I'll always have a soft spot for Brad Traversy because I learned a lot from his videos, and I respect him a lot as a as a person, as a YouTuber, uh, as a developer, everything. Um, who else? Who else? I absolutely have a huge respect for Kenzie Dodds. I think he's a really nice person. He is very knowledgeable. Um, I've spoken to him on like his discord a couple times. He's a really nice guy and I bought his course for testing JavaScript and Epic React and I absolutely loved it. And I would, I would advocate for anyone who is interested in learning more about testing and React. Uh, I would say those are my three right now that I can think of. Uh, but I, but I appreciate it Vi Vibov that you say that I'm your favorite tech YouTuber. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm seeing a person coding without is a in a Reddit. It's crazy someone coded and calculated the first spaceship and knowing the tech back then wasn't all that. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Also did not mean to say LOL scriptman LOL code. I love basic though. Uh, let's see. So let me just go back to this. So let me just refresh. And if I go ahead and edit my message. So if I delete this message, that's fine. If I edit this message. It edits. If I edit this message. Perfect. Like I absolutely loved. What do you guys think? Like, do you guys think that uh, we've made a great, we've made great progress? Like, we have a lot of these small stuff uh, going really well, which is great. Are you gonna make? Are you still gonna make Discord JS for what exactly? You know what I should do? You know, it'd be funny if I made this chat app and then I made like and then I made an API that you can make chatbots for, like Discord, and then I made a library for that. That would be actually really funny, but that would keep me occupied with work for like who knows how long. Uh, yeah, it is good progress. Great. How did you do the delete on the server? Because I remember yesterday you didn't have the function laid down. Uh, so what I did was I basically had to reassign the, uh, I had to reassign the last message sent, uh, to the second to last message. And then I, then I just did a delete on the message. And, uh, yeah, like that was what I did. I mean, the code is also in the description too. But basically, like, we had to basically do a lot of checks. I had to query uh, all, I had to query, like, the, the last five messages so I could get the second to last message because you can't really delete uh, the message if it's the last message because the conversation has a relation to the messages table, the last message sent field. 
right? And it has a one-to-one -one relationship. So you can't just delete that uh, message because it has that constraint. So what we had to do was we had to reassign the last message sent to a to the second to last message if the last message sent was being deleted. Hopefully that makes sense though. How does it work with both clients? Uh, what, do, what do you mean by that? Are you going to deploy the chat app? Uh, maybe later, once we're like done with like a lot of stuff, we'll probably do it. You should do your backends in Spring Boot. I'll, I'll think about it. Like I actually really like Spring Boot a lot, but I have never really had a chance to build a full project with Spring Boot. It would be cool to build it with Spring Boot. Would you guys be interested in? I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, are you guys really interested in the tech that I'm using or like just the stream in general? Do people use zero and ones to build programming languages? I mean, programming languages to make coding easier. Uh, I mean, I think people don't really use zero and ones these days. I think they really just mostly use like, like, like hexadecimal values. I think, I think so. I'm not sure. I would love to see something in Spring Boot. He said that he would deploy not only like Java in general for use for operating system when it's done. Yeah, but we got a good feature working on. Obviously, there's a lot of other touch-ups that we have to apply onto here. But what would what would be really cool is if we use the Twilio API. Um, I think that would be really cool. But I don't know. I'd, I'd, that's something that I'll have to figure out offline, though. But uh, yeah, yeah, we've made a lot of progress, everyone. A lot of progress. Uh, let's see. Made a lot of progress. Let me just uh commit my changes to GitHub real quick. Before I uh, do anything else, damn, we got a lot of like the entire stream, the entire chat was just super active. Like, like it's just like consistently active all the time. That's just amazing. Like that's just awesome. Do you work? Uh, yes, I do work. I work full time right now. Uh, it's kind of make me want to dead. Well, what what what's wrong, Bacon XD? The what's wrong, Bacon XD? As for the leave for him from Nest to Spring would be okay. Seems like they are quite similar. I've never done Nesto. Will these vods get clipped down? Uh, probably not, because uh, I just don't have the time for that. But like, uh, I mean, honestly, like I can put, I can try to put like time stamps, honestly. But I don't think I'll clip them down though. I mean, I mean, honestly, I think right now anyone can clip it, right? I think anyone can clip it right now. I don't know. I don't think I'll clip them though, because they're just really long. Uh, let me push this real quick. But yeah, I mean, they're always going to be there. You can always like, you know, watch at your own pace. No rush. I do feel bad though, because a lot of the times we are actually just chatting, but you know, it's fine. Like, you know, got to have some fun a little bit, you know, that's the whole point of streaming. Like, you know, streaming is not just about showing, I mean, unless if you're like a really popular person, that's a different story. But like, you know, of course, like, you know, if you're just like a smaller streamer, you got to interact with your chat, you know, you got to talk to the people. You can't just ignore them, right? Because if you ignore them, they're not going to ever come back to your stream and talk to you. They're not going to support you. They're not going to care about you. They're just going to move on to another streamer that will talk to them, you know? So that's why I do my best to try to read every single message. Not because, I mean, you know, I only, I only do it because I actually genuinely want to. I don't do it because I'm forcing myself to. I actually genuinely want to chat with people in the chat, you know? But, um, yeah, so as much as I don't want to end the stream right now, uh, I think I'm going to get off because I've been streaming for almost seven hours already. Um, and we've made so much progress in this stream. Uh, we gained, I think, how many subs did we gain? We gained so many subs today. Let me see how many subs that we gained. We gained about 500 subs. I think we broke a new record. We, we gained 500 subs today, I think 500 subs. And that was, that was all you guys. That was not me. That was all you guys. So uh, you know, I really appreciate you all for subscribing and, you know, stopping by the chat and talking and, you know, just having fun and just, you know, suggesting your ideas and giving me your suggestions. You know, I really appreciate that a lot. Uh, but don't worry though, I'm going to get off right now, but don't worry. We'll stream tomorrow at 2 AM, uh, Pacific standard time. So if you live in the East coast, that's 5 AM. If you live in the UK, that's about uh, 10 a.m., right? So just, you know, convert the time zone. P it's, it's 2 a.m. PST. PST. So I'll stream at that time. If I don't, I'll stream at 3 a.m. Like, you know, I'll, I'll be streaming tomorrow, though, 100%. Uh, but yeah, you know, like I said, thank you all for chatting with me. Thank you all for uh, joining the Discord server. Thank you for James, random videos. Uh, and... Let me, I don't, I want to make sure I get all of my people read. Thank you to James. Thank you to Plagzy. Thank you to, hopefully I'm not missing anyone. 
Uh, let me see. I think two people joined today. Yeah, so thank you to James. Thank you to Plagzy for becoming a member today. I really appreciate that a lot. It really means the world to me. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you to all who subscribed and followed my Twitch. Thanks for all for joining the Discord. Um, yeah, I hope to see you all tomorrow on the stream. I hope to see you all tomorrow on the stream. So uh, that'll be pretty much it. Join the Discord. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out.